Now cruise across the Carolina. Hey everybody, it's uh, First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich. Whoa, camera got a little blurry there. There we go. Um, wanting to show you a live picture as we look up into the mountains. Blowing Rock, the reason I'm showing this, it's been snowing most of the day up in Blowing Rock, and this is really important to what's gonna happen down here in the Piedmont as we're starting to see the transition to snow, is notice the snow where it's sticking and where it's not. Um, snow is gonna stick to any elevated surface that's cool, but the road surfaces for the most part are likely going to stay wet until we get into later tonight and we're going to see a lot of this uh, through i think the evening hours as the snow really picks up this is a live look up at the freedom boat club and i'll bring this full screen um, and if you look in the foreground down in here yeah you can see it's snowing up at lake norman right now we're getting light snow um, developing there it's probably going to pick up as we go through the next couple of hours um, and i'm starting to get reports of snow all the way down to bessemer city um, in fact let me bring the camera back full screen here I'm gonna take this off my laptop here. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but that is the view over in Bessemer City. We've got some big snowflakes falling right there as I look at the camera on their water tower. Always cool to see those giant snowflakes falling there. But heavy snow falling in Gaston County now, uh, among other locations. So let me bring up the radar here. If I didn't freeze up my computer, which I think I just did. Now oh, there we go. We'll give it a second to load up. Um, you'll see it pop up behind me here in a minute. But I'll kind of show you where that rain snow line is setting up. It's roughly right in here along I-85. And I'll bring this full screen to show you because um, looking at the radar, you're seeing green on there. And again, the, the, the green, is, this is an algorithm. The computer's using this, trying to figure out where the rain snow line is. Once we get a surface report of snow, you start to see um, the snow pop up. It's roughly right in there. And what's really cool is one of the cool tools that we have on, on our radar is what we call a correlation coefficient. You may have seen me use this uh, during tornado coverage because it can show us where there's debris. But in this instance, I'm gonna flip it over to the uh, Greenville Spartanburg radar. Everything that's kind of that kind of maroon shade there, those are particles or hydrometeors, um, which are snowflakes, water droplets that are all the same size. So that's all snow, at least where the radar beam is hitting it where you're seeing this line of kind of lighter shades, that's where there's a mix because you're getting raindrops next to snowflakes, next to sleet pellets, they're a different shape. So the, the relationship between the two is different. The correlation coefficient, we call it, is different. So the rain snow line appears to be right here, but here's the thing, that part of Charlotte, that's at about 7,000 feet. So it's not quite down to the surface, but the fact that this line has been pushing off in this direction through the, through the last couple of hours, and I'll show you the loop, can clearly show where the rain snow line is moving. It's actually shifting south, 
through time. So as we get later and later here in the next hour or so, I anticipate we're going to see probably some pretty good snow developing in some of these locations, um, especially where on radar, man, my allergies are killing me today. Um, those bright bands, those are actually probably wet snowflakes showing up on the radar. They reflect the radar beam really well. So when you see those on the radar, um, you know, the radar bounces off a wet snowflake much better than it does a raindrop. It's a little more solid target. So let me show you the hour by hour. What, before I show you that, let me show you temperatures because this is also pretty interesting. Um, we're down to 37 now in Charlotte. The temperatures are falling. That's another sign that we're getting evaporative cooling um, because the temperatures dropped about four degrees in the last hour um, because we're going through that process of dynamic cooling. And that dynamic cooling is being driven by all this dry cold air which is being pushed in from the north. So the fact that these temperatures, the dew point temperatures are near 32, that's driving a lot of this. So let me show you the hour by hour here. Uh, we can go through the next hour and look at that. It's already colder than the model thinks. It's 36, 37 at the airport. Um, in the next hour or so, that rain snow line is just going to keep shifting south. And by 6 and 7 o'clock, you can see some pretty heavy snow. Now again, it's going to be coming down like crazy. <laughs> and it's going to be sticking to the rooftops, grassy surfaces, but the road temperature is about 40 something degrees right now. So it's going to melt on, on the surface of those roads. But if it falls quick enough, it certainly can overcome that warm temperature and accumulate briefly, especially elevated roadways, which are surrounded by temperatures that will be in the 30s. So um, while it'll look like it's coming down like a snow squall, the roads are going to be wet. Just take it easy, drive slow, you're fine. It's like a rain a rainstorm out there. But as we go into the overnight hours and these temperatures drop, that's when you're going to have some issues because even if you see a rain snow mix most of the evening, this is the problem. Overnight, and it's probably not going to happen until midnight, to be honest with you, uh, these temperatures will take a while to drop below freezing. And by tomorrow morning, it'll sneak up on you because a lot of a lot of you will drive this evening or today through wet roads and then tomorrow morning you'll get up and think it's the same type of conditions it's not the temperature is going to be at 30 or lower so just a word of caution as you get ready for tomorrow morning um, this is going to freeze up anything that's wet out there so again i'm getting a ton of reports on twitter and facebook thank you so much for sending those in to me of that rain snow line moving through the area I'm loving all the pictures and videos we're getting. We're actually going to have uh, Nathan Morabito kind of turning these around for us. Um, and these reports are pretty crucial to us. They're really important because what happens is it helps us pass this along to the weather service and also keep track of where that rain snow line is. So right now it's around I-85 dropping south slowly in the next couple of hours. We're going to see widespread snow across the area. It'll be wet, heavy snow. If you get out there quick and measure it, uh, make a quick snowball before it melts. You can play in it, but for the most part, this is going to be melting pretty quickly. And just to give you a heads up, if you want to measure snow for us, um, one way you can do this, and I actually built this graphic last night. I'll bring this up full screen for you. The easiest way to measure snow is to get a snowboard. Um, and what that is, is just a white board you put on the grass. And if you go out there, um, every hour would be awesome. Put your ruler in there and measure how much you got, and then clean the board off, and then we'll add up those totals. But if you don't have a snowboard, um, go out in your yard and measure three locations that have not been touched or away from trees and average it out, and that'll kind of give you an average. Now, because this is melting, I would prefer you measure every hour because if you wait, it's going to melt. Um, but we'd love to see those snowfall totals if you get a chance to do so. Um, before I leave you here, I got to get back and do another cut in and. Um, scarf down a peanut butter and jelly sandwich um here's a look at the timeline pretty much from about now things pick up six seven eight o'clock one to three inches i think still in the mix and again that's going to be on the grassy surfaces but notice when things go downhill overnight right there after 11 p.m into tomorrow morning um, again i didn't change my snowfall map too much but i did update it earlier and i did want to show it to you now what i did with it I uh, put it down here. Here it is. Let me pop it up for you real quick. Um, whoops. That was weird. Let me let me refresh that. Hold on. I'll try that again. There we go. So there's a look at the snowfall map. And again, a lot of melting going on. This one to two inch has been my biggest trouble here. I don't know if it's going to be here or here, but everyone's going to see snowfall. That's the good news. The only question is how much you actually get to stick. And again, like we're seeing up in the Boone area and the um, Blowing Rock and up in the mountains, I think this is a great illustration of what I expect to see here in the Charlotte area is snow falling, 
cars covered, roofs covered. Um, look up there towards um, the grassy surfaces, but the road, it's just wet. Even in the mountains, it's just wet. So things should be okay this evening. I get a lot of questions about driving. Um, I always hate those questions, honestly, because I'll drive in anything. Um, and I don't know what you'll drive in. So uh, I can tell you what the roads will look like if you're okay driving in the rain. If you know how to use windshield wipers, if you can turn your lights on, if you use turn signals, you're gonna be fine. Um, if you drive in the rain with your blinkers on or your hazards, um, you probably should stay home because that's usually um, gonna make you nervous to drive and snowflakes falling in the sky. So we'll do another update uh, probably later this evening, but of course we're gonna be on TV at four, five, six, and 11. You can stream us on the app. Uh, online um, through all the different uh, streaming apps if you have YouTube TV Hulu live um, we'll have you covered um, other than that just stay at home and enjoy our first legit snowfall of the season Now, crews across the Carolinas are preparing for the threat of snow and ice on the road. Wake up, Charlotte's meteorologist Chris Mulcahy, the mold could live in uptown with a look at which spots could be the most dangerous. So, Chris, it's not so much the snow we're worried about, but we're worried about the ice. Yeah, it's going to be what's happening a little bit later on tonight. So here's what's going to be happening in the meantime. I've been pulling out this thermometer, checking the road temperatures. It's ranging anywhere from about 40 to 45 degrees. That's great. Temperatures are on our side in February in general has been well above normal by eight 4 degrees and we've only dropped down below freezing three times. We're going to do it number four overnight tonight. So here's the big problem as that rain, that cold rain and that snow and sleet starts to fall on the roads. That's going to cool it down, but it's the bridges and the overpasses that are cooling from two different sides. That's what's really going to be dropping down to that freezing point. So it's elevated surfaces that are easily dropping down to that freezing point. That's where that rain, that snow is going to harden and freeze through the overnight. So Black ice is going to be a concern tomorrow. As for the afternoon, high temperatures for the afternoon mainly going to be sticking to the 30s. The ground temperatures slowly cooling down. So I think a lot of that snow is going to be melting on contact, but please be careful, especially this time tomorrow. There's going to be patches of black ice all across the area. I'm meteorologist Chris Mulkey reporting here in Uptown. Maybe you heard Larry's tracking some snow out there. Oh, yes. Always a big deal in these parts, no matter how small the amount. We've only seen a trace of snow so far this year, so if history is any indication, we're due for a little more. Let's connect the dots. Charlotte averages about 4.3 inches of snow a year. It's not a lot, but it's something, and even in the mildest of winters, it's usually a measurable amount, which is a tenth of an inch. In fact, in 142 years of record keeping, we've never had a year with zero snow. And for all you Northerners who now call the Queen City home and scoff at our snow totals, we have, on rare occasion, been buried in snow. February 2004, a two-day snowstorm brought the city, its workplaces, and schools to a standstill. Official measurement at the airport, 13.2 inches. But parts of South Charlotte and Rock Hill reported 22 inches of snow. But as we track snow in the forecast, make no mistake, all it takes is an inch or two, and much of Charlotte will shut down. And that is Connecting the Dots. Right now, people in our area are gassing up and heading to the stores, preparing for the worst case scenario when it comes to snow. Hunter Science continues our continuing coverage tonight with the rush to get stocked up. Hunter. Here at this grocery store and others around our area, people are doing their everyday grocery shopping, but others are getting prepared for the winter weather headed our way. Hopefully um, we'll get through this winter storm and you know, everyone stays safe. You've likely heard it before. Get your bread and milk. Snow is on the way. Hopefully we can have some fun and hopefully the city's prepared. And that's just what shoppers did at this Lake Norman Walmart. Shelves that were once full of bread emptied as people get ready. But others have an entire winter meal in mind. Oh, we're making some chili tonight, some cornbread, a great winter treat, grandma's recipe. While others did their usual shopping and aren't worried at all. I have chicken, uh, protein, veggies, fruits, uh, the whole shebang. We got some cereal, we got some popcorn. Meanwhile, across town at Blackhawk Hardware Store, ice melt was a hot commodity. People should have it at all times anyway, rather than waiting for the storm to hit. A cold snap and flakes on the way, with some saying they're stocked up for it. The shoppers I spoke with said they aren't concerned about the snow as much as they are about how people will drive in it around here. 
I'm Hunter Signs for WCNC Charlotte. Now crews across the Carolinas are preparing for the threat of snow and ice on the road. Wake up Charlotte's meteorologist Chris Mulcahy, the Mulk, live in uptown with a look at which spots could be the most dangerous. So Chris, it's not so much the snow we're worried about, but we're worried about the ice. Yeah, it's going to be what's happening a little bit later on tonight. So here's what's going to be happening in the meantime. I've been pulling out this thermometer, checking the road temperatures. It's ranging anywhere from about 40 to 45 degrees. That's great. Temperatures are on our side in February in general has been well above normal by eight point four degrees and we've only dropped down below freezing three times. We're going to do it number four overnight tonight. So here's the big problem as that rain, that cold rain and that snow and sleet starts to fall on the roads. That's going to cool it down, but it's the bridges and the overpasses that are cooling from two different sides. That's what's really going to be dropping down to that freezing point. So it's elevated surfaces that are easily dropping down to that freezing point. That's where that rain, that snow is going to harden and freeze through the overnight. So black ice is going to be a concern tomorrow. As for the afternoon, high temperatures for the afternoon, mainly going to be sticking to the 30s. The ground temperatures slowly cooling down. So I think a lot of that snow is going to be melting on contact, but please be careful, especially this time tomorrow. There's going to be patches of black ice all across the area. I'm meteorologist Chris Mulkey reporting here in Uptown. Maybe you heard Larry's tracking some snow out there. Oh, yes. Always a big deal in these parts, no matter how small the amount. We've only seen a trace of snow so far this year, so if history is any indication, we're due for a little more. Let's connect the dots. Charlotte averages about 4.3 inches of snow a year. It's not a lot, but it's something, and even in the mildest of winters, it's usually a measurable amount, which is a tenth of an inch. In fact, in 142 years of record keeping, we've never had a year with zero snow. And for all you Northerners who now call the Queen City home and scoff at our snow totals, we have, on rare occasion, been buried in snow. February 2004, a two-day snowstorm brought the city, its workplaces, and schools to a standstill. Official measurement at the airport, 13.2 inches. But parts of South Charlotte and Rock Hill reported 22 inches of snow. But as we track snow in the forecast, make no mistake, all it takes is an inch or two, and much of Charlotte will shut down. And that is Connecting the Dots. Right now, people in our area are gassing up and heading to the stores, preparing for the worst case scenario when it comes to snow. Hunter Science continues our continuing coverage tonight with the rush to get stocked up. Hunter. Here at this grocery store and others around our area, people are doing their everyday grocery shopping, but others are getting prepared for the winter weather headed our way. Hopefully um, we'll get through this winter storm and, you know, everyone stays safe. You've likely heard it before. Get your bread and milk. Snow is on the way. Hopefully we can have some fun and hopefully the city's prepared. And that's just what shoppers did at this Lake Norman Walmart. Shelves that were once full of bread emptied as people get ready. But others have an entire winter meal in mind. Oh, we're making some chili tonight, some cornbread, a great winter treat, grandma's recipe. While others did their usual shopping and aren't worried at all. I have chicken, uh, protein, veggies, fruits, uh, the whole shebang. We got some cereal, we got some popcorn. Meanwhile, across town at Blackhawk Hardware Store, ice melt was a hot commodity. People should have it at all times anyway, rather than waiting for the storm to hit. A cold snap and flakes on the way, with some saying they're stocked up for it. The shoppers I spoke with said they aren't concerned about the snow as much as they are about how people will drive in it around here. I'm Hunter Signs for WCNC Charlotte. Now, crews across the Carolinas are preparing for the threat of snow and ice on the road. Wake up, Charlotte's meteorologist Chris Mulcahy, the mole, could live in uptown with a look at which spots could be the most dangerous. So, Chris, it's not so much the snow we're worried about, but we're worried about the ice. Yeah, it's going to be what's happening a little bit later on tonight. So here's what's going to be happening in the meantime. I've been pulling out this thermometer, checking the road temperatures. It's ranging anywhere from about 40 to 45 degrees. That's great. Temperatures are on our side. And February in general has been well above normal by 8 
0.4 degrees and we've only dropped down below freezing three times. We're going to do it number four overnight tonight. So here's the big problem as that rain, that cold rain and that snow and sleet starts to fall on the roads. That's going to cool it down, but it's the bridges and the overpasses that are cooling from two different sides. That's what's really going to be dropping down to that freezing point. So it's elevated surfaces that are easily dropping down to that freezing point. That's where that rain, that snow is going to harden and freeze through the overnight. So black ice is going to be a concern tomorrow. As for the afternoon, high temperatures for the afternoon mainly going to be sticking to the 30s. The ground temperatures slowly cooling down. So I think a lot of that snow is going to be melting on contact, but please be careful, especially this time tomorrow. There's going to be patches of black ice all across the area. I'm meteorologist Chris Mulkey reporting here in Uptown. Maybe you heard Larry's tracking some snow out there. Oh, yes. Always a big deal in these parts, no matter how small the amount. We've only seen a trace of snow so far this year, so if history is any indication, we're due for a little more. Let's connect the dots. Charlotte averages about 4.3 inches of snow a year. It's not a lot, but it's something, and even in the mildest of winters, it's usually a measurable amount, which is a tenth of an inch. In fact, in 142 years of record keeping, we've never had a year with zero snow. And for all you northerners who now call the Queen City home and scoff at our snow totals, we have, on rare occasion, been buried in snow. February 2004, a two-day snowstorm brought the city, its workplaces, and schools to a standstill. Official measurement at the airport, 13.2 inches. But parts of South Charlotte and Rock Hill reported 22 inches of snow. But as we track snow in the forecast, make no mistake, all it takes is an inch or two, and much of Charlotte will shut down. And that is Connecting the Dots. Right now, people in our area are gassing up and heading to the stores, preparing for the worst case scenario when it comes to snow. Hunter Science continues our continuing coverage tonight with the rush to get stocked up. Hunter. Here at this grocery store and others around our area, people are doing their everyday grocery shopping, but others are getting prepared for the winter weather headed our way. Hopefully um, we'll get through this winter storm and, you know, everyone stays safe. You've likely heard it before. Get your bread and milk. Snow is on the way. Hopefully we can have some fun and hopefully the city's prepared. And that's just what shoppers did at this Lake Norman Walmart. Shelves that were once full of bread emptied as people get ready. But others have an entire winter meal in mind. Oh, we're making some chili tonight, some cornbread, a great winter treat, grandma's recipe. While others did their usual shopping and aren't worried at all. I have chicken, uh, protein, veggies, fruits, uh, the whole shebang. We got some cereal, we got some popcorn. Meanwhile, across town at Blackhawk Hardware Store, ice melt was a hot commodity. People should have it at all times anyway, rather than waiting for the storm to hit. A cold snap and flakes on the way, with some saying they're stocked up for it. The shoppers I spoke with said they aren't concerned about the snow as much as they are about how people will drive in it around here. I'm Hunter Signs for WCNC Charlotte. Now, crews across the Carolinas are preparing for the threat of snow and ice on the road. Wake up, Charlotte's meteorologist Chris Mulcahy, the Mulk, live in Uptown with a look at which spots could be the most dangerous. So, Chris, it's not so much the snow we're worried about, but we're worried about the ice. Yeah, it's going to be what's happening a little bit later on tonight. So here's what's going to be happening in the meantime. I've been pulling out this thermometer, checking the road temperatures. It's ranging anywhere from about 40 to 45 degrees. That's great. Temperatures are on our side in February in general has been well above normal by 8 4 degrees and we've only dropped down below freezing three times. We're going to do it number four overnight tonight. So here's the big problem as that rain, that cold rain and that snow and sleet starts to fall on the roads. That's going to cool it down, but it's the bridges and the overpasses that are cooling from two different sides. That's what's really going to be dropping down to that freezing point. So it's elevated surfaces that are easily dropping down to that freezing point. That's where that rain, that snow is going to harden and freeze through the overnight. So Black ice is going to be a concern tomorrow. As for the afternoon, high temperatures for the afternoon mainly going to be sticking to the 30s. The ground temperatures slowly cooling. Now crews across the Carolinas are preparing for the threat of snow and ice on the road. Wake up Charlotte's meteorologist Chris Mulcahy, the Mulk, live in Uptown with a look at which spots could be the most dangerous. So Chris, it's not so much the snow we're worried about, but we're worried about the ice. 
Yeah, it's going to be what's happening a little bit later on tonight. So here's what's going to be happening in the meantime. I've been pulling out this thermometer, checking the road temperatures. It's ranging anywhere from about 40 to 45 degrees. That's great. Temperatures are on our side in February in general has been well above normal by eight 0.4 degrees and we've only dropped down below freezing three times. We're going to do it number four overnight tonight. So here's the big problem as that rain, that cold rain and that snow and sleet starts to fall on the roads. That's going to cool it down, but it's the bridges and the overpasses that are cooling from two different sides. That's what's really going to be dropping down to that freezing point. So it's elevated surfaces that are easily dropping down to that freezing point. That's where that rain, that snow is going to harden and freeze through the overnight. So black ice is going to be a concern tomorrow. As for the afternoon, high temperatures for the afternoon mainly going to be sticking to the 30s. The ground temperatures slowly cooling down. So I think a lot of that snow is going to be melting on contact, but please be careful, especially this time tomorrow. There's going to be patches of black ice all across the area. I'm meteorologist Chris Mulkey reporting here in Uptown. Reading roads with balloon material, which is a mix of calcium and brine. Um, so we'll be able to treat anything that comes down. But I'll be uh, open to any questions that you guys have. Um, you said you had how many of the interstate? We have 20 trucks for interstate. Uh, so that's in Mecklenburg, Cabarrus, and Union County. Is that a salt and sand mix that you're talking about? Yeah, uh, so the brine is a salt and water mix, and then the uh, balloon material that we'll be using is a mix of brine and calcium. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know ground temperatures are fairly warm. Is there any way you guys can monitor, I guess, the temperature of the pavement? We do. So we have all of our trucks have temperature gauges on them. So we'll be able to monitor the temperatures of the pavement and I'll be able to treat through that. How long have you been, did you already start treating the roads or? We have not treated anything yet. Um, so our plan is right now it's been raining. So we didn't want to treat anything. It would just, it just run off. So um, we'll be treating tonight once the storm stops and try to prevent any kind of freezing freezing tonight. How big of a benefit have those last kind of two weeks of warm weather been when you guys are coming into something like this? Yeah, it's been a major benefit for us. Um, we haven't we haven't had to do any of this yet this year, um, so that's really been a good a good help for us. Um, yeah, I mean we'll be uh, we'll be just as prepared for this one as we are for any others. Do those re does that residual heat from the ground though really help you guys out when you're facing something like this? Absolutely, yeah. So it's what he was just talking about. Um, the, the pavement temperatures are very warm right now because of the warm temperatures we've had. So hopefully over uh, over tonight it won't freeze like we're we're anticipating. So you said that you only treat the roads after the storm is over. So are the cars going to be just driving in the, in, throughout the storm without any treatment on the ground? The plan is, uh, so we're going to monitor it throughout the night. But right now what we're looking at is the uh, temperatures won't be low enough for any snow to accumulate on the roads. Um, so if we do start seeing anything tracking on the roadways, then we'll start to treat. But most likely the temperatures won't drop below uh, while it is snowing. So we don't antici anticipate anything accumulating. I know the big concern for the morning commute is obviously going to be black ice forming. Um, just we hear it be here time and time again. Just give drivers the reminders for the roadway, especially those people that are going to be up and out commuting early tomorrow morning. Absolutely. Just be safe when you're out commuting. Um, try to avoid it if you can. Um, but if you do take a primary route, like I said, interstates will be monitored closely. Um, so take a primary route to uh, to and from your office, but be very careful and uh, anticipate taking a little bit longer to get into work. I think that, like you said, uh, some people have the option not to be out. Your drivers don't have that option. Are there any safety tips you guys want to give folks uh, when they're working around those vehicles or being near those vehicles? Yeah, please, please stay uh, at least 200 feet back from those uh, trucks that are working. Um, the blend material is uh, it can uh, damage your vehicle if you get too close to it. Um, so we, we have all these marked with uh, stay back signs. So uh, yeah, definitely stay back. Good. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Now to Rowan County, where Chloe Lester is live in Salisbury. So schools there, Chloe, are dismissing two hours early. So what does it look like right now? How are you feeling out there? Well, Ben, Carolyn, we're still waiting to see what we will get from this first snow of the season, but temperatures definitely have dropped here in Rowan County. We know that six people have called 911 related to this storm so far, and here in Salisbury, they have the spreaders ready, and we know they'll start sanding once that snow starts falling. They the, Over at the fire department, they also have the saws ready and on the trucks should they need them. Like you just said, schools here are closing two hours early, but over in Kannapolis, they're closing three 
three hours early. The chief of emergency services says they are monitoring the situation and any important updates will be sent out over their emergency alert system and social media accounts. So we will be keeping an eye on things here today and we'll have the very latest as this storm continues. But for now, we are live in Salisbury. Chloe Leshner, WCNC Charlotte. Chloe, thanks so much. Now let's head to Cleveland County where Richard Devane is live. And Richard, the foothills expected to get a higher total of snow than we are here down in the city. What are you seeing out there? Yeah, it's just a matter of getting ready for the impending snow. I'm here at the DOT shop where they have gotten ready. As a matter of fact, a number of these trucks just pulled in a little bit ago. They say they're going to be working 12-hour shifts. Right now, they're on a standby mode. They're prepping the roads is what we've been told by emergency management. These guys say they're actually going to head out to the bridges and overpasses when they figure out that it's time for them to get out there. Now, as for just like you said, a lot of districts Schools are closing, are closed. The Cleveland County schools closed at noon. That is to get students home so that they can be home and safe ahead of this storm. And as far as highway patrol, they say they're telling people that they're monitoring the situations as well. They say that if you don't have to go out on the roads when the snow starts to happen or whatever happens, if you have to take to the roads, be very, take it very slow. But the best bet is if it gets really bad to stay off the road. That's some pretty good advice. We're going to continue to monitor the situations out here, but that's the situation right here in Shelby. This is Richard Devane in Cleveland County. Back to you. All right, Richard, thanks. Maybe you heard Larry's tracking some snow out there. Oh, yes. Always a big deal in these parts, no matter how small the amount. We've only seen a trace of snow so far this year, so if history is any indication, we're due for a little more. Let's connect the dots. Charlotte averages about 4.3 inches of snow a year. It's not a lot, but it's something, and even in the mildest of winters, it's usually a measurable amount, which is a tenth of an inch. In fact, in 142 years of record keeping, we've never had a year with zero snow. And for all you Northerners who now call the Queen City home and scoff at our snow totals, we have, on rare occasion, been buried in snow. February 2004, a two-day snowstorm brought the city, its workplaces, and schools to a standstill. Official measurement at the airport, 13.2 inches. But parts of South Charlotte and Rock Hill reported 22 inches of snow. But as we track snow in the forecast, make no mistake, all it takes is an inch or two, and much of Charlotte will shut down. And that is Connecting the Dots. Well, good morning, everyone. North Carolina is about to feel this year's first blast of winter weather. The state's getting ready, and now is the time for you to get ready, too. The entire state is under either a winter storm advisory or warning through tomorrow morning. This winter storm will affect most parts of North Carolina. Effects could be minor in many places, but will be more significant in other places. We expect the heaviest snows after sunset. Northeastern North Carolina might get the greatest impact, where three to six inches of snow are possible in the forecast. For the Piedmont Triad and the Triangle area, one to three inches, one to two inches in the Charlotte area, and one to three inches in the western mountains of North Carolina. We can expect whiteout conditions on the coast due to heavy snows and gusty winds. Now, don't let the temperature right now fool you. It's still winter in North Carolina, and it's going to get colder tonight. Snowy roads can still be deadly if you're not careful. Although this is a fluid number, statewide right now we have 29 school districts closed and 55 of them on early release. Please pay close attention to your local forecast and be alert to changing weather conditions over the next 24 hours. Our Department of Transportation crews have been preparing since earlier this week. The state highway patrol troopers are ready. They're out on the roads to assist motorists and keep the traffic moving. And you can help them by staying off the road when conditions deteriorate. Our State Emergency Operations Center will activate here at 1 o'clock this afternoon to be ready to respond to any needs from local governments that they might have. Significant icing is not expected. 
And that's good news because that means that the roads will be easier to treat and clear. And there shouldn't be any major issues with power outages, although gusty winds tonight and tomorrow could cause some outages. And if your power does go out, remember to never use a generator or grill in your home or garage because the consequences could be deadly. Everyone is encouraged to make a plan for your family, including your pets. There are some things that you can do to make sure your family is ready for, unexpected, uh, for the unexpected with this winter weather storm. Keep food and batteries on hand and keep an emergency kit in your car. And for more information on how to prepare for winter storms, I would suggest you go to readync.org or for the latest road conditions, you can go to drivenc.gov. Uh, we have experts here who are ready to answer any questions that you might have. I have our Secretary of the Department of Public Safety, Eric Hooks, on stage, our Emergency Management Director, Mike Sprayberry, uh, Commander Glenn McNeil, the Colonel of the North Carolina Highway Patrol, is here, our Chief Engineer from the Department of Transportation, Tim Little, is here. Major General Todd Hunt of the North Carolina National Guard is here. He has just taken his new position in command of the National Guard. Katie Webster is our meteorologist from Emergency Management, and she is here to answer questions. And Lee Williamson is our language interpreter. I first want to hear a few words from Director Sprayberry. Mike. Thank you, Governor, and good morning, everyone. As a winter storm begins to move into the state of North Carolina, we're decisively engaged with our state emergency response team partners to prepare for any required response operations. As the Governor said, the State Emergency Operations Center will be activated today at 1 p.m. We'll have agencies like the Department of Transportation, the National Guard, DMV license and theft, the Highway Patrol, and others who can assist us with keeping our roads safe and clear. Our utility partners are poised to surge into impacted areas for power restoration operations if needed. We've been in contact with our county partners to ensure that we have good situational awareness of their needs and that we're well prepared to provide the full spectrum of disaster response capability in all impact areas. Again, we urge everyone to please stay off the roads during this event, and as always, follow the instructions of your local officials and stay tuned to your local media for situational awareness. Thank you for your support of the North Carolina State Emergency Response Team. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mike. We'll now hear from Tim Little, Chief Engineer of our Department of Transportation. Tim. Thank you, Governor. Uh, yesterday, NCDOT started uh, anti-ice operations across uh, many counties across the uh, state. Uh, currently, as of 7 a.m., 403 trucks and 955 employees have put out about 305,000 gallons of salt brine as an anti-icing uh, agent. We have nearly 3,000 employees and 2,400 trucks with plows and spreaders and over 135,000 tons of salt on hand ready to clear snow from roadways following the storm. And also, as just to add on to what the governor has said, encourage everyone to stay off the roads during this time and also be cautious driving tomorrow so when you see that yellow dump truck that's pushing snow or that yellow motor grader or some of our contract partners, please give them plenty of room as they perform their operations. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. And now some safety tips from Colonel Glenn McNeil, the commander of the North Carolina Highway Patrol. Thank you, Governor. Good morning. First, I would say please heed all of the safety warnings that are being provided here today. In participation with our state and local partners, the State Highway Patrol stands ready to assist when needed. Troopers have been positioned to mobilize upon a moment's notice in the areas as we expect heavy snowfall accumulation to occur. I encourage everyone to monitor local weather forecast that driving conditions in our areas are expected to diminish overnight. Motorists are encouraged to avoid traveling if at all possible. Motorists should also clear snow and ice from their vehicles prior to departing their locations to prevent flying debris. 
Make sure that your cell phones are fully charged in the event they are needed during an emergency. Also, if you are involved in a collision, please remove your vehicle from the roadway if the collision is minor in nature. This will prevent secondary collisions from occurring, which can often have more serious injuries. Right now, it's beautiful outside, so please don't let your guard down because it's going to change come nightfall. Please do not become complacent. Black ice is expected on the roadways in the morning, and it will create treacherous driving conditions. Motorists wishing to obtain updated roadway conditions can visit our drivenc.gov for those updates. Please do not call 911 or Star HP for this purpose. These lines of communication must be left open for emergency situations. Thank you. Okay, we'll take any questions that you may have. This is a statewide event, so we're keeping our resources deployed across the state to make sure that they can respond anywhere because every part of our state is either under a winter weather advisory or a winter weather warning. However, we, we do expect the northeastern part of North Carolina to see the most snow right now. So I think uh, as the day goes on and the weather forecast becomes clearer and clearer, then the State Highway Patrol and the Department of Transportation uh, would be ready to move resources. We also have some uh, guardsmen activated in the event that we need help from the National Guard, and they can be uh, deployed to any area that is in particular need. Other questions? All right, thank you very much, guys. Right now, people in our area are gassing up and heading to the stores, preparing for the worst case scenario when it comes to snow. Hunter Science continues our continuing coverage tonight with the rush to get stocked up. Hunter. Here at this grocery store and others around our area, people are doing their everyday grocery shopping, but others are getting prepared for the winter weather headed our way. Hopefully um, we'll get through this winter storm and you know, everyone stays safe. You've likely heard it before. Get your bread and milk. Snow is on the way. Hopefully we can have some fun and hopefully the city's prepared. And that's just what shoppers did at this Lake Norman Walmart. Shelves that were once full of bread emptied as people get ready. But others have an entire winter meal in mind. Oh, we're making some chili tonight, some cornbread, a great winter treat, grandma's recipe. While others did their usual shopping and aren't worried at all. I have chicken, uh, protein, veggies, fruits, uh, the whole shebang. We got some cereal, we got some popcorn. Meanwhile, across town at Blackhawk Hardware Store, ice melt was a hot commodity. People should have it at all times anyway, rather than waiting for the storm to hit. A cold snap and flakes on the way, with some saying they're stocked up for it. The shoppers I spoke with said they aren't concerned about the snow as much as they are about how people will drive in it around here. I'm Hunter Signs for WCNC Charlotte. Now, crews across the Carolinas are preparing for the threat of snow and ice on the road. Wake up, Charlotte's meteorologist Chris Mulcahy, the mold live in uptown with a look at which spots could be the most dangerous. So, Chris, it's not so much the snow we're worried about, but we're worried about the ice. Yeah, it's going to be what's happening a little bit later on tonight. So here's what's going to be happening in the meantime. I've been pulling out this thermometer, checking the road temperatures. It's ranging anywhere from about 40 to 45 degrees. That's great. Temperatures are on our side in February in general has been well above normal by eight point four degrees and we've only dropped down below freezing three times. We're going to do it number four overnight tonight. So here's the big problem as that rain, that cold rain and that snow and sleet starts to fall on the roads. That's going to cool it down, but it's the bridges and the overpasses that are cooling from two different sides. That's what's really going to be dropping down to that freezing point. So it's elevated surfaces that are easily dropping down to that freezing point. That's where that rain, that snow is going to harden and freeze through the overnight. So 
black ice is going to be a concern tomorrow. As for the afternoon, high temperatures for the afternoon mainly going to be sticking to the 30s. The ground temperatures slowly cooling down. So I think a lot of that snow is going to be melting on contact, but please be careful, especially this time tomorrow. There's going to be patches of black ice all across the area. I'm meteorologist Chris Mulkey reporting here in Uptown. Treating roads with balloon material, which is a mix of calcium and brine. Um, so we'll be able to treat anything that comes down. But I'll be uh, open to any questions that you guys have. Um, you said you had how many for the interstate? We have 20 trucks for interstate. Um, so that's in Mecklenburg, Cabarrus, and Union County. Is that a salt and sand mix that you're talking about? Yeah, uh, so the brine is a salt and water mix. And then the uh, balloon material that we'll be using is a mix of brine and calcium. Um, I know ground temperatures are fairly warm. Is there any way you guys can monitor, I guess, the temperature of the pavement? We do. So we have all of our trucks have temperature gauges on them. So we'll be able to monitor the temperatures of the pavement and I'll be able to treat through that. How long have you been, did you already start treating the roads or? We have not treated anything yet. Um, so our plan is right now it's been raining. So we didn't want to treat anything. It would just, it just run off. So um, we'll be treating tonight once the storm stops and try to prevent any kind of freezing reason tonight. How big of a benefit have those last kind of two weeks of warm weather been when you guys are coming into something like this? Yeah, it's been a major benefit for us. Um, we haven't we haven't had to do any of this yet this year. Um, so that's really been a good a good help for us. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll be uh, we'll be just as prepared for this one as we are for any others. Do those does that residual heat from the ground though really help you guys out when you're facing something like this? Absolutely. Yeah. So it's what he was just talking about. Um, the, the pavement temperatures are very warm right now because of the warm temperatures we've had. So hopefully over uh, over tonight it won't freeze like we're we're anticipating. So you said that you only treat the roads after the storm is over. So are the cars going to be just driving in the, throughout the storm without any treatment on the ground? The plan is uh, so we're going to monitor it throughout the night. But right now what we're looking at is the uh, temperatures won't be low enough for any snow to accumulate on the roads. Um, so if we do start seeing anything tracking on the roadways, then we'll start to treat. But most likely the temperatures won't drop below uh, while it is snowing. So we don't antici anticipate anything accumulating. I know the big concern for the morning commute is obviously going to be black ice forming. Um, just we hear it here time and time again, just give drivers the reminders for the roadway, especially those people that are going to be up and out commuting early tomorrow morning. Absolutely. Just be safe when you're out commuting. Um, try to avoid it if you can. Um, but if you do take a primary route, like I said, interstates will be monitored closely. Um, so take a primary route to, uh, to and from your office, but be very careful and uh, anticipate taking a little bit longer to get into work. I think that, like you said, uh, some people have the option not to be out. Your drivers don't have that option. Are there any safety tips you guys want to give folks uh, when they're working around those vehicles or being near those vehicles? Yeah, please please stay uh, at least 200 feet back from those uh, trucks that are working. Um, the blend material is, uh, it can uh, damage your vehicle if you get too close to it. Um, so we, we have all these marked with uh, stay back signs. So uh, yeah, definitely stay back. Good. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Now to Rowan County, where Chloe Lester is live in Salisbury. So schools there, Chloe, are dismissing two hours early. So what does it look like right now? How are you feeling out there? Well, then, Carolyn, we're still waiting to see what we will get from this first snow of the season, but temperatures definitely have dropped here in Rowan County. We know that six people have called 911 related to this storm so far, and here in Salisbury, they have the spreaders ready, and we know they'll start sanding once that snow starts falling. They Over at the fire department, they also have the saws ready and on the trucks should they need them. Like you just said, schools here are closing two hours early, but over in Kannapolis, they're closing three hours early. The chief of emergency services says they are monitoring the situation and any important updates will be sent out over their emergency alert system and social media accounts. So we will be keeping an eye on things here today and we'll have the very latest as this storm continues. But for now, we are live in Salisbury. Chloe Leshner, WCNC Charlotte. Chloe, thanks so much. Now let's head to Cleveland County where Richard Devane is live. And Richard, the foothills expected to get a higher total of snow than we are here down in the city. What are you seeing out there? 
Yeah, it's just a matter of getting ready for the impending snow. I'm here at the DOT uh, shop where they have gotten ready. As a matter of fact, a number of these trucks just pulled in a little bit ago. They say they're going to be working 12-hour shifts. Right now, they're on a standby mode. They're prepping the roads is what we've been told by emergency management. These guys say they're be actually uh, going to head out to the bridges and overpasses when they figure out that it's time for them to get out there. Now, as for just like you said, a lot of district schools Schools are closing, are closed. The Cleveland County schools closed at noon. That is to get students home so that they can be home and safe ahead of this storm. And as far as Highway Patrol, they say they're telling people that they're monitoring the situations as well. They say that if you don't have to go out on the roads when the snow starts to happen or whatever happens, if you have to take to the roads, be very, take it very slow. But the best bet is if it gets really bad to stay off the road. That's some pretty good advice. We're going to continue to monitor the situations out here, but that's the situation right here in Shelby. This is Richard Avain in Cleveland County. Back to you. All right, Richard, thanks. Maybe you heard Larry's tracking some snow out there. Oh, yes. Always a big deal in these parts, no matter how small the amount. We've only seen a trace of snow so far this year, so if history is any indication, we're due for a little more. Let's connect the dots. Charlotte averages about 4.3 inches of snow a year. It's not a lot, but it's something, and even in the mildest of winters, it's usually a measurable amount, which is a tenth of an inch. In fact, in 142 years of record keeping, we've never had a year with zero snow. And for all you northerners who now call the Queen City home and scoff at our snow totals, we have, on rare occasion, been buried in snow. February 2004, a two-day snowstorm brought the city, its workplaces, and schools to a standstill. Official measurement at the airport, 13.2 inches. But parts of South Charlotte and Rock Hill reported 22 inches of snow. But as we track snow in the forecast, make no mistake, all it takes is an inch or two, and much of Charlotte will shut down. And that is Connecting the Dots. Well, good morning, everyone. North Carolina is about to feel this year's first blast of winter weather. The state's getting ready, and now is the time for you to get ready, too. The entire state is under either a winter storm advisory or warning through tomorrow morning. This winter storm will affect most parts of North Carolina. Effects could be minor in many places, but will be more significant in other places. We expect the heaviest snows after sunset. Northeastern North Carolina might get the greatest impact, where three to six inches of snow are possible in the forecast. For the Piedmont Triad and the Triangle area, one to three inches, one to two inches in the Charlotte area, and one to three inches in the western mountains of North Carolina. We can expect whiteout conditions on the coast due to heavy snows and gusty winds. Now, don't let the temperature right now fool you. It's still winter in North Carolina, and it's going to get colder tonight. Snowy roads can still be deadly if you're not careful. Although this is a fluid number, statewide right now we have 29 school districts closed and 55 of them on early release. Please pay close attention to your local forecast and be alert to changing weather conditions over the next 24 hours. Our Department of Transportation crews have been preparing since earlier this week. The state highway patrol troopers are ready. They're out on the roads to assist motorists and keep the traffic moving. And you can help them by staying off the road when conditions deteriorate. Our State Emergency Operations Center will activate here at 1 o'clock this afternoon to be ready to respond to any needs.
there's likely going to be a pretty strong band of snow that develops through the evening hours and that snow will sag off to the south for the next couple of hours through five o'clock six seven o'clock pretty good batch of snow and again the areas east and southeast of us could end up with some significant snow but once the snow moves out around midnight tonight the real problems could move in meteorologist Aisha Scott got has more on some of these cold temperatures, Aisha, that really could cause some icy conditions in the morning. The roads aren't bad now, but that could change overnight. It could certainly change, Brad. You know, earlier today we were in the 40s and we've actually dropped into the 30s. So let's take a look at those numbers because right now we're at 36 degrees in Charlotte. We're at 33 in Albemarle. Wadesboro right now, 38 degrees. We're at 33 in Lincolnton. Now, typically our temperatures climb into the afternoon. Not today. We've had that stiff northeast wind, so that has really kept our temperatures either at bay or falling throughout the day. As we go into the evening, though, we'll drop to right around 35 by 7. And then notice by early tomorrow morning, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, we're down to freezing. Now, tomorrow morning, the big story is certainly going to be the black ice threat. So we'll talk more about that. Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich will come back with a look at the threat for the roads. And the uh, temperature is plummeting into the 20s tomorrow morning. We'll have the details in just a little bit. Guys, definitely important to get the timing on that one. Aisha, thank you. And with that, we do want to send it out to Gaston County. And then what are the conditions like? What are you seeing? Snow is starting to fall down again right now, not hitting on the road surfaces, but places like my jacket, it is starting to stick a little bit. Live in Bessemer City, Brandon Goldner, WCNC Charlotte. Okay, Brandon, thank you. And on that note, let's check out uh, our Chloe Leshner. She's live in Rowan County. Chloe, what are you seeing in your area? Yeah, this snow has really picked up in the last few minutes. It's a heavier, thicker snow. You can see it's kind of gathering here on my jacket and in my hair, even on my microphone. But it's not on the street yet. This is in a street. It's the main drag here in Salisbury, and it's really just wet, and we haven't seen it slowing down traffic or anything. People likely just trying to get home before this really does start to pick up. This is just the start of it. Rowan County Emergency Services say they have gotten seven 911 calls today in relation to this storm. Here in Salisbury, they have the plows ready to go, but I'm told they'll get out and start sanding once the temperature hits about 32 degrees. Firefighters put ice melt and chainsaws on the fire trucks and they have them ready to go, although they say they're not expecting anything crazy with this storm. Police officers will also have some extra patrols out, especially tonight into tomorrow when we are expecting that black ice. As for schools, both Rowan Salisbury and uh, Kannapolis schools let out early today, but they still haven't made a decision about tomorrow, but I I'm told they are monitoring the weather closely. Now, the big thing moving forward really is going to be that refreeze. So you may need an ice scraper like this one tomorrow. Uh, but so law enforcement here really just asking people if they are going to be out on the streets to take it slow, but just avoid it if you can. For now, live in Rowan County, Chloe Leshner, WCNC Charlotte. Yeah, hopefully everyone stays safe out there when we get that refreeze. Boy, is that coming down at a pretty good clip where you are, Chloe? Wow. <laughs> All right, we'll check in later. Thank you. And our team coverage continues right now. Early dismissals and school closures throughout the area. We want to get an update now in Mecklenburg County. Our Kendall Morris live with the latest. Kendall. Yeah, good afternoon to you. Students here at Huntersville Elementary, they got out at noon today. It wasn't snowing like this when they got out, but boy, it is coming down now. You can see that it is a wet, heavy snow that is coming down. And one of the biggest issues is when this snow is hitting the ground, you can see that it is melting and turning into moisture. Now, this is an area where buses and cars have to come in the morning. So this is going to be an issue tomorrow if those temperatures drop below freezing overnight, creating several slick spots. Now, CMS did dismiss three hours 
earlier today, three hours early today. After school activities were also canceled, and that's out of an abundance of caution ahead of the severe weather threat and the potential for dangerous road conditions. Our meteorologists are predicting about an inch to two inches of snow in this area. And with those freezing temperatures predicted overnight, that could create some problems on the roads for the commute tomorrow morning. Here's what parents had to say when we talked to them about the early dismissal when school let out. I was a little surprised. I immediately looked out the window because I'm from New York, so I'm used to like a heavy snow day. Um, and I was a little surprised, but whatever they think is best because I know it's important for emergency vehicles to be able to get on the road. Now, we are waiting to hear from CMS about the decision for school on Friday. That is expected later today. Some parents we spoke to say they are expecting at least a two hour delay, but no official word as of yet as to what will happen for school tomorrow for school for students within CMS. Live in Huntersville, Kendall Morris, WCNC Charlotte. Okay, Kendall, thank you. And we are getting the videos and pictures viewers have been sending into our newsroom. Take a look at this in Gamewell, North Carolina. That is near. Lenore, a viewer, slowed down this video so you can see, you can really see just how large those snowflakes are. Yeah, some of those are pretty big. Uh, right now, we'll see that we've got some snow coming down in the Charlotte area, too. So we had heard from Kendall Morse, of course, that CMS had an early dismissal. But we do want to kind of get a bigger picture here with the latest conditions are out of Mecklenburg County overall. And for more on that, Alex Shabbat joins us now live. Hi, Alex. Wow, it's coming down fast. Hi, Vanessa. I'm here at the NCDOT maintenance yard. We're just within the past 30 minutes or so. The rain has turned into a wet snow like many other places that we've talked about. Uh, as you can see, it's coming down pretty hard, but there's not really any accumulation on the ground. It's mainly just wet here. But as you can tell, there's a big puddle here, and the real concern is black ice. I mean, just think about what a puddle like this on the road is going to be when it all freezes over. That's what NCDOT is most concerned about. At this point, they haven't laid down any of their treatment because they say it's too wet and that would wash away the materials, but they are planning to send trucks out later tonight once the storm passes and lay down that treatment. Uh, and we'll have more on that coming up at 4.30. But for now, I'm live in Charlotte. Alex Shabbat, WCNC Charlotte. Alex, thank you so much. And as we head to break, we want to give you a live look right now out the door uh, just to see how this is going to be impacting our drive. And it looks like things are going to be flowing pretty well, although, of course, it looks very slick out there. So we do urge you to slow it down and please be careful. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All of this month, WCNC Charlotte is celebrating Black History Month, highlighting historical places in Charlotte and in the Carolinas. Good Samaritan Hospital was the first private hospital in North Carolina built exclusively for the treatment of blacks. The historic hospital, which stood between Mint and Graham in Charlotte's Third Ward, was built in 1891 with funds raised by St. Peter's Episcopal Church and its parishioners. Good Sam, as it was known, was torn down in 1996 to make way for the stadium. It existed roughly where the 40-yard line of the field is. A historical marker acknowledging the site was erected outside the stadium in 2002. To see more historically significant places in our area, go to WCNC.com. Tonight, where's the one place? NBC Comedy Tonight. Tonight on Will and Grace. Jack, hold it like it's a baby. A child's future will be in his hands.
Welcome back to a live look outside in Mecklenburg County where we see that snow is coming down pretty quickly. Uh, and of course we are monitoring the winter weather conditions and um, the freezes that are expected in the overnight hours. So of course get, all that to come. Get ugly out there. Of course the snow is a big deal here in the Carolinas and we are tracking the latest conditions. Yeah, right now we want to send it out to Hunter Signs, who is uh, live from the Chevy Storm Tracker. Uh, Hunter, first of all, where are you guys driving and what are you seeing out there? Yeah, hey there, Vanessa. We are on I-85 North heading back towards Charlotte. We are in Gaston County, and let me turn this camera around for you because snow is falling here. We just passed um, Bessemer City coming up on Gastonia right now, and you can see these flakes are coming down. They are melting, though, just about on impact, but let me give you another vantage point here from out behind the Chevy Storm Tracker, and you can see against those tree lines and that grass, you can really get a sense of they are snowflakes. It's not just rain, although it does melt on your windshield when it hits it, because it's not below freezing yet. Right now, the temperature outside here, 37 degrees is what the Chevy Storm Tracker is reading right now. We have seen some of these semis already pulled over and waiting this weather out on those exit roads. It is, of course, better to be safe than sorry, but the biggest concern here as we turn these cameras back uh, looking northbound heading towards Charlotte is the freeze that will happen later this evening. Aisha Scott, our meteorologist there in house, says that it's going to be 29 degrees in Charlotte and 28 in Gastonia. So the biggest concerns if you do get out here on the roads is to take it slow, make sure those headlights are on and the windshields wiping that snow away. I'm Hunter Signs, live from the Chevy Storm Tracker for WCNC Charlotte. Okay, Hunter, you and your crew be safe out there. Thank you for your reporting. And you know, we've been telling you all day to text a number on your screen for the latest on closings or maybe even download our app. So this is a brand new way that we want to talk to you about uh, for you at home to talk to us in real time as well. You can text us photos and videos to put on air. Of course, we want you to be safe doing so. But uh, Rachel Lundberg is at the big board to explain how this all works. Rachel. Hey guys, I'm loving this new feature. We have a whole department that's responding to you. So make sure you text us like today. Everybody was texting the word closings to see when their kids schools were getting out early. Well, now you can do the same thing for seeing if they're going to have a delay in the morning or if they've canceled class altogether. This number 704 329 3600. That's what it will always be. So just go ahead and save it as a contact like you would anybody else because we're friends, right? WCNC. Also later on, if you get snow in your area or even right now, wherever you're at, if there's something to see, text us that same number, just a picture with your name and the location. Let me kind of walk you through how this looks. This is on my own cell phone. I did a screen grab. So you see, I texted the number, said the word closings, and immediately gave me that link for any closings in my area. Power gave me the link for the power outages connected to Duke. Texted the word app, gave me a link to download our WCNC app. Weather, like you may want today, to immediately see that live forecast and radar. It'll give you the link to do so, as well as accidents in the area with traffic and then just for gigs I decided to take a picture of our newsroom to show you this is what it'll look like when you text us a picture with a little snippet saying your name and where you're at so we can have a little bit more information so a great tool to stay connected and quickly get information to and from each other guys back to you all right, thank you, Rachel. And of course, you know, we've gotten these sound bites from people who yeah. are not from North Carolina to say it's crazy, <laughs> we go nuts when it gets some snow. Yeah. But these conditions are really dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, overnight will really be the big issue. Right yeah. now, it's like, it's just the cold rain, right. basically. But tomorrow morning, Aisha, we're going to see those temperatures drop. And I think oh, that's man. when we'll have some real issues. I know, it chokes you up a little bit. You know, we're going to start off in the 20s tomorrow mm -hmm. morning. Yeah. So, yeah, that black ice threat is going to be certainly a big issue tomorrow morning. Hopefully, mm -hmm. folks stay off the roadways yeah. if they can. Yeah, possibly. and ironically, the, the, when the snow's falling the heaviest, probably the best road conditions and when it's done we'll probably have the worst road yeah. conditions so it seems kind of weird yeah, yeah but that's yeah. and that's my concern because people driving around tonight are going the roads are fine they mm -hmm. get up tomorrow and try to do the same type of driving they won't be the same road conditions that snow is falling just about everywhere especially around lake norman check this out you don't see this very often got the uh, boats in the water and then look at the snow falling some big flakes out there the reason we're seeing those giant snowflakes that a lot of you are seeing this is a wet snow so as the snowflakes are falling down they're colliding with each other and they're essentially sticking together like mini snowballs so they will get bigger as the evening goes on because they're colliding with each other and coming together every single county in north carolina is under a winter weather advisory 
or a winter storm warning. You don't see that very often. I tried to look back the last time and the only time I can think of this ever happening was that Christmas snow in 2010 when the entire state saw snow on Christmas Day and the day after. Now as far as snowfall accumulation, this will be hard to track because the snow melts quickly. But if you measure every hour, this will actually count as accumulation. It doesn't have to be there for three or four hours. It just has to be there long enough to measure and it counts as snow accumulation. So we'll probably see one to two inches on the grassy surfaces. Could top that if it falls quick enough, especially once you start cooling the ground down with initially some light snow, it gets a lot easier to accumulate. The rain snow line now shifting towards uh, the border, and it's really fascinating. I love looking at this product on our dual pole Doppler radar because it shows us where that, that melting layer is. And right now you can see it actually sliding to the south. It's moving through Rock Hill, moving through Monroe. So over time, you'll see the rain snow line shift south. And this band right here, where you're seeing pictures like out of Kannapolis, Concord, uh, Concord Airport, in fact, reporting heavy snow right now, same as Hickory, as well as areas around Kannapolis and Salisbury. But now look at that for the first time all day at 418, all of Mecklenburg County is now seeing snow. This will likely be our first accumulating snow of the season. I guess I would guarantee it's going to be accumulating because we only need a tenth of an inch for it to count as accumulating snow. But look at the moisture to our south. That moisture is going to band in a little feature we call a deformation zone. So from Hickory, maybe down to the Sand Hills, or excuse me, uh, Raleigh down to the Sand Hills, we're likely going to see a band of really heavy snow. And that's where we could see several inches of snow in the eastern part of the state. You can see the snow moving through the area through seven, eight, even nine o'clock. And again, I expect rows will generally be wet, but then overnight the temperature falls. It'll be near freezing, if not below, maybe 28, 29 degrees when you wake up tomorrow. And that will lead to a widespread refreeze, which will cause some significant issues uh, tomorrow morning. Just to show you the surface temperatures. Remember yesterday I showed you the soil temps. They were generally in the 50s. Now it's not 463 degrees. It's 43 degrees, but the temperatures in the ground have cooled down. So for the next couple of hours, you'll see that we'll see that one to three inches of snow and sleet mixed. But the refreeze overnight is the big concern. So it falls here but the icy roads are here, so they're offset a little bit, and that is going to be kind of confusing when you wake up tomorrow. Remember, the ground temperature could be near 50, but once you get over a bridge or overpass, that doesn't help you. You're going to be surrounded by 32 degree air or less, and those bridges and overpasses will ice up fairly quickly. Look at the lows tonight, mid to upper 20s. And again, northeast wind cooling us off, a few leftover snow flurries overnight as temperatures plummet below freezing. It'll be cold again on Saturday morning, but look at the weekend. We won't even remember this. It's going to be in the sunny when temperatures in the 50s. Next week, we could be back into the 60s and then another big cool down by this time next week, Fred. An amazing swing, but yeah. not surprising. All right, thank you, Brad. All right, now for one final check of the roads this Thursday afternoon. The time now, 420. The afternoon commute might be a little hectic today as we deal with the winter weather coming through the Charlotte area. Right now, here is a live look out at I-77 at Clanton Road. Things there moving smoothly. You can see the roads are wet, but traffic is good right now. All right, coming up, new pictures and videos coming into our newsroom from this winter weather. Here's a look at the viewer video in Morganton. We'll check in with our Nate Morbido with a look at conditions across our area. The Carolina Chevy Storm Tracker, only on NBC Shot. Shop the Velk Stock Up Sale now through Wednesday. Entire stock Fiesta by one.
So uh, we're seeing that snow falling. We see the slick roadways. Folks seem to be traveling along just fine, though, down that King Street area. Uh, be safe out there and we will continue to follow, of course, this winter weather. Uh, continuing on with that topic, of course, snowfall expected to total one to three inches in some spots. North Carolina's Emergency Operations Center became active this afternoon. Our Savannah 11's out East Anley County, Savannah. What's the conditions? Uh, what kind are you seeing out there? ahead and show you here uh, from our breaking news vehicle. You're seeing the snow coming down. That's like Brad was saying, thankfully, the roads just wet at this point. The emergency operations center became active this afternoon. Our Savannah 11's ahead and show you here uh, from our breaking news vehicle. You're seeing the snow coming down. That's like Brad was saying, thankfully, the roads just wet at this point. The emergency operations center became active. As Brad has been saying over and over, really worried about uh, getting into the overnight hours. Guys, we'll check in with you again in a little bit. For now, reporting live, Savannah 11's WCNC Charlotte. All right, Savannah, be safe out there, and thank you for that update. And as you can imagine, with all of the snow, people are capturing it all on their devices. Yeah, we have been asking you to send in all of your good videos of the weather conditions all afternoon, and you've been responding, so we certainly appreciate that. Our own Nathan Morabito is standing by at the uh, WCNC Big Board. Nate, what have people been sending in? Well, how many of you would love to just see this right now? If you want to see this, you have to go west. You have to go in the mountains of uh, Tennessee, North Carolina. So this is the first picture I want to show you because I want to move west to east. This is a picture of Hughes Gap Road. That's kind of uh, near Roan Mountain in Tennessee from Jessica Duncan. Appreciate you sharing. And as we kind of move along here, you're going to see West Jefferson, North Carolina. That's in Ash County. Josh Miller, just some snowflakes coming down about an hour ago. This one's a real pretty one, though. You can see the Christmas trees, you know, in western North Carolina, known for growing their Christmas trees. Good amount of snow right there. But... Let's keep moving closer to our area, and you'll see less and less of that snow, at least right now. Adam Stike Leather, Stony Point in Alexander County, a little bit north of Hickory there. Thanks for sending you the picture. Also, as we kind of keep moving forward, Marshall Park, some snow coming down there over the pond and uptown from MD Centric Technologies, and some videos to show you as well. This is in Eastfield, North Charlotte, coming in from Steve. Just some good size, wet snowflakes coming down. The grass, though, still looking mighty green, looking more like spring on the ground than winter. Another video coming here near uh, the university area, North Lake Mall. I appreciate Aaron Dugan sending us that as well as it hits the back deck. And a couple more just to quickly kind of go through. This is uh, brand new into our uh, newsroom just a minute ago. Sticking in the backyard in Granite Quarry. Look at that right there on the trampoline in the back, the fire pit. You won't be using that tonight. Look at the kids. This is one of my favorite parts of snow days. And I feel like everyone in the newsroom, we were just like these little kids when the snow started falling outside of our windows because everyone gets so excited about this. We'll see if we get enough to build a snowman. These kids don't care, though. Look at how happy they are. Keep sending your pictures in. We'll keep showing you throughout the next several hours. All right. Thank you, Nate. The good old days when snow meant a snow day. <laughs> right. For us, okay. it's work. All right. Well, ahead at 430, our team coverage continues. Our reporters working, standing by with updates on conditions across our state. We'll take you out live to Union County next with our Brianna Harper after the break. All that falls today could be a major...
guaranteeing coverage for pre-existing conditions. I want to get out to this live look here in Boone. We had checked out King Street earlier. It looks like things are starting to thin out as far as the cars on the roadways, uh, but still seeing some of that uh, snow falling in the area. Uh, checking in for more on that, Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich uh, for the very latest. Uh, you were mentioning before just the widespread uh, winter weather alerts that you've been seeing just across the entire state. Pretty remarkable. Yeah, every single county in the state, Vanessa, 100 counties with a winter weather advisory or a winter storm warning. We don't see that very often. That means this is a widespread event. Now it's not a huge event in the grand scheme of things. The totals here are going to be probably an inch to maybe three inches in some of the isolated locations. Our average snowfall for the winter 4.3 inches. So this is our first legit snow, but we can see that rain snow line shifting to the south. And as you've seen from the pictures across our area, the roads are just wet right now. The ground temperature is in the upper 40s to near 50. The air temperatures are just above freezing. So as of right now, this is essentially causing the same impacts on the roads as a really cold rain. But as we go later into the evening and the snow picks up and the temperature begins to fall, we're going to see some issues likely develop overnight, especially as the colder air wraps around the backside of the system and we get towards Friday morning. So there's the rain snow line shifting to the south. It'll be over us for the next couple of hours. So if you want to see the snow, you got to check it out between now and about 10 or 11 o'clock tonight. But overnight, that's when the problems occur. And that's actually kind of weird because that's when the snow will be gone. Meteorologist Aisha Scott explains why we could have some of the worst road conditions tomorrow morning when skies are clearing out. Oh yeah, Brad, so we won't deal with the snow tomorrow morning, but we will deal with the below freezing temperatures. We're talking lows dropping into the 20s, so that's going to cause issues on the roads. Let's talk about though what's going on right now, because yes, the snow is the big story, but it's been breezy as well. Temperatures have been falling into the afternoons. So when you factor in the breeze that's out there right now, it actually feels like it's right around 30 degrees. This is in the metro, although air temperatures are generally in the middle 30s. We're at about 36, 35 right now in Charlotte. But notice as we work our way through the rest of this evening, through 7, 8, even 9 o'clock, that feel like temperature hovering right around 30 degrees. Air temperatures, though, by tomorrow morning will fall into the 20s across the area and teens in the mountains. So that will cause issues on the roads as you head out early tomorrow. So meteorologist Brad Panovich will be back to take a look at your full forecast and when all of this will finally start to out clear out guys. Aisha, thank you. We'll look for those updates. And speaking of which, we want to get an update on those conditions in Mecklenburg County. And uh, Alex Shabbat has been uh, monitoring that area for us. Joining us live now, Alex, I've been watching that live stream that we've had up on our Facebook page for the past couple minutes, and that snow has been coming down pretty hard where you are. It certainly is, Vanessa. NCDOT says, though, they'll be holding off on treating the roads because right now it's just too wet and their materials would just wash away. So as you said, though, snow is coming down hard, but as it's hitting the ground, it's just turning into water. Later tonight, though, they tell us they'll be sending 20 trucks across our area, and their big concern is about black ice when puddles like this start freezing over. Is right now it's been raining. So we didn't want to treat anything. It would just it just run off. So um, we'll be treating tonight once the storm stops and try to prevent any kind of freezing freezing tonight. NCDOT says they'll be closely monitoring conditions throughout the night, and if they do need to treat the roads a little bit earlier than expected, they're ready to do that. For now, I'm live in Charlotte. Alex Shabbat, WCNC Charlotte. Alex, thank you so much, and we want to remind everyone, as we continue to track the weather across our area, we'd love for you to send in your photos and videos, of course, safely taken and safely sent. All you have to do is text them to 704 329 3600 and just give us your name location that way we know where that image is coming from and you'll likely see it on the air. All right, well, coming up, just how big of a deal is this winter weather in Charlotte? We are putting it all into context with a look at the Queen City's history of snowfall. Here's your Daily J answer brought to you by Mark Spain Real Estate. Get a guaranteed offer on your home today. Go to MarkSpain.com and start packing.
Today's question was, and your answer is, Watch for your next Daily J tomorrow on W. Johnson City in Tennessee. You can see the snow coming down there. Some water on the lens. The same conditions we're seeing here in the Charlotte area. Yeah, we got some snow to show you too. elsewhere, though. This is a controlled avalanche that was caught on camera. Look at that. Emergency department specialists in Kazakhstan carried out two controlled explosions on a mountain, and we're told this was to reduce the risk of a real avalanche. Mm -hmm. Heavy snowfall started over the weekend. Apparently, it prompted this avalanche alert at that particular ski resort. Snow levels increased by 15 wow. inches. So a bit of a different story over there. The operation designed to remove the threat for people at the resort. And we do have some more weather news to talk about here. Mississippi, some promising developments to talk about for all those folks who've been dealing with the flooding through most of the state. The governor just gave an update, uh, but we should point out, too, that there's still a ways to go as far as getting back to normal here. Yeah, Governor Reeves spoke about shelters and roads being opened back up and other subjects concerning flooding. The governor also said he's thankful that the state is nearing the light at the end of the tunnel. For those who have been displaced during the flooding, uh, the shelter at the Jackson Police Academy uh, remains open and it remains uh, with at least 100 available spaces um, for anyone who might need it. Uh, if you've been watching this closely, you know the rivers are still well above flood level, expected to remain high through the end of the week. And it's snowing everywhere right now. We've got some accumulation now occurring up in areas like Mooresville, over to Salisbury, even parts of Concord. Starting to see it on the grassy surfaces. Coming up, we'll tell you how long the snow is sticking around and when we're going to see the sun return. Coming up in your first one forecast. The Carolina Chevy Storm Tracker, only on NBC Shot. Wouldn't it be great if everyday moments came with subtitles? It'd be a lot easier to keep ourselves safe for sure. If you've been seriously injured,
Call DeMayo Law Offices. It won't cost you anything to see if we can. Hey, thanks for staying with us. We come back here to a live look right outside of our studios here. This is out on our weather patio. You can see we've got the snow now in our area starting to fall. So we'll see if uh, Brad is up for a little trip outside. You ready, Brad? I'm going to try to go out He's there. He's going to try. We'll see. <laughs> all right. All right. The snow's got our logo covered and WCC has mm -hmm. you covered all across the area. We want to send it out now to Union County, WCNC Charlotte's Brianna Harper out there now in the midst of it all. Brianna, what are you seeing? Well, Fred, finally, we're finally seeing snow here in downtown Monroe. We were driving around Union County through Waxhaw, now in Monroe. First, it was sleet, a little freezing rain, and now finally, some snowflakes starting to fall here. You can see it's not really um, accumulating so far yet, very small flurries, but we're finally starting to see at least some type of flurries in the air besides that rain that we were seeing. If you take a look at the roads, it definitely still a wet surface for drivers, and as this rain continues to fall and maybe starts to accumulate, that's where we may see some um, road troubles. But for now, so far, so good. This is the pre rain that you can enjoy, not have any issues, but we'll stay out here and keep you guys updated as we see more throughout the rest of the evening. I'll we'll send it back to you guys. Okay, thank you, Brianna. And of course, the snow is a big deal here in the Carolinas. We're tracking the latest conditions. Yeah, right now we want to send it back out to our hunter signs, uh, who is driving around in our Chevy Storm Tracker with photojournalist Pierre Simmons. Uh, where are you guys now, and have the conditions changed at all since you've been on your track? Yeah, Vanessa, they haven't changed much, but we heard it was snowing in Uptown, so we are making our way back towards Charlotte, although the entire way from Gaston County into Mecklenburg County, we hear it is snowing, and so we are seeing those snowflakes continue to fall out here. It's not sticking or accumulating on the ground around our area yet. Right now, it's 36 degrees outside, according to our Chevy Storm Track um, 
temperature gauge here. Uh, we are on 85 north, as I said, going towards uh, Charlotte. The flakes coming down, but let me give you another vantage point because it is hitting and then melting, as I said earlier, but you can start to see it kind of blowing around when you put it against the trees and other traffic. An important note, we have seen a lot of people, thankfully, with their headlights on, some semis choosing to pull over, taking the more safe route, of course, but be sure to keep your headlights on and those windshield wipers on because the biggest uh, concern going into those overnight, as we have said, is the freezing conditions. This is all wet on the roads right now, and that could freeze as those temperatures start to dip. Live in the Chevy Storm Tracker, Hunter Signs, WCNC Charlotte. All right, Hunter, thank you so much. So snow, of course, it's always a big deal in our area. And uh, Justin, we wanted to let you know that we have just learned Rock Hill schools in Watauga County schools are going to operate on a two hour delay. And then in Lancaster, they're going to operate on a three hour delay. And uh, of course, you can find that information on our website, WCNC.com. Um, we want to talk about though snow, no matter how small the amount, somehow it always seems to be a big deal. So our Ben Thompson is taking a look back at the history of snowfall in Charlotte and why it's such a major weather event for us in the Queen City. We've only seen a trace of snow so far this year. So if history is any indication, we're due for a little more. Charlotte averages about 4.3 inches of snow a year. It's not a lot, but it's something. And even in the mildest of winters, it's usually a measurable amount, which is a tenth of an inch. In fact, in 142 years of record keeping, we've never had a year with zero snow. And for all you northerners who now call the Queen City home and scoff at our snow totals, we have, on rare occasion, been buried in snow. February 2004, a two-day snowstorm brought the city, its workplaces, and schools to a standstill. Official measurement at the airport, 13.2 inches. But parts of South Charlotte and Rock Hill reported 22 inches of snow. But as we track snow in the forecast, make no mistake, all it takes is an inch or two, and much of Charlotte will shut down. Yeah, and speaking of which, you know, an inch or two, I mean, that's presumably what we're going to get here, Brad. Yeah, I tell you, I'm getting a lot of pictures and videos from the Mooresville area. That's legit snow on the ground up there. They're actually making snowmen and snowball fights up there. But this is Rock Hill. Look at this. Nice big old flakes falling out there right now. And the reason the flakes are so large, it's a wet snow. As the flakes are falling, they're colliding with each other and they're creating mini snowballs essentially as they fall from the sky. We'll be keeping a close eye on the temperatures. We're already down to 32 in Salisbury. These are running a little bit cooler, quicker than even I anticipated. And I think that's because of the, the rate of the precipitation actually causing the temperatures to get close to the freezing mark. So as we get closer to sunset, which is coming up at six o'clock, we're going to have some issues on the roads, I think, especially north of Charlotte, where the snow is much heavier. But you see these bright returns. Those are melting snowflakes showing up on the radar. And as they move in, we're likely going to see a band of very heavy snow set up. The, the rain snow line seems to be hovering over Chester County, central Lancaster County, and even southeastern parts of Union County. Plenty of snow up here again. Area with the biggest accumulations right now, Salisbury, Kannapolis, uh, over towards um, areas around Statesville, Mooresville, Hickory, Newton, Conover, uh, Lincolnton seen snow, but most of Charlotte, very heavy snow falling in locations right now. And this will continue probably through about 10 o'clock tonight. That's the window, I think, of the best snow. Now, we have all we would call P types. They're precipitation types. Occasionally, we get things called grapple. That's a really cool one. It looks like a dipping dot or a small soft tail. Sleet, you saw some of this today. Sleet is actually ice falling from the sky. It's a refrozen raindrop. Snow, that's pretty easy to figure out. But freezing rain, that's a tough one. A lot of folks confuse the two of these. Freezing rain falls as liquid. It's water falling from the sky. It freezes after it's already hit the ground. So the only temperature, only time we need temperature near freezing to get uh, precipitation in the winter is freezing rain. All the rest of these can actually happen when the air temperature is above freezing. Now we're going to hover in the mid 30s, but as I showed you, we're running a little colder than anticipated. So over the next couple of hours through maybe 9, 10 o'clock, we'll have a lingering flurry. But tomorrow morning, look at those temperatures getting close to the freezing mark. So even though the snow and sleet is falling now, the worst road conditions will be later tonight, especially as the night goes on, and that can fool you. That can trick you. You can think nothing's falling from the sky. I drove in wet roads earlier in the evening, and then tomorrow morning you hit a bridge or an overpass, and those road temperatures will be much colder. There's a look at the snow moving through, and I think it will linger 
till about 10 o'clock. I mean, the back edge is right there at 10 o'clock. Some lingering flurries by midnight should start to move out and dry out. But unfortunately, everything's wet. It's after midnight. We start to see the refreeze occur and especially the bridges and overpasses. Those will be our biggest concerns. Now watch out for areas of black ice. The reason they get that name is it just looks like a wet piece of pavement and you don't realize it's frozen on those bridges and overpasses. Even watch your walkways and the decks, uh, especially people that have elevated uh, decks, wood decks and porches. Those can freeze really quickly in these situations as well. Now tomorrow morning we'll be down into the upper 20s. We'll be in the low to mid 20s Saturday and Sunday morning. So again, anything wet this weekend will refreeze. But during the day, a lot of melting with sunny skies and temperatures in the 50s, Fred. Okay, thank you, Brad. Let's get a check on the roads this Thursday afternoon. The time now for 50, the afternoon commute. A little hectic, as we can see. Well, maybe not so much. Maybe the visual makes it look hectic because the visibility is difficult out there. Those are the conditions that you're seeing as this weather is coming through the Charlotte area. Right now, here's a live look at I-85 and Billy Graham. Is this I-85 and Billy Graham? Either way, you're gonna get the same kind of look here. It's gonna be kind of a hazy look on the roads as we make our travel this afternoon. Speaking of travel, we wanna get a check on what's happening at the airports. We all, uh, with all of this winter weather rolling through the area, sure to see some changes happening in Charlotte Douglas. Let's check in now with WCNC Charlotte's Nathan Morbido. Nate, what's happening at airports? Well, you heard Brad talk about tonight, tomorrow morning, you don't wanna be in the roads. Well, right now, you really don't wanna be at the airport. First, let me kind of give you an idea. It's been a de-icing kind of day at the airport. Charlotte Douglas tweeting this out earlier. But look at the Flight Aware misery map. And I want you to come over here and look at Charlotte at the top of every other airport in the country, 51 delays, 52 cancellations. And if you look at the big circle over here, that means one out of every two flights, you're gonna be dealing with some kind of misery. And because I'm such a dork, I crunch the numbers, 25% of the cancellations and delays in the entire country right now deal with Charlotte Douglas Airport. And you can see really where the problems are coming from. It's really from southwest, kind of where the storm's coming. You see Houston there. You got some delays coming all the way from Los Angeles. Minneapolis has been an issue throughout the day. D.C. coming down from the north. And you also have Miami uh, having some issues with, you know, the delays and the cancellations. And earlier today, maybe a couple hours ago, those numbers were at about 30, uh, you know, 30, 32, 35 cancellations and delays, and you've seen how much they've grown. This is between 2 and 6 p.m., and it kind of makes you wonder throughout the rest of the day, how much more red are we going to see here on this misery map? Because that is huge. You know, Charlotte's, what, the sixth largest airport in the country right now in the heart of all of the weather, uh, even much more than Atlanta. Atlanta only has about 36 delays, barely any cancellations there. So if you're flying out or expecting someone in, whew, Chances are it's going to be a bit of a wait for you. Yeah, hopefully they start to get things moving, though, mm -hmm, yes. you know, after that weather rolls through. All right, Nathan, thank you. We're number one <laughs> dubious honor. Yeah. All right, we do, of course, continue to track weather across the area. So don't forget, send in your photos, send in your videos. We'd love to share them with all of our viewers here. All you have to do is text them uh, to 704-329-3600. Just let us know your name and where you're taking that picture or video, and we would love to show it on air. And coming up, we are taking a look at the uh, conditions, checking in, of course, with the uh, weather that we're seeing across the Carolinas, messy winter weather we're certainly seeing so far. Uh, and we've got this warning coming from state officials, so elaborating on that in just a few minutes. Before we head to break, though, let's give you a live look. Uh, this looks like a pretty uh, heavy, you know, pretty quick fall there that we're seeing with the snow. So uh, we'll be right back. Stay with us. We're back in just a few minutes.
freezing, that means black ice is a big concern overnight. Some districts are letting schools out early, including Newberry County. Today, state officials are warning people to stay off the roads. Crews have been busy laying salt and brine. Highway Patrol is on standby to help out drivers, but Governor Roy Cooper says you should help them out and stay in if you can. And that's what's happening across the Carolinas. Thank you for watching NBC Charlotte at 4. NBC Charlotte Live at 5 starts right now. And with that first at 5, a winter weather alert as snow is covering the Carolinas from Blowing Rock to Bessemer City, Salisbury to Charlotte. We are seeing snowflakes flying tonight. And if you haven't seen snow yet, just wait, it's coming. Our first Warren Storm team has been telling us for days about the snow, and here it is. Thanks for joining us tonight at 5, everybody. I'm Sarah French. And I'm Fred Shropshire. We have a lot of school closings and delays coming in right now. They're scrolling at the bottom of your screen. Let's take a look at the first Warren Doppler radar. You can see that system blanketing the Carolinas as we speak. And this snow, rain, sleet mix, is going to continue well into the night. A winter weather advisory remains in effect until tomorrow morning, and tomorrow is going to be where we see the biggest problems on the roads. Yeah, that's because everything that's falling right now, whether it's rain or snow, will freeze, making for a potentially icy drive into work tomorrow. Brine trucks have been on the roads all across the Tar Heel State all day long. They're treating highways, ramps, and overpasses. And tonight, WCNC Charlotte has live first warn team weather coverage to make sure you are prepared from what's happening outside now to how DOT crews and schools are preparing for tomorrow morning. We have every angle covered. We want to start in the first one storm center, though, where Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich has your minute by minute forecast. Brad? Yeah, I mean, this kind of tells the picture here. I mean, you don't have to look at radar. You can just see what's going on in Rock Hill right now. We've got big old wet snowflakes falling. These things are like saucers coming down because we've got those wet snowflakes colliding with each other on the way down. They're creating giant snowflakes, and this burst of snow is going to be sticking around for a while. Haven't seen that on our bug. You see that right there? Snow at the airport and temperatures in the mid 30s. Those temperatures are cooling down quickly. We've got a couple spots near freezing, and that's a little bit of a concern because these are dropping a little bit quicker than I anticipated. And I think we're going to see temperatures probably hovering near freezing a little bit sooner than midnight. So roads, especially north of Charlotte, where the snow has been coming down, what's been going on is that snow has been evaporating. Some of the rain has been evaporating. It's actually been cooling the surface layers down pretty quickly. So heavy snow has now invaded most of the Piedmont, and that rain snow line showing up on our dual pole Doppler radar. This gives us a chance to show us where there's a rain snow mix. That line is shifting south pretty quickly. There's heavy snow in areas like Mooresville, Statesville, over towards Salisbury, all the way back into Cleveland County. Snow is letting up already in the North Carolina mountains. It's going to be heavy over the Charlotte area for the next couple of hours. It's probably going to start moving out around 9, 10 o'clock tonight as the back edge moves in. But what we have to watch for is maybe a narrow band of heavy snow that'll set up from Raleigh back into our uh, Sand Hill communities. That would be certain, certainly something that could cause some issues for the next couple of hours. And I'll show you what I mean. Even as the back edge tries to move into the mountains, this heavy band sets up somewhere in this vicinity, likely just to the east. So Raleigh, Southern Pines, Rockingham, all the way into Charlotte, maybe through 8, even 9 or 10 o'clock tonight. Now, when the snow comes to an end, the problems really just begin on the roads. Meteorologist Aisha Scott explains why those temperatures are going to be key tomorrow morning. Yeah, and Brad, we're watching those temperatures closely because as temperatures fall below freezing, then tomorrow we're talking that threat for some black ice. So as we go through the rest of this <coughs> evening, notice our rain chances and snow chances stay pretty high. About 70, 60 percent will come down to 50 percent by about the 10 o'clock hour and then close to midnight. That's when we really start to see things wind down across the area. Notice, though, temperature wise, we pretty much stay in the middle 30s. Even after midnight, temperatures generally in the middle 30s. So as we kick off the day tomorrow morning, you'll certainly want to use extra caution on the road with those temperatures falling close to freezing, actually below freezing back into the 20s to kick off the day tomorrow. We'll talk more about the road impacts and also we'll look at your weekend forecast. The snow is going to be gone by then, so enjoy it today. Certainly we'll have that full look in just a little bit, guys. Aisha, thank you. Snow has been falling in the Charlotte area for about an hour and a half now. We're not seeing much accumulation yet, but we have been seeing some pretty heavy snow at times. And you can see it's really coming down in Charlotte as we speak, and DOT crews are ready to jump into action and get the roads ready for tomorrow morning's commute because it could be a slick one. Yeah, our live team weather coverage continues tonight in Charlotte, so let's send it out to Alex Shabbat. And Alex, you've been talking with those crews about how they're preparing, so what are they telling you? 
That's right, Sarah. NCDOT says they'll be sending 20 plow trucks across our area, but right now they're holding off on treating the roads because it's just too wet. And as you can see, there's puddles on the ground and those materials would just wash away. But this also means the big threat is black ice. We'll be prepared for anything that could happen. NCDOT trucks closely monitoring road temperatures as the threat of black ice a main concern in the late night hours. All of our trucks have temperature gauges on them, so we'll be able to monitor the temperatures of the pavement and I'll be able to treat. For most of the day, NCDOT crews had not treated any roads. The maintenance manager saying the temperatures are too warm for accumulation and the rain would wash away the materials. Right now it's been raining, so we didn't want to treat anything. It would just it just run off. So. Um, we'll be treating tonight once the storm stops and try to prevent any kind of freezing, freezing tonight. NCDOT says they'll be deploying 20 plow trucks onto the interstates in Mecklenburg, Cabarrus, and Union counties. They're urging drivers to give them space and take a primary route if possible. The interstates will be monitored closely, um, so take a primary route to, uh, to and from your office, but be very careful and uh, anticipate taking a little bit longer to get into work. So as you heard, NCDOT will be monitoring the roads closely throughout the night, and if they need to treat them a little earlier than expected, they're ready to do that. Live in Charlotte, Alex Shabbat, WCNC Charlotte. Okay, Alex, thank you. Our live team coverage continues in Mecklenburg County. Yeah, our Kendall Morris live in Huntersville. So Kendall students there got out early today. Any word yet on CMS's plans for tomorrow? Yeah, Sarah, we don't have any idea what is going to happen as far as school goes tomorrow. That decision is expected later today. Now, school officials, they're certainly keeping an eye on the weather like this as conditions change across Mecklenburg County. Here in Huntersville, things have changed quickly ever since students got out here at Huntersville Elementary, which is where we are now. They got out at noon, and then this afternoon, this heavy snow has started to fall here. Now, just within the last hour, we've seen it start to accumulate on the ground. This is the first big accumulation that we're seeing in the Huntersville area, but the big concern is a up here on the pavement, all of the snow is falling to the ground, and you can see that it is making everything around it wet. It makes for dangerous conditions if those temperatures dip below freezing overnight because all of this could ice over, making for hazardous conditions for students, teachers, staff that have to come to school in the morning. Now, CMS did dismiss all campuses three hours early today out of an abundance of caution after school activities were also canceled. The snow and the potential for black ice is receiving mixed reactions from both parents and students. I really hope we get a dusting at least. I'd like to see a little snow so she can enjoy it and enjoy her first snow day. Of the black ice in the morning, I have to drive in the morning to go to school, so I don't want to hit no black ice, especially when I have to come pick up my brother. I don't want him to at least slip and fall because it happens to a lot of people. Now again, no word yet from CMS as to any delays or cancellations for students in Mecklenburg County tomorrow. When we do have that update for you, we will bring that to you both here on air and online at WCNC.com. Reporting live in Huntersville, Kendall Morris, WCNC Charlotte. Kendall, thank you for your reporting. Picking up our coverage in Gaston County tonight, this is a live look at Bessemer City where we've seen some really big flakes falling there throughout the afternoon and you can see it's still coming down right now. So let's send it out live to WCNC Charlotte's Brandon Goldner who's there in Bessemer City tonight. So what's going on Brandon? Well, Sarah, these are really thick snowflakes. They're sticking on my jacket. It's covered with this white snow. Right now, it's also sticking on the ground and in the surfaces, but not so much on the roads. The snow continuing to fall heavily these last few afternoon hours. Gaston County EMS says they're keeping an eye on these conditions. They have their equipment to go ready in case of any car crashes during this afternoon commute. Gaston County schools, they're also monitoring conditions ahead of tomorrow and if they have to make any delays from wet conditions freezing over. Take a listen to what some parents have been saying outside Belmont Middle School, their reaction to all of the snow. I'm good to go. I mean, I'm not really too worried about it. Where's more snow? <laughs> Hopefully it does snow. I mean, you know, we haven't got, except for that one day, we got some snow, but it didn't stay. Hopefully it does. 
and families have been telling me that they haven't really been doing much preparation in terms of getting groceries, that sort of things. They're really just excited about this possibility of snow. And of course, right now it is falling right heavily down. Reporting live, Bessemer City, Brandon Goldner, WCNC Charlotte. Brandon, thank you. Another spot that's been seeing snow today is Salisbury. And we saw the snow start falling there just before 3.30 this afternoon. And if you live in that area, you're seeing a snow rain mix. Let's go out live to our Chloe Leshner in Salisbury tonight at 5. Chloe, how have people there have been preparing for this winter blast? Yeah, first responders have been waiting for this all day and the snow has been coming down pretty consistently the last hour or so. I just got a huge flake right in my eyeball. You can see it's starting to stick to the grass, but not to the streets yet. I am told they're out pre treating the bridges, but they're holding off on treating those roads still. Firefighters say this is a level one storm. So while while they are prepared because this is the first time we're seeing snow this year, they are not expecting anything too crazy from this storm. Still, they made sure that their trucks were loaded up with ice melt and with working chainsaws. They say they may see a few more traffic accidents and maybe some power outages, but they are expecting the worst of this storm to be tonight into tomorrow morning. So that's when we would encourage people, the general public, to stay off the roads, let that ice uh, melt. And, you know, if, if they're off the roads, that helps keep, so, keep us off the roads as well. And Salisbury police have some extra patrols out. And if school goes in late or is canceled tomorrow, the SROs will be out on the roads. Also, still no word yet from Roanne Salisbury or Kannapolis schools on what the plan is for tomorrow. But we will be keeping an eye on that. For now, I am live in Roanne County. Chloe Leshner, WCNC Charlotte. Chloe, thank you. Right now, as the snow comes down, we are learning about more school delays and closings for tomorrow. WCNC Charlotte's Vanessa Rufus in the newsroom with those details. Vanessa? Yeah, Fred and Sarah, we've been steadily gathering some of these changes to school schedules for tomorrow. So this is the very latest of what we've got here for counties changing their school. So we've got Lancaster, Caldwell, uh, three hour delay a piece there. Rock Hill schools we're hearing will be at a minimum, a minimum two hour delay. Uh, and speaking of two hour delays, we've got that for York, Fort Mill, Clover, Watauga. Uh, Avery County we're hearing will be closed tomorrow. Ash County schools on a two hour delay and uh, we had heard Kendall mention this in her live report just a little while ago. Still waiting on word from CMS. We do have a full list of closings on our website WCNC.com uh, so you can check out there the list or use here this handy dandy text message uh, system that we've got going. You just text the word closings to 704 329 3600 and you'll get directed a very uh, easy way to take a look at the full list. That's the latest here from the newsroom. I'm Vanessa Rufus. Let's send it over to Brad right now. Yeah, Vanessa, that snow is really coming down in areas like Rock Hill, Charlotte, Mooresville, Monroe, Waxall, heavy snow across the area. Coming up, I'll show you when this heavy batch moves out and when those temperatures really start to tumble. And I'm Hunter Signs live from the Chevy Storm Tracker. Coming up, a look at the conditions that you can expect on these roads as you take the afternoon commute home. Stay with us.
Welcome back. Here is a live look outside in Raleigh tonight, the capital city. You can see a lot of snow out there and it's falling. Your first one forecast in just minutes away. And here's a live look outside of Beach Mountain tonight. You can see there's a lot of snow on the ground up there right now. And while we're not seeing that here in the Piedmont just yet that much, we are keeping a close eye on the roads because they could quickly become a problem here. Yeah, so let's check in live now with Hunter Signs live in the Chevy Storm Tracker. Hunter, what's going on? Yeah, well, the snow is certainly falling here, Fred and Sarah. We are making our way around Uptown on I-77, the inner loop, making our way around the crown, and you can see the snow is continuing to fall. At times, we have seen some big flakes, and also on the grass to the right, we have seen some small accumulation. Now, it probably will melt here in a little while, um, or it could, of course, actually, I see some right now. Let me see if I can get our roof camera over to it. You can see it against that tree line there, but look, you can even see some of that white fluffy stuff starting to accumulating. That's exciting to see right there on the grass. Again, we are here going around uptown where the snow just continues to fall. I will say traffic conditions. We have not seen any accidents. That doesn't mean they haven't happened, but we have not seen any accidents yet. We have seen some of the semis, though, pulled over on the side of the road. They are taking it safe rather than sorry, of course. The good news is I have not seen a single car like we usually do in these bad weather conditions. I have not seen a single car with their windshield wipers not moving and their lights not on. I'll send it back to you. All right, that's good news, I guess. Yeah, it is. All right, right now we want to turn back to the forecast. So we're talking about all night. Take another live look outside. This is what it looks like in Gaston County tonight. You can see snow still coming down right now. So let's bring in meteorologist Brad Panovich and Aisha Scott. So it's kind of a fun snow if you're at home with the kids, right? It, it, it's really good when you forecast it and it actually snows. Yes. <laughs> we know it's difficult for you. Well, so many people doubt it's going to happen. Yeah. You know, we knew we were really confident that it was going to snow, Aisha, but we weren't really sure about accumulation. And yeah. I'm actually surprised how quickly it is accumulating spots. Even out here on our patio, we see it on the roof already. Yeah, and winter precipitation is always the hardest to forecast because sometimes you get a rain snow mix. Sometimes right. It's all snow. Sometimes you have sleet mixing in, so you get a little bit of everything. And as Brad mentioned, yeah, when that snow actually started falling <laughs> here, we were like, yeah. okay. Because <laughs> you sweat it out because, you know, there's such a small difference between this being a cold, miserable rain yeah. and just being, you know, a, a big snowfall like we're seeing right now. And it's going to continue for a while. Let's take a look at those temperatures first. We're going to focus on those in a minute as those temperatures fall tonight because that's going to be a big story as we get later into the overnight hours. But I want to show you some more pictures because it's really coming down in areas around Charlotte. This is going to be Rock Hill. It'll take a second to load up here. But man, these are just giant flakes falling down, and that's why it's accumulating on the grassy surfaces. Now, temperatures a little concerned. We're seeing some 32 show up already. Remember, the freezing point technically is 32.0. Uh, we always don't put the tenth of a degree, but 32.1, you still have a little melting going on. What happened today, warm air near the ground was shrunk because as the heavy precipitation fell, it actually pulled the cold air close to the ground. So even though the temperature near the ground could be slightly above freezing, anywhere from 33 to 40, you can still get snow to the surface. Once that warm layer disappears completely, then we get really concerned about icy roads in the morning. You can see the snow, heavy snow at times across most of the area. And again, we've only got a couple more hours of this. This is not going to be a long duration event. That's why we weren't under a winter storm warning because we're not anticipating that much snow. One, two inches tops here with so much melting. Some areas might end up with a half an inch, but there's still a big band of moisture that could set up over us for the next couple of hours. And really, Raleigh looks to be the winner of this because tonight those totals will go up. If you want to measure for us, one way to do it is to put a snowboard out. You can clear that off every hour, but if you don't have a snowboard, take your ruler in your yard, measure in three separate spots, average it out, and that's a pretty good way to give us a snowfall total. Do it as soon as you can because this stuff is going to be melting pretty quickly, uh, at least through the next couple of hours. I think it'll taper off right around 9 or 10 o'clock, if not sooner. Again, northwest to southeast, but then the real problems develop tonight because the temperature is going to fall, and that could lead to some black ice, especially 
in some typical uh, elevated roadways. Let's go to meteorologist Aisha Scott to explain why those bridges and overpasses are always pretty dicey. Yeah, they certainly are, Brad. And as you head out tomorrow morning, maybe you're heading to work, or I know we do have some school closings and school delays. You certainly want to use extra caution. So let me show you why. Because the bridges and overpasses, they're going to be the areas that you need to use the most caution because they're elevated. So whenever you have elevated surfaces and the air temperature drops below freezing, that 32 or minus 32 degree air, it surrounds the entire bridge, the entire overpass. Therefore, it is actually colder at the surface of that bridge or overpass. And again, with temperatures dropping tomorrow morning into the 20s, that's certainly below freezing, you'll have to watch for black ice forming. So take your time if you are going to be traveling over any bridges, any overpasses tomorrow. But really, take your time just as you head out tomorrow morning at all, because again, the roads are going to be pretty slick as those temperatures drop. Now, Brad, we'll drop into the 20s by tomorrow morning, but just how cold will it get? Yeah, I think some neighborhoods, especially north of town where we've seen the snow fall for a while, we might see some mid 20s, but you can see temperatures hovering at or near the freezing mark for the next couple hours. But right around sunrise tomorrow, that's when we see the upper 20s to around 30 degrees and not much warmer during the day tomorrow. So you can get fooled if you're driving around. Now, we will see a pretty big rebound this weekend. It's going to be cold tomorrow, but those temperatures are going to jump back up, maybe close to 60 by the end of the weekend. But we may not be done with the cold temperatures. I know next weekend, I can't believe it's already the beginning of March, but we're going to see a pretty significant drop in temperatures again. Tonight, these cold temperatures will be the problem. Look at the mid 20s to the north, right around 29 in Charlotte, 29 in Rock Hill. And again, these are cold enough that anything wet is going to ice up and there could be lingering flurries until about two in the morning. Seven day forecast. You know, we go from snow on Friday morning to 60 degrees on Sunday. That is so typical of Charlotte. But again, there's another big cold snap heading our way a week from today. So we may not be done with winter just yet, even though we're heading into March. We'll be right back. Tonight.
Tracker, only on NBC Shot. Welcome back as we continue our first warned weather coverage. You can see a live shot over here, a peak at I-85 and Billy Graham Parkway. Visibility, still not the best, but you can see some headlights there, traffic picking up and moving at a slow clip. Well, we've been asking you to send in videos of the weather conditions all afternoon. Of course, with all the snow, folks are capturing it all on their cameras and devices. Our very own Nathan Morbido standing by at the WCNC Big Board. Nate, what did people been sending you. Well, you know what? Brad's been talking about how it is starting to stick and we're starting to see that through the pictures as well. This is Anthony Johnson sent us this slow mo video from Salisbury, but I want you to kind of stick up around this area in northeast of Charlotte here. This is in China Grove. You can see the snow starting to stick there to the grass. Nice little barn behind it as well as up here in Mooresville. Look at oh, that's that. Beautiful. That's where Brad was really talking about the snow. Legit snow, I think he called them Mooresville. And then this one's, I like this picture here. A little kid got his tongue out trying to get the snowflakes, riding his bike. Uh, the road uh, there, driveway is going to be fine for him. But particularly, uh, you know, Royan County near Mooresville area too. Snow seems to be starting to stick. At least that's what the viewers are showing us. We want to see more of your pictures and videos, so please send them. All right, Nate, thank you. All right, as we head to break, another live look at the first worn Doppler radar. You can see this weather system moving through our area. Brad Panovich and our weather team will have the very latest when we come back. Get clear. Morning with black ice. We'll have the very latest on this changing winter storm. Stay weather aware with the first warm storm team online, on the go, and always on WCNC Charlotte. First at 5:30, a winter weather alert here in the Carolinas tonight. Here's a live look outside in Union County right now. This scene becoming very common all across the Carolinas tonight. Thanks for staying with us, everybody. I'm Sarah French and I'm French Shropshire. A lot of snow falling all across the Carolinas right now. Here is a look at conditions from the mountains to the Piedmont. You can see some big snowflakes falling from Blowing Rock to Uptown Charlotte. But it's not just North Carolina seeing snow. Here's a live look at the roads in Rock Hill and South Carolina. You can see it's really coming down there as well. There are winter weather advisories in effect right now. They are in effect until tomorrow. So let's send it over to Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich, who's tracking it all for us tonight. Hey, Brad. Yeah, the heavy snow is with us, pretty much stuck over us right now. The only thing we're really watching right now is to see how these temperatures go and the back edge of the snow. The snow is going to be with us for the next couple of hours. It looks like the back edge is moving this way, but what's interesting is this is going to 
actually pivot this way as we go through the evening because low pressure is going to form on the coast. Snow everywhere you see on the map. So from Monroe to Indian Land, down towards Tiga Cay, Rock Hill, York, Clover, uh, Belmont, Mount Holly, Gastonia, Huntersville, Concord, everybody's seeing snow right now. There's a little bit of rain mixing in south, but it's solid snow and in cases, in some cases, it's really, really heavy to moderate snow. That heavy snow band pushes to the south, but watch as this kind of pivots a little bit here as we go into the evening. As the low cranks up on the coast, counterclockwise spin for Forces this thing to pivot back a little bit. So somewhere in here, we're going to see this band stick around for a while. It's going to clear out the mountains and foothills pretty quickly, but it could be closer to 10 o'clock before we see this batch com completely move out of the area. But once the snow comes to an end, actually the issues on the roads could get worse. I think we're just going to be wet this evening, but as temperatures fall overnight, that's when we're going to have some problems. Meteorologist Aisha Scott has more on that. And Aisha, those falling temperatures will be problematic by morning. Oh yeah, we're watching for that threat for black ice as we go into your Friday morning. So just a heads up, certainly use extra caution out there on the roads. Now temperatures right now are primarily sitting in the middle 30s. Temperatures have actually fallen into the afternoon versus rising like we would typically see. And when you factor in the breeze as well, it is quite chilly out there. So it feels like it's about 27, 28 degrees right now. And notice those feel like temperatures pretty much staying in sort of the upper 20s range as we work our way closer to the 9, 10 o'clock hour. Hour tonight. Now temperatures will really start to fall after midnight tonight. Again, black ice is going to be a big threat tomorrow morning, so just use extra caution on the roadways. Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich and I will be back in just a little bit to talk more about the full weekend forecast and when all of the snow clears out and what you can expect for your Friday because the sunshine's coming back, but it will be much cooler. Sarah and Fred. Aisha, thank you. Our crews, of course, are spread out all across the Carolinas right now from the mountains to the Piedmont, and really everywhere in between. Our Savannah Levens live in Stanley County. Savannah, what's happening out there? Well, let's just get right to it. Let me show you our driving shot here in Albemarle. Look at that sky just blanketed by snow. You're seeing accumulation there on the sidewalks and the grass as well. Not too much accumulation or really any ice on the main roads, which is the good thing. You're seeing a lot of people driving out and about. Luckily, haven't seen any power outages either. Uh, Stanley County Schools did let out early today, and I just got word that they have uh, decided to run on a delay tomorrow, a three-hour de delay just because of all the freezing temperatures we're expecting. And like Brad has been saying, all these roads that you're seeing on your uh, screen right now, these wet roads could very well and will most likely turn into ice, some dangerous driving conditions overnight. We'll keep an eye on things, guys. That's the update from Stanley County for now. Reporting live, Savannah Levins, WCNC Charlotte. Savannah, thank you. Our live team weather coverage continues just a little farther south now. Yeah, Union County expects to see some pretty significant snow move in this evening and that's where our Brianna Harper is live tonight. So how's it going out there, Brianna? Well, Sarah, we're finally starting to see some wet and heavy snow here in Monroe here in Union County. We've really been across the area here through the past couple hours and the rain has definitely started. The snow that is has definitely made the roadways wet, but the good news is it is not sticking. What isn't causing any problems for the steady traffic that we continue to see here in Union County. If you guys take a look now, we're right along Highway 74 here in Union County. Again, as I mentioned, the roadways are wet, but it's only just been the rain. That snow has not stuck on the roads just yet. The traffic is flowing just fine. And if you take a look, this is really like a almost like a snow globe effect. The snow is just falling very lightly, very slowly. It's actually very beautiful out here. And so as long as we can have you know, trouble free snow. That's kind of the best kind of snow that we hope to see here. And as uh, Brad mentioned, more snow is planning to fall later tonight. So we're going to stay out here and keep you guys updated. But for now, that's the very latest coming out of Union County. All so right, Brianna, you thank you. And a live look at the roads tonight. We haven't heard about any major problems out there, but it's the morning commute you need to be thinking about right now. Overnight, the temperatures will drop and anything on the ground, whether it's rain, sleet or snow, will freeze, making for potentially icy conditions. So here are some of the things to think about if you do have to drive in the morning. First, don't use cruise control because if you hit ice on cruise control, you are more likely to lose control of your vehicle. Make sure you increase your following distance and leave plenty of room between you and the car in front of you and take extra caution with your gas pedal and brakes and accelerate and brake slowly. And finally, if you do hit black ice, stay calm and steer into the skid. And a live look now over the first war Doppler radar. If we can pull that up, maybe not. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. 
Tonight, where's the one place you can escape? Small changes in that forecast track could mean the difference between a trace and several inches. As the temperature drops Thursday night, this could make for a dangerous commute Friday morning with black ice. We'll have the very latest on this changing winter storm. Stay weather aware with the First Warm Storm Team, online, on the go, and always on WCNC Charlotte. All right, a live look now at Bessemer City. As we can see, the roads pretty clear right there, but snow off to the side accumulating. Also that snow coming down in the Piedmont. So let's send it out to Hunter Signs live in Uptown. Hey Hunter. Hey there, Sarah and Fred. Last time I joined you inside Storm Tracker, but I just had to get out in this. Snow is continuing to fall here in Uptown. You can probably see it sticking to my hair, but it's also accumulating on top of cars. Look at this windshield. You can see that white, fluffy stuff all over the windshield and the top of the car. I have seen some people, look, walking their dogs here at Romere Bearden Park. You can see it also starting to stick on the grass here, or what's left of the grass here, in the park area. I did check BB&T Ballpark and it's also sticking on the baseball field. But let's give you a look at some of the skyline because that's when you can really see it when it's against these colorful buildings that we have. Of course, gray skies, but it is coming down at times, some big snowflakes. The biggest concern, though, are the roads later this evening in uptown and around the area as those temperatures drop and these wet conditions could freeze. I'm Hunter Signs. Back to you. All right, Hunter, thank you. Of course, snow has been falling in the Charlotte area for about an hour and a half, Brad. Yeah, and we're seeing a lot of snow across the area. The snow is actually continuing to fall across the Charlotte area. We're in the heaviest band right now. Coming up, I'll show you how much longer it's going to last. Sorrento SX, Telluride, and Sportage. Part of Kia's tough and ready lineup of SUVs. Right now, get 0% APR for 66 months on the purchase of a new 2020 Sorrento. A wise person once said, if you give a man a wild-caught, perfectly seasoned Bojangler fried fish filet sandwich with tangy tartar sauce and American cheese, you can feed him for a day. But if you...
the roads ready for tomorrow morning's commute because it could be a slick one. Yeah, our live team coverage continues tonight in Charlotte, so let's send it out to Alex Shabbat. Alex, you've been talking with crews about how they're preparing, so what are they telling you? That's right, Sarah. NCDOT says they will be sending 20 plow trucks out later tonight, but right now they're holding off on treating the roads because they say it's just too wet and those materials would just wash away. You can see some significant puddling behind me. It's the same deal out on the road, but as you know, what that means is the big concern is black ice, and that's what they're going to do everything they can to try to prevent. Because right now it's been raining, so we didn't want to treat anything. It would just, it just run off. So. Um, we'll be treating tonight once the storm stops and try to prevent any kind of freezing, freezing tonight. So they'll be closely monitoring the conditions as they happen. I also got some new numbers just within the last 30 minutes from Medic. They tell me they've uh, responded to 47 crashes today. That's compared to 46 all of yesterday, and they attribute that directly to the winter weather we're seeing. For now, I'm live in Charlotte, Alex Shabbat, WCNC Charlotte. Alex, thank you. We're also seeing problems popping up at the airport because of this winter weather. Now let's check in with Lexi Wilson out at Charlotte Douglas to find out what's going on there tonight. Lexi? Definitely some travel trouble here. I just checked the monitors and there are several delays as well as cancellations. According to flightaware.com, Charlotte has around 40 delays and 35 cancellations. The airport is currently monitoring the weather and is prepared to implement winter weather operations if and when needed. Here's video of the Charlotte Douglas International Airport spraying a de-icing fluid on an aircraft. It helps remove ice and snow. Here's what one traveler had to say about the winter weather. Flying out at 6.30, my flight's still on time, flying United, but I mean, you never know what the weather. I was here a few weeks ago for the tornado. And officials say please check your flight status with the airline or on their website, cltairport.com. You can also download their mobile app. Reporting at the Charlotte Douglas International Airport, I'm Lexi Wilson for WCNC Charlotte. All right, here's a live look at Beach Mountain tonight. You can see there's a lot of snow on the ground up there. Really beautiful. We're seeing snow everywhere right now from the mountains, even into South Carolina. So guys, really a dream come true for the kids, but the problem's going to be Later into on. the night yeah. and for the commute in the morning. Yeah, this yeah. is actually, this is the best time of it all because it's not sticking on the roads. It's falling. Everyone who got out of school early. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow morning, complete opposite. It won't be falling. There probably won't be a lot stuck around, but that black ice is going to be a big issue. Oh yeah, certainly going to be a big issue as we drop into the 20s oh. overnight tonight. So we're going to fall below freezing and yeah, certainly take your yeah. time on the roads, especially those bridges and overpasses tomorrow. Morning. Yeah, that'll be a big issue. And a big question I've today is like, why is it changing from rain to snow? And a lot of times people ask me, you know, why, how can it snow when it's 35 or 36 out? Everyone thinks it has to be below freezing. But the key part of this is the temperature above our head was 32 degrees or lower. And throughout the day, that cold layer of air has worked its way closer to the surface. So what has happened is that warm pocket of air near the surface has shrunk and it's very narrow. So the snowflakes can survive to the ground. Now they will still melt on contact with the road surface because the ground temperature is about 48 degrees or so, but it falls quick enough. It can accumulate and we're seeing it on grassy surfaces because remember grass has got a lot of air between it. So through the next couple of hours, the worst snow will be between now and 10. Now we could see up to an inch, but I think most areas will be a half an inch to an inch because of melting. That three inch amount could be out towards the east. That's where we're probably going to see. I think Anson Stanley, Richmond counties, maybe even parts of Union County could end up with two or three inches because it's going to fall when it's dark and we've got a little bit colder temperatures. But as you can see during the overnight hours, we're going to see that refreeze and that's when we'll have some issues. There's the heavy snow band. This is the heaviest over us right now. So a couple more hours of this, I think it's going to last probably up until maybe about eight or nine, maybe 10 o'clock and maybe a stray flurry. And just to show you what it looks like, the band's going to pivot a little bit because there's low pressure on the coast. Counterclockwise spin will bring some of that snow through about 10 o'clock and then it begins to taper off. Now, so far we've seen a lot of melting, but it doesn't mean we haven't seen accumulation. Meteorologist Aisha Scott has more on some of the first numbers that we're getting in for snowfall. Pretty impressive considering how warm it's been, Aisha. I know, and temperatures started off this morning in the 40s and we've been falling into the afternoon into the 30. So let's talk about some of the numbers so far. Jonas Ridge, two inches of snow. Gamewell, about one inch of snow. Morganton, 
a half an inch. Not bad at all. And also a half an inch for Turnersburg. Matthews right now uh, about two tenths of an inch of snow. So we're going to continue to add to these numbers because yes, it is still falling. Now it will be falling for the rest of tonight, at least through the evening hours. We'll still be dealing with the snowfall, Brad. Yeah, and then the temperature drop is going to be the concern because even if you saw a lot of rain today, more than snow, doesn't mean it's not going to freeze. Everything's going to ice up tonight as temperatures fall below freezing sometime in the middle of the night. I think it's going to be after midnight and closer to sunrise. So don't get tricked into thinking the roads are just wet. If you're up early tomorrow morning, I think we're going to see some icy spots as we saw on those bridges and overpasses. Tomorrow's high temperature in the low 40s, but a quick jump all the way back up into the mid and upper 50s, even close to 60. But then next week, there's another sign that we could see another shot of cold air heading our way, especially by the end of the week. Maybe high temperatures just in the 40s. So tonight with clearing skies by morning, we'll see temperatures in the teens in the mountains, mid to maybe upper 20s across the Piedmont, 29 in Charlotte. That certainly would ice up everything on those bridges and overpasses. You could see that 30% chance of a stray snowflake tonight. Here's a look at the seven day forecast. Big refreeze tonight. Another one for Saturday morning. That's going to give us a chance chance of some more black ice and then temperatures warming up as we go into Sunday. We'll see temperatures probably close to about 60 degrees, guys, and those temperatures, um, you know, over the next couple of days warming back up, certainly going to give us the chance to melt any snow that does fall today, and we could even see another refreeze. But next week, wow. back near 60, which is so typical Charlotte weather. We've got something for everybody, though. Yeah, <laughs> three seasons over the and three next days. Seven days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> isn't that the truth? Yeah. All right, thanks, guys. Well, right now you are taking a live look. Let's see. Is that Boone King yeah, Street? King Street. <laughs> you know, I have to lean in a little bit more to these cameras now uh, lately. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> We've been tracking all this winter weather since this morning. We've been asking you to send in your videos of the weather conditions and you you all have on social media tagging WCNC. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of pictures too and people capturing them on their cell phones. Our Nathan Morbido standing by at the WCNC big board. Nate, what's compelling behind you right there? Look, we got a snowman. This Aww. is in Huntersville. This is little Briley. The snowman's name is Joe, they say. They look like they took the snow off the table there to be able to put that together. And then we're having fun in Matthews. Look at this. Got the tongue stuck out, trying to get the snowflakes coming down. Also, I want to show you this little dog. Look at it. Got the sweater on, little snow in his or her hair. That's in Highland Creek. Uh, this is way up there, kind of near the North Carolina Virginia line. I just want to show you. You know, it snows in the mountains in wintertime. Uh, this is just uh, kind of in Ash County in western North Carolina, not far from Tennessee, not from far from North Carolina, and in Indian Trail, not far from Matthews. 525 snowflakes coming down, so people are starting to have fun. The snow so far not causing too many problems. Let's hope it stays that way. And that's good news around here with this winter weather. We are seeing a lot of school delays and even some closings tomorrow. Let's check in with Vanessa Rufus in the newsroom. Vanessa. Hey, Fred, yeah, we've been seeing that list of closures and delays steadily grow, not only impacting school districts, but we're also seeing um, individual universities and colleges, uh, different agencies around the area announcing closures or delays. So we'll take you now to this uh, list that we've updated with some of specifically the school districts. So we could see there on the left hand side, two hour delay. We've collected there Rock Hill, Fort Mill, York County, Watauga, Ash County. We've got some districts that are reporting a three hour delay. We see those on the right hand side, Lancaster, Caldwell County, and then we have some full on closures that we're expecting for tomorrow, Avery County and Anson County. And of course, as I mentioned, this is pretty fluid. We've been seeing this list steadily grow as we've gone through the afternoon. We've been seeing uh, some universities too. So we've been keeping track of all of those on our website, WCNC.com slash closings. But we did want to remind you of an easy text message way that you can get that list to you and you get the very latest because we're constantly adding in uh, different entities onto that list. So this is how you do it. You text the word closings to 704-329-3600. Once again, that number is 704-329-3600. And this is text message. Don't call text. And you should be able to get that list pretty easily sent to your phone via text message. And at last check we were seeing, because I just checked our website, it looks like we have about 37 either delays or closings reported there on that list. That's the latest here. We'll keep monitoring, though, guys. Back to you. Thank you, Vanessa.
And we take you out now with a live look at this camera where you can see absolutely nothing. <laughs> nothing. But we guarantee you it's snowing out there. We'll be back.
And we'll also have live coverage of those closings. That's part of our team coverage that continues tonight at six. We want to start with our chief meteorologist Brad Panovich. Brad, what is the timing of this snow system? The snow is over us right now and it's almost about ready to move out. We've got a, several more hours, maybe two or three, depending on location. And then it's the freeze we got to worry about tonight. This is a live look up at the Beach Mountain Parkway. You could see the snow on the ground up there. They were loving it. Another great ski weekend set up for the North Carolina mountains. Those temperatures Temperatures continue to fall across the area. As we take a look at temperatures right now, we're in the low to mid 30s, so we're barely at or above freezing in a lot of locations. 32 up in Salisbury, 33 in Hickory, 34 in Concord right now. And as we go through the evening hours, the snow and sleet will taper off around 9 to 10 o'clock. Now, most areas are just going to see a dusting to a half an inch, some areas one to two inches east of Charlotte. But as we go towards tomorrow morning, I think that's when we're going to have some issues. You can see the snow continuing to push off to the south and the east, but there's a heavy snow band pretty much right over Charlotte right now, and that band is expected to be over us for another couple of hours. We can already see the back edge moving through the mountains, and in fact, the snow is almost done up there. You see that band pushing east. Look at that by 8 o'clock. It starts to push to the east by 10 o'clock. It starts to taper off and the snow moves into the sand hills and by overnight will clear things out, but the temperature drops and that's when the problems occur. We could see a really hard freeze in some locations with some icy spots by tomorrow morning, guys. All right, Brad, thank you. Of course, every corner of Mecklenburg County seeing some snow today and we're talking uptown, Huntersville, Fort Mill, Ballantyne, North Charlotte and more. WCNC Charlotte's Alex Shabbat is at the NCDOT maintenance yard off of Rosles Ferry Road in Northwest Charlotte. Alex, what are the crews doing right there? Well, Fred, NCDOT tells us they'll be sending 20 of these plow trucks out later tonight, but they're waiting for the storm to pass because they say it's just too wet right now to use their treatment. You can see a number of puddles just where I'm standing, and that means the big threat is black ice. NCDOT carefully picking their time to pounce on the winter weather. All of our trucks have temperature gauges on them, so we'll be able to monitor the temperatures of the pavement and I'll be able to treat. NCDOT says they did not treat any roads during most of the day because the rain would wash the materials away. Temperatures won't be low enough for any snow to accumulate on the roads. But later tonight, NCDOT says they'll be sending 20 plow trucks onto the interstates in Mecklenburg, Cabarrus, and Union counties. The main threat, black ice. Um, so if we do start seeing anything tracking on the roadways, then we'll start to treat. Meanwhile, medic preparing for a wide variety of winter weather related injuries. Generally, when the weather first starts coming in, we have a drastic increase in traffic accidents. Medic says they'll have a dozen extra crews during the expected peak time of the storm, and they'll be equipped with tools for slick spots. And we can use this to put um, under the tires, but we can also use it if we're going into someone's house and the sidewalk is extremely slick or the front porch is extremely slick. NCDOT is urging drivers to stay off the roads if possible or to take a primary route and they ask you to give the plow trucks plenty of space as they battle the winter storm. So they'll be closely monitoring those weather conditions as the night goes on to determine when to treat the roads. I also just got some new numbers from Medic about crashes. They told me they've had 47 crashes so far today. That's compared to 46 all of yesterday. They say that's directly attributed to the winter weather we're seeing. Live in Charlotte, Alex Shabbat, WCNC Charlotte. All right, Alex, thank you. And now we want to get out to Kendall Morris, who is in Huntersville, checking on how CMS is dealing with the snow. Yeah, Fred, well, CMS has not made a decision about what they're going to do on Friday, whether that's a delay or a cancellation. We are expecting that decision later tonight. Now, earlier today, they did dismiss all campuses three hours early and canceled all after school activities. That was before this snow started falling from the sky. We're here at Huntersville Elementary. They got out at noon today, and you can see that snow here is starting to accumulate. Some here in my hand. It's not quite good enough for a snowball just yet, but that just shows you how quickly the conditions are changing here. You can see that snow is starting to stick to the ground. But what we're really concerned about is the pavement. This is what school officials are really watching out for because this is a place where buses have to drive, where students have to walk in the mornings. And so anything that is hitting this pavement is melting. That means it has the potential to freeze overnight, creating slick spots and black ice as students come to school in the morning. Now, we did talk to parents as uh, school was letting out earlier today about the snow and the potential for school to be canceled tomorrow. Here's what they had to say. I hope they do, but I think they'll probably have a delayed start mm -hmm. due to ice. 
I thought that there would be snow by 11, um, but you know, we're still waiting to see if anything's gonna materialize and uh, I'll pick her up from school and we'll wait together. And of course, the snow has materialized here, but just how much of it will stick to the ground, that is what we are waiting to see. And we are waiting to see if it is going to ice overnight, creating those hazardous conditions. And so we will bring you the decision once CMS gives us the update of what they plan to do about school tomorrow. As soon as we have it, make sure you stick with WCNC Charlotte throughout the evening. Live in Huntersville, Kendall Morris, WCNC Charlotte. Yeah, and that's what Brad says, that icing on the roads will be an issue overnight into the morning. Kendall, thank you. Gaston County has also been seeing a mix of rain and snow today. Schools there letting out early today to get kids home before the snow got too heavy. This is a live look at Bessemer City right now. WCNC Charlotte's Brandon Goldner live there tonight. So Brandon, how are things where you are? Well, Sarah and Fred, all that heavy snow we had been seeing all this afternoon, it's now starting to let up a little bit as the system passes through us. We're also seeing slick roads. Every time a car is passing by, as we hear the water clap, uh, excuse me, pushing up and just hearing that water really echo along the roads. Gaston County Schools, they're monitoring conditions ahead of tomorrow. Right now over here, the snow is not really sticking to the roads. It's more so sticking to the grassy surfaces as well as the trees and the bushes. Gaston County EMS tells me they haven't seen any significant uptick in their call numbers, but it has been a normal call volume and they're still keeping an eye, keeping prepared for the possibility of additional crashes or additional issues. Meanwhile, families, they're not so much preparing, but they're just enjoying this winter weather. Live in Bessemer City, Brandon Goldner, WCNC Charlotte. Brandon, thank you. So Rowan County also getting snow today. This is a video out of Salisbury. It rained for a while there and then of course it turned into this snow. WCNC Charlotte's Chloe Leshner live in Salisbury. Chloe, how is it looking out there? Yeah, Fred, it's actually let up a lot since the last time we spoke, but it really has accumulated here on the grass and on some cars that we're seeing passing by, but it still isn't sticking to the streets. Now, Rowan County Emergency Services have gotten seven 911 calls related to this storm today, and first responders are expecting there to be a little, a few more accidents than normal, which is why they were out pre-treating the bridges here, and there will be extra police patrols. That's because they really are concerned about the black ice. As temperatures drop, which I have felt happen just being out here all day. We will expect things to freeze over. I have my handy dandy thermometer, which how times have changed. I haven't brought it out since the summer. I'm just going to walk over here and get the temperature of the street right now. It is reading in the 20s. It's getting much colder out here. So that is definitely something to keep in mind if you're going to be heading out on the roads or if you have a loved one who still has to commute home from work, you definitely will want to take it slow. Police here asking people to just avoid it if you can as the night continues and we expect things to just continue to get colder. But for now, live in Salisbury, Chloe Leshner, WCNC Charlotte. An important message is those temperatures drop. Chloe, thank you. Union County expected to see some pretty significant snow move in this evening. And that's where WCNC Charlotte's Brianna Harper is tonight. So Brianna, how are things looking where you are? Yeah, Fred and Sarah, we are right off of Highway 74 here in Monroe, and it's just been a consistent snowfall here for the past several hours. If you guys take a look here, right along 74, definitely a lot of wet roads that we've been seeing over the past several hours, as I mentioned. Of course, no snow sticking on the roadways here, but if you take a look down here in this grassy area that we're standing on, you can see the snow just kind of covering the grass here. Um, not a lot of accumulation, not inches or anything like that, but as we continue throughout the rest of the evening, we'll sure be looking out for that and also keeping an eye on the roads as well, making sure that people take their times, making sure that any black eyes potential, everyone's alert about that as well. Um, but for now, that's the very latest from Union County. I'll send it back to you guys. Brianna, thank you. Of course, we continue to get school closings coming into our newsroom. WCNC Charlotte's Vanessa Rufus in the newsroom with more on school closures. Vanessa? Yeah, Fred and Sarah, we wanted to bring you some of the updates. Since our last check-in on school closures, we are seeing uh, three additional counties that are adding on with a three-hour delay for tomorrow. So let's go ahead and show you uh, there on the screen our collection of some of the school districts. And keep in mind, this isn't comprehensive as far as all of the closures and delays. We have a much larger list that includes colleges and agencies and even businesses and churches on our website, WCNC.com. But here 
there with the two hour delay. We have Rock Hill, Fort Mill, York County, Watauga, Ash County. Three hour delay. We have Lancaster, Caldwell, and then the new additions we had just mentioned there uh, Alexander, Lincoln, and Iredell Statesville. Uh, and then a closure, full closure for tomorrow, we have listed as Avery County and Anson County. So once again, full closure list. Actually, at last check, we saw 41 delays or closures on that on our website, WCNC.com. But you could also text to get a quick link to that list. So here's the number to text for that 704-329-3600. So just text the word closings to that number to get that list. And I know Sarah, this is a similar process, a similar method that folks at home can actually communicate with us and show us what's going on in their neighborhoods. Yeah, exactly. You just send that number, send photos and we'll put it on the air and yeah, makes it really easy. Vanessa, thank you. And as we continue to track weather across our area, send in your photos and videos. What you're seeing, all you have to do is text that number 704-329-3600. Again, we just want to reiterate though, text don't call this number. Include your name and location when you send in those videos as well. And that band of heavy snow kind of parked right over the Charlotte area I-85 corridor. Coming up, I'll show you when this will start to pivot off to the east and when those temperatures will really drop. All of this month, WCNC Charlotte is celebrating Black History Month, highlighting historical places in Charlotte and in the Carolinas. Good Samaritan Hospital was the first private hospital in North Carolina built exclusively for the treatment of blacks. The historic hospital, which stood between... way for the stadium. It existed roughly where the 40 yard line of the field is. A historical marker acknowledging the site was erected outside the stadium in 2002. To see more historically significant places in our area, go to WCNC.com.
some breaking news to get you up to speed on. We want to go straight to our Hunter Signs right now, who is live in the Chevy Storm Tracker. Hunter. Hey there, Fred. Yeah, some breaking news. Uh, medic confirming that there was a pedestrian hit here on Independence Boulevard on the east side of town. We are driving down uh, Independence right now. Let me give you a look at the roads. Snowy conditions continue, and they have uh, they have been going on, of course, for the past couple of hours. We did pass that scene moments ago, and it looked like the left lane of the inbound lane was blocked off. That is where we believe it was. Um, somewhere near Village Lake Drive. Uh, we do know that that person was treated for serious injuries and transported to Atrium CMC. Um, of course, this entire stretch is a dangerous road, of course, any day of the week for pedestrians. We have done so many stories, but when you add in snow and low visibility, of course, with these windshield wipers, it's dark and gloomy as the sun, what's left of the sun is setting. It's just a sad situation out here. We will try to get an update on that person's condition, but as I said, one person hit here on uh, Independence Boulevard on the east side of town. Back to you. All right, Hunter, thank you. Now we want to get out to Savannah Levins, who's tracking the roads in Stanley County. Savannah. Yeah, I can tell you the snow's been coming down pretty consistently the past few hours. Let me flip this camera around and show you driving conditions. Right now we're in Abelmarl. I can tell you the snow's really kind of gotten a lot wetter maybe in the past like half hour, not those big fluffy flakes we were seeing. You're seeing the roads on your screen right now in front of us just drenched not seeing a lot of black ice or freezing on those roads yet so that's the good news i can tell you stanley county schools recently made the decision to operate on a three hour delay tomorrow i know a lot of our charlotte area cms folks still waiting on word on that but in stanley county at least they are going to be operating on a three hour delay uh, let me show you some video we shot earlier you can see what the snow has been looking like and versus what it is looking like now but definitely Definitely those wet roads going to be a concern. By the way, Stanley County Schools saying that they still could completely cancel school tomorrow. They're going to keep an eye on things, as are we. For now, reporting live in the Storm Tracker, I'm Savannah Levins for WCNC Charlotte. Guys, back to you. Savannah, thank you. The airport has been monitoring the weather all day long. De-icing operations already happening today. WCNC Charlotte's Nathan Morbido at the big board tracking everything you need to know if you're flying out tonight or have someone flying in to visit. Nate. Well, if you're flying out or you have someone in coming in, it's not looking good. All this red right here, that means more than one out of every two flights is either delayed or canceled. And right now, Charlotte has the worst delays and cancellations in all of the country, more than 100 total, uh, more than 50 cancellations, more than 50 delays. And this really has been an issue that's been building throughout the day. I got to tell you this too. Charlotte has 25% of all the delays and cancellations in the entire United States right now. The airport says it's de-iced more than 100 planes. So obviously the effort is to get these off the ground and bring other planes in. You can see places like Phoenix struggling to get people into Charlotte. Same with Miami, also DC, New York City. But let me take you back in time a little bit and, and keep an eye on this Charlotte uh, mark there too, if you can. And I'm going to go backwards and look at look at that. See all that green? That means there wasn't much misery, according to FlightAware's misery map. It was much better earlier in the day. But as we move forward throughout the afternoon, the storm system kind of moved northeast. More and more flights got delayed and canceled. Right now, more than 100 cancellations and delays at the Charlotte Douglas Airport. Let's hope things improve tonight. All right, Nate, thank you. Of course, we want to show you some videos we've been getting online. This is video from UNC Charlotte. You can see snow falling on campus there. All classes were canceled today after 1 p.m. And take a look at this video from the Charlotte Motor Speedway. You can see snow falling on the track out there. Certainly consistent with what we've been seeing around town, Brad. Yeah, and this snow is going to continue for a couple of hours. We're start, I mean, I'm really starting to see it stick on the grass and the roof mm -hmm. and a lot of the cars, but not the roads. The roads yeah. are just wet. The road temperatures are in the upper 40, so there's really not a lot of issues on the roads and probably not for the next couple of hours. Oh, that's the good thing now, yeah. but into the overnight hours, if you work a shift like us when you're yeah. driving home at midnight or in the morning commute with kids getting to school, yeah. that's going to be a I major really issue. I really think that sunrise time frame is going to be the worst because even around midnight, it's probably still going to be wet. Sunrise temperatures get icy and then you're driving and you think it's just like we had right now and we have issues. So this is our Rock Hill camera. You can see the snow is still falling. It's a little hard to tell, but you can look on the cars there in the parking lot and on the roof and on the trees. 
you actually can see the snow is accumulated on the roofs of the cars and some of the trees. But look at the parking lot. It's completely wet. That warm pavement has melted everything. Now temperatures are hovering right around 33, 32. So we're really close to the freezing mark in some locations, but we're above it. So it's melting slower. But now that the sun is down, it actually has a little bit more chance to stick because all the snow and rain that fell earlier today actually pulled warmth out of the ground so it actually cooled it but as we go through the next couple of hours this snow is going to sit over us and really right now through about i'd say 8 30 9 o'clock probably the best snow we're going to see out of this system because we have the combination of a heavy band of precipitation and we've got falling temperatures so the efficiency of accumulation is likely there's another little band back here this thing actually pivots through around midnight and I'll show you what I mean. Here's our close up future cast. Look at that band of snow. Now typically you think it's moving this way, but remember we've got low pressure spinning up near the coast. So this little band is going to pivot a little bit. It's actually going to pause for a second around Charlotte Southeast. So if you're in Union County, Anson, Stanley, Richmond County, you are probably going to end up with the biggest amount out of this because at eight o'clock, that's when the heavy snow is over you and it's going to sit over you through 10, maybe even until about midnight tonight when everything starts to taper off. But look at that little band of snow flurries that develops there around 2 a.m. And eventually everything clears out and it dries up tonight. But the problem is temperatures fall very quickly. And that's where we could run into some issues tomorrow morning. Meteorologist Aisha Scott is going to talk about the potential for that black ice as we're going to see that tomorrow morning, Aisha, and that could be a big problem. Oh yeah, Brad, that certainly could be a big issue as you head out tomorrow morning, even later on tonight into the early morning hours on your Friday. You do want to use extra caution and here's why, because temperatures overnight tonight are going to fall below freezing. So we've got that below 32 degree air and you need to use extra caution, especially at the bridges and the overpasses because that air wraps around those elevated surfaces. So you want to make sure that you are using extra, extra caution here. If you do have to pass over any bridge or overpasses. Now, if you're heading out tomorrow morning, just use uh, again extra caution, but also take your time on the roadways as well because the roads are going to be pretty slick. And again, that black ice will certainly be a big threat tomorrow. Now, Brad, temperatures are going to fall below freezing tonight, but just how low will those temperatures go? I think in the Charlotte area, we're looking at temperatures probably around 28, 29 degrees. The so temperatures falling pretty quickly and notice how that really happens right around sunrise. So even this evening, roads for the most part will remain wet and DOT is going to do their great job as they always do. Once it starts to taper off, they're going to go out and spread some of that rock salt, even some brine. They'll keep a lot of those bridges and overpasses clear. Now the high pressure builds in for tomorrow into Saturday. We're going to see crisp cold starts of the mornings, but the afternoons are going to be very warm. In fact, Saturday in the 50s and on Sunday as the high pressure moves away from us, the flow starts coming back out of the south. So we're going to spike all the way back up to 60 degrees and this snow will seem like a distant memory. That's kind of typical for our Charlotte snows. Teens in the mountains tonight, very cold up there, so very icy conditions. You can see where the temperatures are in the mid 20s. That's where we'll have some issues across the Piedmont, upper 20s and near 30, so likely some icing on the bridges and overpasses. Here's the seven day forecast. You could see temperatures in the mornings the next couple of days will be cold, but the afternoons are going to be quite pleasant with high temperatures in the 50s and 60s. More rain next week and more warm temperatures, but look at that big cool down by next Thursday. We'll have more winter weather coverage after the break. Crews, of course, are spread out all across the president who thinks everything is about him, his tweets, his golf courses, his.
centered right over the Charlotte area. That band extends back to Interstate 40, but really centered over areas around Charlotte South and East, and that band is continuing to push off to the south and east. We'll have to see how long that band actually stays over us because we're starting to see the back edge uh, move through the mountains. And over the next couple of hours, I think the temperatures are what we're going to be watching closely. And, you know, right now we're seeing some temperatures already near the freezing mark, which is uh, going to be something to keep an eye on because once it drops to 31, I think is when we're going to have issues. 32, because you don't always know, those are those are rounded. <laughs> it might mm -hmm. be 32.1. Yeah. So as we look at the hour by hour forecast, it's really by tomorrow morning that we start to see uh, that the black ice issues because we'll be near 29 or 30 degrees, bridges and overpasses in particular. All right, Brett, thank you. We will be live streaming everything you need to know when it comes to the weather online, on Facebook, and on our YouTube channel at 8 o'clock tonight, 30 minutes. Make sure you tune in. Nightly News is next. We'll see you back here on TV at 11. Crews, of course, are spread out all across the Carolinas right now from the mountains to the Piedmont and really everywhere in between. Our Savannah Levens live in Stanley County. Savannah, what's happening out there? Well, let's just get right to it. Let me show you our driving shot here in Albemarle. Look at that sky just blanketed by snow. You're seeing accumulation there on the sidewalks and the grass as well. Not too much accumulation or really any ice on the main roads, which is a good thing. You're seeing a lot of people driving out and about. Luckily, haven't seen any power outages either. Uh, Stanley County Schools did let out early today, and I just got word that they have uh, decided to run on a delay tomorrow, a three hour de delay just because of all the freezing temperatures we're expecting. And like Brad has been saying, all these roads that you're seeing on your uh, screen right now, these wet roads could very well and will most likely turn into ice, some dangerous driving conditions overnight. We'll keep an eye on things, guys. That's the update from Stanley County for now. Reporting live, Savannah Levins, WCNC Charlotte. Savannah, thank you. Our live team weather coverage continues just a little farther south now. Yeah, Union County expects Expected to see some pretty significant snow move in this evening, and that's where our Brianna Harper is live tonight. So, how's it going out there, Brianna? Well, Sarah, we're finally starting to see some wet and heavy snow here in Monroe, here in Union County. We've really been across the area here through the past couple hours, and the rain has definitely started. The snow, that is, has definitely made the roadways wet. But the good news is it is not sticking. What isn't causing any problems for the steady traffic that we continue to see here in Union County. If you guys take a look now, we're right along Highway 74 here in Union County. Again, as I mentioned, the roadways are wet, but it's only just been the rain. That snow has not stuck on the roads just yet. The traffic is flowing just fine. And if you take a look, this is really like a almost like a snow globe effect. The snow is just falling very lightly, very slowly. It's actually very beautiful out here. And so as long as we can have, you know, trouble free snow, that's kind of the best kind of snow that we hope to see here. And as uh, Brad mentioned, more snow is planning to fall later tonight. So we're going to stay out here and keep you guys updated. But for now, that's the very latest coming out of Union County. All so right, Brianna, you thank you. Snow has been falling in the Charlotte area for about an hour and a half now. We're not seeing much accumulation yet, but we have been seeing some pretty heavy snow at times. And you can see it's really coming down in Charlotte as we speak. And DOT crews are ready to jump into action and get the roads ready for tomorrow morning's commute because it could be a slick one. Yeah, our live team weather coverage continues tonight in Charlotte. So let's send it out to Alex Shabbat. And Alex, you've been talking with those crews about how they're preparing. So what are they telling you? That's right, Sarah. NCDOT says they'll be sending 20 plow trucks across our area. But right now they're holding off on treating the roads because it's just too wet. And as you can see, there's puddles on the ground and those materials would just wash away. But this also means the big threat is black ice. We'll be prepared for anything that could happen. NCDOT trucks closely monitoring road temperatures as the threat of black ice a main concern in the late night hours. All of our trucks have temperature gauges on them, so we'll be able to monitor the temperatures of the pavement and I'll be able to treat. For most of the day, NCDOT crews had not treated any roads. The maintenance manager saying the temperatures are too warm for accumulation and the rain would wash away the materials. Right now it's been raining, so we didn't want to treat anything. It would just it just run off. So. Um, we'll be treating tonight once the storm stops and try to prevent any kind of freezing 
prison tonight. NCDOT says they'll be deploying 20 plow trucks onto the interstates in Mecklenburg, Cabarrus, and Union counties. They're urging drivers to give them space and take a primary route if possible. The interstates will be monitored closely. Um, so take a primary route to, uh, to and from your office, but be very careful and uh, anticipate taking a little bit longer to get into work. So as you heard, NCDOT will be monitoring the roads closely throughout the night, and if they need to treat them a little earlier than expected, they're ready to do that. Live in Charlotte, Alex Shabad, WCNC Charlotte. Thank you. Our live team coverage continues in Mecklenburg County. Yeah, our Kendall Morris live in Huntersville. So Kendall students there got out early today. Any word yet on CMS's plans for tomorrow? Yeah, Sarah, we don't have any idea what is going to happen as far as school goes tomorrow. That decision is expected later today. Now, school officials, they're certainly keeping an eye on the weather like this as conditions change across Mecklenburg County. Here in Huntersville, things have changed quickly ever since students got out here at Huntersville Elementary, which is where we are now. They got out at noon, and then this afternoon, this heavy snow has started to fall here. Now, just within the last hour, we've seen it start to accumulate on the ground. This is the first the accumulation that we're seeing in the Huntersville area. But the big concern is up up here on the pavement, all of the snow is falling to the ground, and you can see that it is making everything around it wet. It makes for dangerous conditions if those temperatures dip below freezing overnight because all of this could ice over, making for hazardous conditions for students, teachers, staff that have to come to school in the morning. Now, CMS did dismiss all campuses three hours early today out of an abundance of caution after school activities were also canceled. The snow and the potential for black ice is receiving mixed reactions from both parents and students. I really hope we get a dusting at least. I'd like to see a little snow so she can enjoy it and enjoy her first snow day. The black ice in the morning, I have to drive in the morning to go to school, so I don't want to hit no black ice, especially when I have to come pick up my brother. I don't want him to at least slip and fall because it happens to a lot of people. Now, again, no word yet from CMS as to any delays or cancellations for students in Mecklenburg County tomorrow. When we do have that update for you, we will bring that to you both here on air and online at WCNC.com. Reporting live in Huntersville, Kendall Morris, WCNC Charlotte. Kendall, thank you for your reporting. We want to start with our chief meteorologist, Brad Panovich. Brad, what is the timing of this snow system? The snow is over us right now, and it's almost about ready to move out. We've got a, several more hours, maybe two or three, depending on location. And then it's the freeze we got to worry about tonight. This is a live look up at the Beach Mountain Parkway. You could see the snow on the ground up there. They were loving it. Another great ski weekend set up for the North Carolina mountains. Those temperatures continue to fall across the area. As we take a look at temperatures right now, we're in the low to mid 30s, so we're barely at or above freezing in a lot of locations. 32 up in Salisbury, 33 in Hickory, 34 in Concord right now. And as we go through the evening hours, the snow and sleet will taper off around 9 to 10 o'clock. Now, most areas are just going to see a dusting to a half an inch. Some areas one to two inches east of Charlotte. But as we go towards tomorrow morning, I think that's when we're going to have some issues. You can see the snow continuing to push off to the south and the east, but there's a heavy snow band pretty much right over Charlotte right now, and that band is expected to be over us for another couple of hours. We can already see the back edge moving through the mountains, and in fact, the snow is almost done up there. You see that band pushing east. Look at that by 8 o'clock. It starts to push to the east by 10 o'clock. It starts to taper off and the snow moves into the sand hills and by overnight we will clear things out, but the temperature drops and that's when the problems occur. We could see a really hard freeze in some locations with some icy spots by tomorrow morning, guys. All right, Brad, thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. North Carolina is about to feel this year's first blast of winter weather. The state's getting ready and now is the time for you to get ready too. The entire state is under either a winter storm advisory or warning through tomorrow morning. This winter storm will affect most parts of North Carolina. Effects could be minor in many places, but will be more significant in other places. We expect the heaviest snows after sunset. Northeastern North Carolina might get the greatest impact, where three to six inches of snow are possible in the forecast. For the Piedmont, Triad, and the Triangle area, one to three inches, one to two inches in the Charlotte area, and one to three inches in the western mountains of North Carolina. We can expect whiteout conditions on the coast due to heavy snows and gusty winds. Now, don't let the temperature right now fool you. 
It's still winter in North Carolina, and it's going to get colder tonight. Snowy roads can still be deadly if you're not careful. Although this is a fluid number, statewide right now we have 29 school districts closed and 55 of them on early release. Please pay close attention to your local forecast and be alert to changing weather conditions over the next 24 hours. Our Department of Transportation crews have been preparing since earlier this week. The State Highway Patrol troopers are ready. They're out on the roads to assist motorists and keep the traffic moving. And you can help them by staying off the road when conditions deteriorate. Our State Emergency Operations Center will activate here at 1 o'clock this afternoon to be ready to respond to any needs from local governments that they might have. Significant icing is not expected, and that's good news because that means that the roads will be easier to treat and clear, and there shouldn't be any major issues with power outages, although gusty winds tonight and tomorrow could cause some outages. And if your power does go out, Remember to never use a generator or grill in your home or garage because the consequences could be deadly. Everyone is encouraged to make a plan for your family, including your pets. There are some things that you can do to make sure your family is ready for, unexpected, uh, for the unexpected with this winter weather storm. Keep food and batteries on hand and keep an emergency kit in your car. And for more information on how to prepare for winter storms, I would suggest you go to readync.org, or for the latest road conditions, you can go to drivenc.gov. Uh, we have experts here who are ready to answer any questions that you might have. I have our Secretary of the Department of Public Safety, Eric Hooks, on stage, our Emergency Management Director, Mike Sprayberry, uh, Commander Glenn McNeil, the Colonel of the North Carolina Highway Patrol, is here. Our chief engineer from the Department of Transportation, Tim Little, is here. Major General Todd Hunt of the North Carolina National Guard is here. He has just taken his new position in command of the National Guard. Katie Webster is our meteorologist from Emergency Management, and she is here to answer questions. And Lee Williamson is our language interpreter. I first want to hear a few words from Director Sprayberry. Mike. Thank you, Governor, and good morning, everyone. As a winter storm begins to move into the state of North Carolina, we're decisively engaged with our state emergency response team partners to prepare for any required response operations. As the Governor said, the State Emergency Operations Center will be activated today at 1 p.m. We'll have agencies like the Department of Transportation, the National Guard, DMV license and theft, the Highway Patrol, and others who can assist us with keeping our roads safe and clear. Our utility partners are poised to surge into impacted areas for power restoration operations if needed. We've been in contact with our county partners to ensure that we have good situational awareness of their needs and that we're well prepared to provide the full spectrum of disaster response capability in all impact areas. Again, we urge everyone to please stay off the roads during this event, and as always, follow the instructions of your local officials and stay tuned to your local media for situational awareness. Thank you for your support of the North Carolina State Emergency Response Team. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mike, we'll now hear from Tim Little, Chief Engineer of our Department of Transportation. Tim. Thank you, Governor. Uh, yesterday, NCDOT started uh, anti-icing operations across uh, many counties across the uh, state. Uh, currently, as of 7 a.m., 403 trucks and 955 employees have put out about 305,000 gallons of salt brine as an anti-icing uh, agent. We have nearly 3,000 employees and 2,400 trucks with plows and spreaders and over 135,000 tons of salt on hand ready to clear snow from roadways following the storm. And also, as just to 
add on to what the governor has said, encourage everyone to stay off the roads during this time and also be cautious driving tomorrow so when you see that yellow dump truck that's pushing snow or that yellow motor grader or some of our contract partners, please give them plenty of room as they perform their operations. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. And now some safety tips from Colonel Glenn McNeil, the commander of the North Carolina Highway Patrol. Thank you, Governor. Good morning. First, I would say please heed all of the safety warnings that are being provided here today. In participation with our state and local partners, the State Highway Patrol stands ready to assist when needed. Troopers have been positioned to mobilize upon a moment's notice in the areas as we expect heavy snowfall accumulation to occur. I encourage everyone to monitor local weather forecasts as driving conditions in our areas are expected to diminish overnight. Motorists are encouraged to avoid traveling if at all possible. Motorists should also clear snow and ice from their vehicles prior to departing their locations to prevent flying debris. Make sure that your cell phones are fully charged in the event they are needed during an emergency. Also, if you are involved in a collision, please remove your vehicle from the roadway if the collision is minor in nature. This will prevent secondary collisions from occurring, which can often have more serious injuries. Right now, it's beautiful outside, so please don't let your guard down because it's going to change come nightfall. Please do not become complacent. Black ice is expected on the roadways in the morning, and it will create treacherous driving conditions. Motorists wishing to obtain updated roadway conditions can visit our drivenc.gov for those updates. Please do not call 911 or Star HP for this purpose. These lines of communication must be left open for emergency situations. Thank you. Okay, we'll take any questions that you may have. This is a statewide event, so we're keeping our resources deployed across the state to make sure that they can respond anywhere because every part of our state is either under a winter weather advisory or a winter weather warning. However, we, we do expect the northeastern part of North Carolina to see the most snow right now. So I think uh, as the day goes on and the weather forecast becomes clearer and clearer, then the State Highway Patrol and the Department of Transportation uh, would be ready to move resources. We also have some uh, guardsmen activated in the event that we need help from the National Guard, and they can be uh, deployed to any area that is in particular need. Other questions? All right, thank you very much, guys. There's a live look outside of Beach Mountain tonight. You can see there's a lot of snow on the ground up there right now. And while we're not seeing that here in the Piedmont just yet that much, we are keeping a close eye on the roads because they could quickly become a problem here. Yeah, so let's check in live now with Hunter Signs live in the Chevy Storm Tracker. Hunter, what's going on? Yeah, well, the snow is certainly falling here, Fred and Sarah. We are making our way around Uptown on I-77, the inner loop, making our way around the crown, and you can see the snow is continuing to fall. At times, we have seen some big flakes, and also on the grass to the right, we have seen some small accumulation. Now, it probably will melt here in a little while, um, or it could, of course, actually, I see some right now. Let me see if I can get our roof camera over to it. 
you can see it against that tree line there but look you can even see some of that white fluffy stuff starting to accumulating that's exciting to see right there on the grass again we are here going around uptown where the snow just continues to fall i will say traffic conditions we have not seen any accidents that doesn't mean they haven't happened but we have not seen any accidents yet we have seen some of the semis though pulled over on the side of the road they are taking it safe rather than sorry of course the good news is I have not seen a single car like we usually do in these bad weather conditions. I have not seen a single car with their windshield wipers not moving and their lights not on. We'll send it back to you. All right, that's good news, I guess. Yeah, it is. Crews, of course, are spread out all across the Carolinas right now from the mountains to the Piedmont, and really everywhere in between. Our Savannah Levins live in Stanley County. Savannah, what's happening out there? Well, let's just get right to it. Let me show you our driving shot here in Albemarle. Look at that sky just blanketed by snow. You're seeing accumulation there on the sidewalks and the grass as well. Not too much accumulation or really any ice on the main roads, which is the good thing. You're seeing a lot of people driving out and about. Luckily, haven't seen any power outages either. Uh, Stanley County Schools did let out early today, and I just got word that they have uh, decided to run on a delay tomorrow, a three hour de delay just because of all the freezing temperatures we're expecting. And like Brad has been saying, all these roads that you're seeing on your uh, screen right now, these wet roads could very well and will most likely turn into ice, some dangerous driving conditions overnight. We'll keep an eye on things, guys. That's the update from Stanley County for now. Reporting live, Savannah Levins, WCNC Charlotte. Savannah, thank you. Our live team weather coverage continues just a little farther south now. Yeah, Union County expects to see some pretty significant snow move in this evening and that's where our Brianna Harper is live tonight. So how's it going out there, Brianna? Well, Sarah, we're finally starting to see some wet and heavy snow here in Monroe here in Union County. We've really been across the area here through the past couple hours and the rain has definitely started. The snow that is has definitely made the roadways wet, but the good news is it is not sticking. which isn't causing any problems for the steady traffic that we continue to see here in Union County. If you guys take a look now, we're right along Highway 74 here in Union County. Again, as I mentioned, the roadways are wet, but there's only just been the rain. That snow has not stuck on the roads just yet. The traffic is flowing just fine. And if you take a look, this is really like a almost like a snow globe effect. The snow is just falling very lightly, very slowly. It's actually very beautiful out here. And so as long as we can have, you know, trouble free snow, that's kind of the best kind of snow that we hope to see here. And as uh, Brad mentioned, more snow is planning to fall later tonight. So we're going to stay out here and keep you guys updated. But for now, that's the very latest coming out of Union County. All so right, Brianna, thank you. Snow has been falling in the Charlotte area for about an hour and a half now. We're not seeing much accumulation yet, but we have been seeing some pretty heavy snow at times. And you can see it's really coming down in Charlotte as we speak. And DOT crews are ready to jump into action and get the roads ready for tomorrow morning's commute because it could be a slick one. Yeah, our live team weather coverage continues tonight in Charlotte. So let's send it out to Alex Shabbat. And Alex, you've been talking with those crews about how they're preparing. So what are they telling you? That's right, Sarah. NCDOT says they'll be sending 20 plow trucks across our area. But right now they're holding off on treating the roads because it's just too wet. And as you can see, there's puddles on the ground and those materials would just wash away. But this also means the big threat is black ice. We'll be prepared for anything that could happen. NCDOT trucks closely monitoring road temperatures as the threat of black ice a main concern in the late night hours. All of our trucks have temperature gauges on them, so we'll be able to monitor the temperatures of the pavement and I'll be able to treat. For most of the day, NCDOT crews had not treated any roads. The maintenance manager saying the temperatures are too warm for accumulation and the rain would wash away the materials. Right now it's been raining, so we didn't want to treat anything. It would just, it'd just run off. So. Um, we'll be treating tonight once the storm stops and try to prevent any kind of freezing freezing tonight. NCDOT says they'll be deploying 20 plow trucks onto the interstates in Mecklenburg, Cabarrus, and Union counties. They're urging drivers to give them space and take a primary route if possible. The interstates will be monitored closely, um, so take a primary route to, uh, to and from your office, but be very careful and uh, anticipate taking a little bit longer to get into work. 
So as you heard, NCDOT will be monitoring the roads closely throughout the night, and if they need to treat them a little earlier than expected, they're ready to do that. Live in Charlotte, Alex Shabbat, WCNC Charlotte. Thank you. Our live team coverage continues in Mecklenburg County. Yeah, our Kendall Morris live in Huntersville. So Kendall students there got out early today. Any word yet on CMS's plans for tomorrow? Yeah, Sarah, we don't have any idea what is going to happen as far as school goes tomorrow. That decision is expected later today. Now, school officials, they're certainly keeping an eye on the weather like this as conditions change across Mecklenburg County. Here in Huntersville, things have changed quickly ever since students got out here at Huntersville Elementary, which is where we are now. They got out at noon, and then this afternoon, this heavy snow has started to fall here. Now, just within the last hour, we've seen it start to accumulate on the ground. This is the first big accumulation that we're seeing in the Huntersville area, but the big concern is a up here on the pavement, all of this snow is falling to the ground, and you can see that it is making everything around it wet. It makes for dangerous conditions if those temperatures dip below freezing overnight because all of this could ice over, making for hazardous conditions for students, teachers, staff that have to come to school in the morning. Now, CMS did dismiss all campuses three hours early today out of an abundance of caution after school activities were also canceled. The snow and the potential for black ice is receiving mixed reactions from both parents and students. I really hope we get a dusting at least. I'd like to see a little snow so she can enjoy it and enjoy her first snow day. Of the black ice in the morning, I have to drive in the morning to go to school, so I don't want to hit no black ice, especially when I have to come pick up my brother. I don't want him to at least slip and fall because it happens to a lot of people. Now, again, no word yet from CMS as to any delays or cancellations for students in Mecklenburg County tomorrow. When we do have that update for you, we will bring that to you both here on air and online at WCNC.com. Reporting live in Huntersville, Kendall Morris, WCNC Charlotte. Kendall, thank you for your reporting. Thanks. We want to start with our chief meteorologist, Brad Panovich. Brad, what is the timing of this snow system? The snow is over us right now, and it's almost about ready to move out. We've got a, several more hours, maybe two or three, depending on location. And then it's the freeze we got to worry about tonight. This is a live look up at the Beach Mountain Parkway. You could see the snow on the ground up there. They were loving it. Another great ski weekend set up for the North Carolina mountains. Those temperatures continue to fall across the area. As we take a look at temperatures right now, we're in the low to mid 30s. So we're barely at or above freezing in a lot of locations. 32 up in Salisbury, 33 in Hickory, 34 in Concord right now. And as we go through the evening hours, the snow and sleet will taper off around 9 to 10 o'clock. Now, most areas are just going to see a dusting to a half an inch, some areas one to two inches east of Charlotte. But as we go towards tomorrow morning, I think that's when we're going to have some issues. You can see the snow continuing to push off to the south and the east, but there's a heavy snow band pretty much right over Charlotte right now, and that band is expected to be over us for another couple of hours. We can already see the back edge moving through the mountains, and in fact, the snow is almost done up there. You see that band pushing east. Look at that by eight o'clock. It starts to push to the east by 10 o'clock. It starts to taper off and the snow moves into the sand hills and by overnight we will clear things out, but the temperature drops and that's when the problems occur. We could see a really hard freeze in some locations with some icy spots by tomorrow morning, guys. All right, Brad, thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. North Carolina is about to feel this year's first blast of winter weather. The state's getting ready and now is the time for you to get ready too. The entire state is under either a winter storm advisory or warning through tomorrow morning. This winter storm will affect most parts of North Carolina. Effects could be minor in many places, but will be more significant in other places. We expect the heaviest snows after sunset. Northeastern North Carolina might get the greatest impact, where three to six inches of snow are possible in the forecast. For the Piedmont Triad and the Triangle area, one to three inches, one to two inches in the Charlotte area, and one to three inches in the western mountains of North Carolina. We can expect whiteout conditions on the coast due to heavy snows and gusty winds. Now, don't let the temperature right now fool you. It's still winter in North Carolina, and it's going to get colder tonight. Snowy roads can still be deadly if you're not careful. Although this is a fluid number, statewide right now we have 29 school districts closed and 55 of them on early release. 
please pay close attention to your local forecast and be alert to changing weather conditions over the next 24 hours. Our Department of Transportation crews have been preparing since earlier this week. The State Highway Patrol troopers are ready. They're out on the roads to assist motorists and keep the traffic moving. And you can help them by staying off the road when conditions deteriorate. Our State Emergency Operations Center will activate here at 1 o'clock this afternoon to be ready to respond to any needs from local governments that they might have. Significant icing is not expected. And that's good news because that means that the roads will be easier to treat and clear. And there shouldn't be any major issues with power outages, although gusty winds tonight and tomorrow could cause some outages. And if your power does go out, remember to never use a generator or grill in your home or garage because the consequences could be deadly. Everyone is encouraged to make a plan for your family, including your pets. There are some things that you can do to make sure your family is ready for, unexpected, uh, for the unexpected with this winter weather storm. Keep food and batteries on hand and keep an emergency kit in your car. And for more information on how to prepare for winter storms, I would suggest you go to readync.org or for the latest road conditions, you can go to drivenc.gov. Uh, we have experts here who are ready to answer any questions that you might have. I have our Secretary of the Department of Public Safety, Eric Hooks, on stage. Our Emergency Management Director, Mike Sprayberry. Uh, Commander Glenn McNeil, the Colonel of the North Carolina Highway Patrol, is here. Our Chief Engineer from the Department of Transportation, Tim Little, is here. Major General Todd Hunt of the North Carolina National Guard is here. He has just taken his new position in command of the National Guard. Katie Webster is our meteorologist from Emergency Management, and she is here to answer questions. And Lee Williamson is our language interpreter. I first want to hear a few words from Director Sprayberry. Mike. Thank you, Governor, and good morning, everyone. As a winter storm begins to move into the state of North Carolina, we're decisively engaged with our state emergency response team partners to prepare for any required response operations. As the Governor said, the State Emergency Operations Center will be activated today at 1 p.m. We'll have agencies like the Department of Transportation, the National Guard, DMV License and Theft, the Highway Patrol, and others who can assist us with keeping our roads safe and clear. Our utility partners are poised to surge into impacted areas for power restoration operations if needed. We've been in contact with our county partners to ensure that we have good situational awareness of their needs and that we're well prepared to provide the full spectrum of disaster response capability in all impact areas. Again, we urge everyone to please stay off the roads during this event, and as always, follow the instructions of your local officials and stay tuned to your local media for situational awareness. Thank you for your support of the North Carolina State Emergency Response Team. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mike. We'll now hear from Tim Little, Chief Engineer of our Department of Transportation. Tim. Thank you, Governor. Uh, yesterday, NCDOT started uh, anti-icing operations across uh, many counties across the uh, state. Uh, currently, as of 7 a.m., 403 trucks and 955 employees have put out about 305,000 gallons of salt brine as an anti-icing uh, agent. We have nearly 3,000 employees and 2,400 trucks with plows and spreaders and over 135,000 tons of salt on hand ready to clear snow from roadways following the storm. And also, as just to add on to what the governor has said, encourage everyone to stay off the roads during this time and also be cautious driving tomorrow so when you see that yellow dump truck that's pushing snow or that yellow motor grader or some of our contract partners, please give them plenty of room as they perform their operations. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. And now some safety tips from Colonel Glenn McNeil, the commander of the North Carolina Highway Patrol. Thank you, Governor. Good morning. 
First, I would say please heed all of the safety warnings that are being provided here today. In participation with our state and local partners, the State Highway Patrol stands ready to assist when needed. Troopers have been positioned to mobilize upon a moment's notice in the areas as we expect heavy snowfall accumulation to occur. I encourage everyone to monitor local weather forecast that driving conditions in our areas are expected to diminish overnight. Motorists are encouraged to avoid traveling if at all possible. Motorists should also clear snow and ice from their vehicles prior to departing their locations to prevent flying debris. Make sure that your cell phones are fully charged in the event they are needed during an emergency. Also, if you are involved in a collision, please remove your vehicle from the roadway if the collision is minor in nature. This will prevent secondary collisions from occurring, which can often have more serious injuries. Right now, it's beautiful outside, so please don't let your guard down because it's going to change come nightfall. Please do not become complacent. Black ice is expected on the roadways in the morning, and it will create treacherous driving conditions. Motorists wishing to obtain updated roadway conditions can visit our drivenc.gov for those updates. Please do not call 911 or Star HP for this purpose. These lines of communication must be left open for emergency situations. Thank you. Okay, we'll take any questions that you may have. This is a statewide event, so we're keeping our resources deployed across the state to make sure that they can respond anywhere because every part of our state is either under a winter weather advisory or a winter weather warning. However, we, we do expect the northeastern part of North Carolina to see the most snow right now. So I think uh, as the day goes on and the weather forecast becomes clearer and clearer, then the State Highway Patrol and the Department of Transportation uh, would be ready to move resources. We also have some uh, guardsmen activated in the event that we need help from the National Guard, and they can be uh, deployed to any area that is in particular need. Other questions? All right, thank you very much, guys. There's a live look outside of Beach Mountain tonight. You can see there's a lot of snow on the ground up there right now. And while we're not seeing that here in the Piedmont just yet that much, we are keeping a close eye on the roads because they could quickly become a problem here. Yeah, so let's check in live now with Hunter Signs live in the Chevy Storm Tracker. Hunter, what's going on? Yeah, well, the snow is certainly falling here, Fred and Sarah. We are making our way around Uptown on I-77, the inner loop, making our way around the crown, and you can see the snow is continuing to fall. At times, we have seen some big flakes, and also on the grass to the right, we have seen some small accumulation. Now, it probably will melt here in a little while, um, or it could, of course, actually, I see some right now. Let me see if I can get our roof camera over to it. You can see it against that tree line there, but look, you can even see some of that white fluffy stuff starting to accumulating. That's exciting to see right there on the grass. Again, we are here going around uptown where the snow just continues to fall. I will say traffic conditions, we have not seen any accidents. That doesn't mean they haven't happened, but we have not seen any accidents yet. We have seen some of the semis though pulled over on the side of the road. They are taking it safe rather than sorry, of course. The good news is I have not seen a single car like we usually do in these bad weather conditions. I have not seen a single car with their windshield wipers not moving and their lights not on. We'll send it back to you. All right, that's good news, I guess. Yeah, it is. Crews, of course, are spread out all across the Carolinas right now from the mountains to the Piedmont, and really everywhere in between. Our Savannah Levin's live in Stanley County. Savannah, what's happening out there? 
Well, let's just get right to it. Let me show you our driving shot here in Albemarle. Look at that sky just blanketed by snow. You're seeing accumulation there on the sidewalks and the grass as well. Not too much accumulation or really any ice on the main roads, which is the good thing. You're seeing a lot of people driving out and about. Luckily, haven't seen any power outages either. Uh, Stanley County Schools did let out early today, and I just got word that they have uh, decided to run on a delay tomorrow, a three-hour de delay just because of all the freezing temperatures we're expecting. And like Brad has been saying, all these roads that you're seeing on your uh, screen right now, these wet roads could very well and will most likely turn into ice, some dangerous driving conditions overnight. We'll keep an eye on things, guys. That's the update from Stanley County for now. Reporting live, Savannah Levins, WCNC Charlotte. Savannah, thank you. Our live team weather coverage continues just a little farther south now. Yeah, Union County expects to see some pretty significant snow move in this evening and that's where our Brianna Harper is live tonight. So how's it going out there, Brianna? Well, Sarah, we're finally starting to see some wet and heavy snow here in Monroe here in Union County. We've really been across the area here through the past couple hours and the rain has definitely started. Or the snow that is has definitely made the roadways wet, but the good news is it is not sticking. which isn't causing any problems for the steady traffic that we continue to see here in Union County. If you guys take a look now, we're right along Highway 74 here in Union County. Again, as I mentioned, the roadways are wet, but there's only just been the rain. That snow has not stuck on the roads just yet. The traffic is flowing just fine. And if you take a look, this is really like a almost like a snow globe effect. The snow is just falling very lightly, very slowly. It's actually very beautiful out here. And so as long as we can have you know, trouble free snow, that's kind of the best kind of snow that we hope to see here. And as uh, Brad mentioned, more snow is planning to fall later tonight. So we're going to stay out here and keep you guys updated. But for now, that's the very latest coming out of Union County. All right, Sometimes Brianna, thank you. Snow has been falling in the Charlotte area for about an hour and a half now. We're not seeing much accumulation yet, but we have been seeing some pretty heavy snow at times. And you can see it's really coming down in Charlotte as we speak. And DOT crews are ready to jump into action and get the roads ready for tomorrow morning's commute because it could be a slick one. Yeah, our live team weather coverage continues tonight in Charlotte. So let's send it out to Alex Shabbat. And Alex, you've been talking with those crews about how they're preparing. So what are they telling you? That's right, Sarah. NCDOT says they'll be sending 20 plow trucks across our area. But right now they're holding off on treating the roads because it's just too wet. And as you can see, there's puddles on the ground and those materials would just wash away. But this also means the big threat is black ice. We'll be prepared for anything that could happen. NCDOT trucks closely monitoring road temperatures as the threat of black ice a main concern in the late night hours. All of our trucks have temperature gauges on them, so we'll be able to monitor the temperatures of the pavement and I'll be able to treat. For most of the day, NCDOT crews had not treated any roads. The maintenance manager saying the temperatures are too warm for accumulation and the rain would wash away the materials. Right now it's been raining, so we didn't want to treat anything. It would just, it'd just run off. So. Um, we'll be treating tonight once the storm stops and try to prevent any kind of freezing, freezing tonight. NCDOT says they'll be deploying 20 plow trucks onto the interstates in Mecklenburg, Cabarrus, and Union counties. They're urging drivers to give them space and take a primary route if possible. The interstates will be monitored closely, um, so take a primary route to, uh, to and from your office, but be very careful and uh, anticipate taking a little bit longer to get into work. So as you heard, NCDOT will be monitoring the roads closely throughout the night, and if they need to treat them a little earlier than expected, they're ready to do that. Live in Charlotte, Alex Shabad, WCNC Charlotte. Thank you. Our live team coverage continues in Mecklenburg County. Yeah, our Kendall Morris live in Huntersville. So Kendall students there got out early today. Any word yet on CMS's plans for tomorrow? Yeah, Sarah, we don't have any idea what is going to happen as far as school goes tomorrow. That decision is expected later today. Now, school officials, they're certainly keeping an eye on the weather like this as conditions change across Mecklenburg County. Here in Huntersville, things have changed quickly ever since students got out here at Huntersville Elementary, which is where we are now. They got out at noon, and then this afternoon, this heavy snow has started to fall here. Now, just within the last hour, we've seen it start to accumulate on the ground. This is the first of the accumulation that we're seeing in the Huntersville area. But the big concern is a 
up here on the pavement. All of this snow is falling to the ground, and you can see that it is making everything around it wet. It makes for dangerous conditions if those temperatures dip below freezing overnight because all of this could ice over, making for hazardous conditions for students, teachers, staff that have to come to school in the morning. Now, CMS did dismiss all campuses three hours early today out of an abundance of caution after school activities were also canceled. The snow and the potential for black ice is receiving mixed reactions from both parents and students. I really hope we get a dusting at least. I'd like to see a little snow so she can enjoy it and enjoy her first snow day. The black ice in the morning, I have to drive in the morning to go to school, so I don't want to hit no black ice, especially when I have to come pick up my brother. I don't want him to at least slip and fall because it happens to a lot of people. Now, again, no word yet from CMS as to any delays or cancellations for students in Mecklenburg County tomorrow. When we do have that update for you, we will bring that to you both here on air and online at WCNC.com. Reporting live in Huntersville, Kendall Morris, WCNC Charlotte. Kendall, thank you for your reporting. Thanks. We want to start with our chief meteorologist, Brad Panovich. Brad, what is the timing of this snow system? The snow is over us right now, and it's almost about ready to move out. We've got a, several more hours, maybe two or three, depending on location. And then it's the freeze we got to worry about tonight. This is a live look up at the Beach Mountain Parkway. You can see the snow on the ground up there. They were loving it. Another great ski weekend set up for the North Carolina mountains. Those temperatures continue to fall across the area. As we take a look at temperatures right now, we're in the low to mid 30s. So we're barely at or above freezing in a lot of locations. 32 up in Salisbury, 33 in Hickory, 34 in Concord right now. And as we go through the evening hours, the snow and sleet will taper off around 9 to 10 o'clock. Now, most areas are just going to see a dusting to a half an inch, some areas one to two inches east of Charlotte. But as we go towards tomorrow morning, I think that's when we're going to have some issues. You can see the snow continuing to push off to the south and the east, but there's a heavy snow band pretty much right over Charlotte right now, and that band is expected to be over us for another couple of hours. We can already see the back edge moving through the mountains, and in fact, the snow is almost done up there. You see that band pushing east. Look at that by 8 o'clock. It starts to push to the east by 10 o'clock. It starts to taper off and the snow moves into the sand hills and by overnight we will clear things out, but the temperature drops and that's when the problems occur. We could see a really hard freeze in some locations with some icy spots by tomorrow morning, guys. All right, Brad, thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. North Carolina is about to feel this year's first blast of winter weather. The state's getting ready and now is the time for you to get ready too. The entire state is under either a winter storm advisory or warning through tomorrow morning. This winter storm will affect most parts of North Carolina. Effects could be minor in many places, but will be more significant in other places. We expect the heaviest snows after sunset. Northeastern North Carolina might get the greatest impact, where three to six inches of snow are possible in the forecast. For the Piedmont Triad and the Triangle area, one to three inches, one to two inches in the Charlotte area, and one to three inches in the western mountains of North Carolina. We can expect whiteout conditions on the coast due to heavy snows and gusty winds. Now, don't let the temperature right now fool you. It's still winter in North Carolina, and it's going to get colder tonight. Snowy roads can still be deadly if you're not careful. Although this is a fluid number, statewide right now we have 29 school districts closed and 55 of them on early release. Please pay close attention to your local forecast and be alert to changing weather conditions over the next 24 hours. Our Department of Transportation crews have been preparing since earlier this week. The state highway patrol troopers are ready. They're out on the roads to assist motorists and keep the traffic moving. And you can help them by staying off the road when conditions deteriorate. Our State Emergency Operations Center will activate here at 1 o'clock this afternoon to be ready to respond to any needs from local governments that they might have. Significant icing is not expected. And that's good news because that means that the roads will be easier to treat and clear. And there shouldn't be any major issues with power outages 
although gusty winds tonight and tomorrow could cause some outages. And if your power does go out, remember to never use a generator or grill in your home or garage because the consequences could be deadly. Everyone is encouraged to make a plan for your family, including your pets. There are some things that you can do to make sure your family is ready for, unexpected, uh, for the unexpected with this winter weather storm. Keep food and batteries on hand and keep an emergency kit in your car. And for more information on how to prepare for winter storms, I would suggest you go to readync.org or for the latest road conditions, you can go to drivenc.gov. Uh, we have experts here who are ready to answer any questions that you might have. I have our Secretary of the Department of Public Safety, Eric Hooks, on stage, our Emergency Management Director, Mike Sprayberry, uh, Commander Glenn McNeil, the Colonel of the North Carolina Highway Patrol, is here, our Chief Engineer from the Department of Transportation, Tim Little, is here. Major General Todd Hunt of the North Carolina National Guard is here. He has just taken his new position in command of the National Guard. Katie Webster is our meteorolo meteorologist from emergency management, and she is here to answer questions. And Lee Williamson is our language interpreter. I first want to hear a few words from Director Sprayberry. Mike. Thank you, Governor, and good morning, everyone. As a winter storm begins to move into the state of North Carolina, we're decisively engaged with our state emergency response team partners to prepare for any required response operations. As the Governor said, the State Emergency Operations Center will be activated today at 1 p.m. We'll have agencies like the Department of Transportation, the National Guard, DMV license and theft, the Highway Patrol, and others who can assist us with keeping our roads safe and clear. Our utility partners are poised to surge into impacted areas for power restoration operations if needed. We've been in contact with our county partners to ensure that we have good situational awareness of their needs and that we're well prepared to provide the full spectrum of disaster response capability in all impact areas. Again, we urge everyone to please stay off the roads during this event, and as always, follow the instructions of your local officials and stay tuned to your local media for situational awareness. Thank you for your support of the North Carolina State Emergency Response Team. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mike, we'll now hear from Tim Little, Chief Engineer of our Department of Transportation. Tim. Thank you, Governor. Uh, yesterday, NCDOT started uh, anti-ice operations across uh, many counties across the uh, state. Uh, currently, as of 7 a.m., 403 trucks and 955 employees have put out about 305,000 gallons of salt brine as an anti-icing uh, agent. We have nearly 3,000 employees and 2,400 trucks with plows and spreaders and over 135,000 tons of salt on hand ready to clear snow from roadways following the storm. And also, as just to add on to what the governor has said, encourage everyone to stay off the roads during this time and also be cautious driving tomorrow so when you see that yellow dump truck that's pushing snow or that yellow motor grader or some of our contract partners, please give them plenty of room as they perform their operations. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. And now some safety tips from Colonel Glenn McNeil, the commander of the North Carolina Highway Patrol. Thank you, Governor. Good morning. First, I would say please heed all of the safety warnings that are being provided here today. In participation with our state and local partners, the State Highway Patrol stands ready to assist when needed. Troopers have been positioned to mobilize upon a moment's notice in the areas as we expect heavy snowfall accumulation to occur. I encourage everyone to monitor local weather forecast that driving conditions in our areas are expected to diminish overnight. Motorists are encouraged to avoid traveling if at all possible. Motorists should also clear snow and ice from their vehicles prior to departing their locations to prevent flying debris. Make sure that your cell phones are fully charged in the event they are needed during an emergency. Also, if you are involved in a collision, please remove your vehicle from the roadway 
if the collision is minor in nature. This will prevent secondary collisions from occurring, which can often have more serious injuries. Right now, it's beautiful outside, so please don't let your guard down because it's going to change come nightfall. Please do not become complacent. Black ice is expected on the roadways in the morning, and it will create treacherous driving conditions. Motorists wishing to obtain updated roadway conditions can visit our drivenc.gov for those updates. Please do not call 911 or Star HP for this purpose. These lines of communication must be left open for emergency situations. Thank you. Okay, we'll take any questions that you may have. This is a statewide event, so we're keeping our resources deployed across the state to make sure that they can respond anywhere because every part of our state is either under winter weather advisory or a winter weather warning. However, we, we do expect the northeastern part of North Carolina to see the most snow right now. So I think uh, as the day goes on and the weather forecast becomes clearer and clearer, then the State Highway Patrol and the Department of Transportation uh, would be ready to move resources. We also have some uh, guardsmen activated in the event that we need help from the National Guard, and they can be uh, deployed to any area that is in particular need. Other questions? All right, thank you very much, guys. a live look outside of Beach Mountain tonight. You can see there's a lot of snow on the ground up there right now. And while we're not seeing that here in the Piedmont just yet that much, we are keeping a close eye on the roads because they could quickly become a problem here. Yeah, so let's check in live now with Hunter Signs live in the Chevy Storm Tracker. Hunter, what's going on? Yeah, well, the snow is certainly falling here, Fred and Sarah. We are making our way around Uptown on I-77, the inner loop, making our way around the crown, and you can see the snow is continuing to fall. At times, we have seen some big flakes, and also on the grass to the right, we have seen some small accumulation. Now, it probably will melt here in a little while, um, or it could, of course, actually, I see some right now. Let me see if I can get our roof camera over to it. You can see it against that tree line there, but look, you can even see some of that white fluffy stuff starting to accumulating. That's exciting to see right there on the grass. Again, we are here going around uptown where the snow just continues to fall. I will say traffic conditions, we have not seen any accidents. That doesn't mean they haven't happened, but we have not seen any accidents yet. We have seen some of the semis though, pulled over on the side of the road. They are taking it safe rather than sorry, of course. The good news is, I have not seen a single car like we usually do in these bad weather conditions. I have not seen a single car with their windshield wipers not moving and their lights not on. We'll send it back to you. All right, that's good news, I guess. Yeah, it is. Crews, of course, are spread out all across the Carolinas right now from the mountains to the Piedmont, and really everywhere in between. Our Savannah Levens live in Stanley County. Savannah, what's happening out there? Well, let's just get right to it. Let me show you our driving shot here in Albemarle. Look at that sky just blanketed by snow. You're seeing accumulation there on the sidewalks and the grass as well. Not too much accumulation or really any ice on the main roads, which is the good thing. You're seeing a lot of people driving out and about. Luckily, haven't seen any power outages either. Uh, Stanley County Schools did let out early today, and I just got word that they have 
uh, decided to run on a delay tomorrow, a three hour de delay just because of all the freezing temperatures we're expecting. And like Brad has been saying, all these roads that you're seeing on your uh, screen right now, these wet roads could very well and will most likely turn into ice, some dangerous driving conditions overnight. We'll keep an eye on things, guys. That's the update from Stanley County for now. Reporting live, Savannah Levins, WCNC Charlotte. Savannah, thank you. Our live team weather coverage continues just a little farther south now. Yeah, Union County expected to see some pretty significant snow move in this evening, and that's where our Brianna Harper is live tonight. So how's it going out there, Brianna? Well, Sarah, we're finally starting to see some wet and heavy snow here in Monroe here in Union County. We've really been across the area here through the past couple hours, and the rain has definitely started. The snow, that is, has definitely made the roadways wet. But the good news is it is not sticking. What isn't causing any problems for the steady traffic that we continue to see here in Union County. If you guys take a look now, we're right along Highway 74 here in Union County. Again, as I mentioned, the roadways are wet, but it's only just been the rain. That snow has not stuck on the roads just yet. The traffic is flowing just fine. And if you take a look, this is really like a almost like a snow globe effect. The snow is just falling very lightly, very slowly. It's actually very beautiful out here. And so as long as we can have you know trouble free snow, that's kind of the best kind of snow that we hope to see here. And as uh, Brad mentioned, more snow is planning to fall later tonight. So we're going to stay out here and keep you guys updated. But for now, that's the very latest coming out of Union County. All so right, Brianna, you thank you. Snow has been falling in the Charlotte area for about an hour and a half now. We're not seeing much accumulation yet, but we have been seeing some pretty heavy snow at times. And you can see it's really coming down in Charlotte as we speak. And DOT crews are ready to jump into action and get the roads ready for tomorrow morning's commute because it could be a slick one. Yeah, our live team weather coverage continues tonight in Charlotte. So let's send it out to Alex Shabbat. And Alex, you've been talking with those crews about how they're preparing. So what are they telling you? That's right, Sarah. NCDOT says they'll be sending 20 plow trucks across our area. But right now they're holding off on treating the roads because it's just too wet. And as you can see, there's puddles on the ground and those materials would just wash away. But this also means the big threat is black ice. We'll be prepared for anything that could happen. NCDOT trucks closely monitoring road temperatures as the threat of black ice a main concern in the late night hours. All of our trucks have temperature gauges on them, so we'll be able to monitor the temperatures of the pavement and I'll be able to treat. For most of the day, NCDOT crews had not treated any roads. The maintenance manager saying the temperatures are too warm for accumulation and the rain would wash away the materials. Right now it's been raining, so we didn't want to treat anything. It would just, it just run off. So. Um, we'll be treating tonight once the storm stops and try to prevent any kind of freezing, freezing tonight. NCDOT says they'll be deploying 20 plow trucks onto the interstates in Mecklenburg, Cabarrus, and Union counties. They're urging drivers to give them space and take a primary route if possible. The interstates will be monitored closely, um, so take a primary route to, uh, to and from your office, but be very careful and uh, anticipate taking a little bit longer to get into work. So as you heard, NCDOT will be monitoring the roads closely throughout the night, and if they need to treat them a little earlier than expected, they're ready to do that. Live in Charlotte, Alex Shabad, WCNC Charlotte. Thank you. Our live team coverage continues in Mecklenburg County. Yeah, our Kendall Morris live in Huntersville. So Kendall students there got out early today. Any word yet on CMS's plans for tomorrow? Yeah, Sarah, we don't have any idea what is going to happen as far as school goes tomorrow. That decision is expected later today. Now, school officials, they're certainly keeping an eye on the weather like this as conditions change across Mecklenburg County. Here in Huntersville, things have changed quickly ever since students got out here at Huntersville Elementary, which is where we are now. They got out at noon, and then this afternoon, this heavy snow has started to fall here. Now, just within the last hour, we've seen it start to accumulate on the ground. This is the first of the accumulation that we're seeing in the Huntersville area. But the big concern is up up here on the pavement, all of the snow is falling to the ground, and you can see that it is making everything around it wet. It makes for dangerous conditions if those temperatures dip below freezing overnight because all of this could ice over, making for hazardous conditions for students, teachers, staff that have to come to school in the morning. Now, CMS did dismiss all campuses three hours early today out of an abundance of caution after school activities were also canceled. The snow and the potential for black ice is receiving mixed reactions from both parents and students.
I really hope we get a dusting at least. I'd like to see a little snow so she can enjoy it and enjoy her first snow day. The black ice in the morning, I have to drive in the morning to go to school, so I don't want to hit no black ice, especially when I have to come pick up my brother. I don't want him to at least slip and fall because it happens to a lot of people. Now, again, no word yet from CMS as to any delays or cancellations for students in Mecklenburg County tomorrow. When we do have that update for you, we will bring that to you both here on air and online at WCNC.com. Reporting live in Huntersville, Kendall Morris, WCNC Charlotte. Kendall, thank you for your reporting. Thanks. We want to start with our chief meteorologist, Brad Panovich. Brad, what is the timing of this snow system? The snow is over us right now, and it's almost about ready to move out. We've got a, several more hours, maybe two or three, depending on location. And then it's the freeze we got to worry about today. Tonight. This is a live look up at the Beach Mountain Parkway. You could see the snow on the ground up there. They were loving it. Another great ski weekend set up for the North Carolina mountains. Those temperatures continue to fall across the area. As we take a look at temperatures right now, we're in the low to mid 30s. So we're barely at or above freezing in a lot of locations. 32 up in Salisbury, 33 in Hickory, 34 in Concord right now. And as we go through the evening hours, the snow and sleet will taper off around 9 to 10 o'clock. Now, most areas are just going to see a dusting to a half an inch, some areas one to two inches east of Charlotte. But as we go towards tomorrow morning, I think that's when we're going to have some issues. You can see the snow continuing to push off to the south and the east, but there's a heavy snow band pretty much right over Charlotte right now, and that band is expected to be over us for another couple of hours. We can already see the back edge moving through the mountains, and in fact, the snow is almost done up there. You see that band pushing east. Look at that by 8 o'clock. It starts to push to the east by 10 o'clock. It starts to taper off and the snow moves into the sand hills and by overnight we'll clear things out, but the temperature drops and that's when the problems occur. We could see a really hard freeze in some locations with some icy spots by tomorrow morning, guys. All right, Brad, thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. North Carolina is about to feel this year's first blast of winter weather. The state's getting ready and now is the time for you to get ready too. The entire state is under either a winter storm advisory or warning through tomorrow morning. This winter storm will affect most parts of North Carolina. Effects could be minor in many places, but will be more significant in other places. We expect the heaviest snows after sunset. Northeastern North Carolina might get the greatest impact, where three to six inches of snow are possible in the forecast. For the Piedmont Triad and the Triangle area, one to three inches, one to two inches in the Charlotte area, and one to three inches in the western mountains of North Carolina. We can expect whiteout conditions on the coast due to heavy snows and gusty winds. Now, don't let the temperature right now fool you. It's still winter in North Carolina, and it's going to get colder tonight. Snowy roads can still be deadly if you're not careful. Although this is a fluid number, statewide right now we have 29 school districts closed and 55 of them on early release. Please pay close attention to your local forecast and be alert to changing weather conditions over the next 24 hours. Our Department of Transportation crews have been preparing since earlier this week. The state highway patrol troopers are ready. They're out on the roads to assist motorists and keep the traffic moving. And you can help them by staying off the road when conditions deteriorate. Our State Emergency Operations Center will activate here at 1 o'clock this afternoon to be ready to respond to any needs from local governments that they might have. Significant icing is not expected. And that's good news because that means that the roads will be easier to treat and clear. And there shouldn't be any major issues with power outages, although gusty winds tonight and tomorrow could cause some outages. And if your power does go out, remember to never use a generator or grill in your home or garage because the consequences could be deadly. Everyone is encouraged to make a plan for your family, including your pets. There's some things that you can do to make sure your family is ready for unexpected, uh, for the unexpected with this winter weather storm. Keep food and batteries on hand and keep an emergency kit in your car. 
And for more information on how to prepare for winter storms, I would suggest you go to readync.org or for the latest road conditions, you can go to drivenc.gov. Uh, we have experts here who are ready to answer any questions that you might have. I have our Secretary of the Department of Public Safety, Eric Hooks, on stage, our Emergency Management Director, Mike Sprayberry, uh, Commander Glenn McNeil, the Colonel of the North Carolina Highway Patrol, is here, our Chief Engineer from the Department of Transportation, Tim Little, is here, Major General Todd Hunt of the North Carolina National Guard is here. He has just taken his new position in command of the National Guard. Katie Webster is our meteorologist from Emergency Management, and she is here to answer questions. And Lee Williamson is our language interpreter. I first want to hear a few words from Director Sprayberry. Mike. Thank you, Governor, and good morning, everyone. As a winter storm begins to move into the state of North Carolina, we're decisively engaged with our state emergency response team partners to prepare for any required response operations. As the Governor said, the State Emergency Operations Center will be activated today at 1 p.m. We'll have agencies like the Department of Transportation, the National Guard, DMV license and theft, the Highway Patrol, and others who can assist us with keeping our roads safe and clear. Our utility partners are poised to surge into impacted areas for power restoration operations if needed. We've been in contact with our county partners to ensure that we have good situational awareness of their needs and that we're well prepared to provide the full spectrum of disaster response capability in all impact areas. Again, we urge everyone to please stay off the roads during this event, and as always, follow the instructions of your local officials and stay tuned to your local media for situational awareness. Thank you for your support of the North Carolina State Emergency Response Team. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mike. We'll now hear from Tim Little, Chief Engineer of our Department of Transportation. Tim. Thank you, Governor. Uh, yesterday, NCDOT started uh, anti-ice operations across uh, many counties across the uh, state. Uh, currently, as of 7 a.m., 403 trucks and 955 employees have put out about 305,000 gallons of salt brine as an anti-icing uh, agent. We have nearly 3,000 employees and 2,400 trucks with plows and spreaders and over 135,000 tons of salt on hand ready to clear snow from roadways following the storm. And also, as just to add on to what the governor has said, encourage everyone to stay off the roads during this time and also be cautious driving tomorrow so when you see that yellow dump truck that's pushing snow or that yellow motor grader or some of our contract partners, please give them plenty of room as they perform their operations. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. And now some safety tips from Colonel Glenn McNeil, the commander of the North Carolina Highway Patrol. Thank you, Governor. Good morning. First, I would say please heed all of the safety warnings that are being provided here today. In participation with our state and local partners, the State Highway Patrol stands ready to assist when needed. Troopers have been positioned to mobilize upon a moment's notice in the areas as we expect heavy snowfall accumulation to occur. I encourage everyone to monitor local weather forecast that driving conditions in our areas are expected to diminish overnight. Motorists are encouraged to avoid traveling if at all possible. Motorists should also clear snow and ice from their vehicles prior to departing their locations to prevent flying debris. Make sure that your cell phones are fully charged in the event they are needed during an emergency. Also, if you are involved in a collision, please remove your vehicle from the roadway if the collision is minor in nature. This will prevent secondary collisions from occurring, which can often have more serious injuries. Right now, it's beautiful outside, so please don't let your guard down because it's going to change come nightfall. Please do not become complacent. Black ice is expected on the roadways in the morning, and it will create treacherous driving conditions. 
Motorists wishing to obtain updated roadway conditions can visit our drivenc.gov for those updates. Please do not call 911 or Star HP for this purpose. These lines of communication must be left open for emergency situations. Thank you. Okay, we'll take any questions that you may have. This is a statewide event, so we're keeping our resources deployed across the state to make sure that they can respond anywhere because every part of our state is either under a winter weather advisory or a winter weather warning. However, we, we do expect the northeastern part of North Carolina to see the most snow right now. So I think uh, as the day goes on and the weather forecast becomes clearer and clearer, then the State Highway Patrol and the Department of Transportation uh, would be ready to move resources. We also have some uh, guardsmen activated in the event that we need help from the National Guard, and they can be uh, deployed to any area that is in particular need. Other questions? All right, thank you very much, guys. a live look outside of Beach Mountain tonight. You can see there's a lot of snow on the ground up there right now. And while we're not seeing that here in the Piedmont just yet that much, we are keeping a close eye on the roads because they could quickly become a problem here. Yeah, so let's check in live now with Hunter Signs live in the Chevy Storm Tracker. Hunter, what's going on? Yeah, well, the snow is certainly falling here, Fred and Sarah. We are making our way around Uptown on I-77, the inner loop, making our way around the crown, and you can see the snow is continuing to fall. At times, we have seen some big flakes, and also on the grass to the right, we have seen some small accumulation. Now, it probably will melt here in a little while, um, or it could, of course, actually, I see some right now. Let me see if I can get our roof camera over to it. You can see it against that tree line there, but look, you can even see some of that white fluffy stuff starting to accumulating. That's exciting to see right there on the grass. Again, we are here going around uptown where the snow just continues to fall. I will say traffic conditions, we have not seen any accidents. That doesn't mean they haven't happened, but we have not seen any accidents yet. We have seen some of the semis though pulled over on the side of the road. They are taking it safe rather than sorry, of course. The good news is I have not seen a single car like we usually do in these bad weather conditions. I have not seen a single car with their windshield wipers not moving and their lights not on. We'll send it back to you. All right, that's good news, I guess. Yeah, it is. Crews, of course, are spread out all across the Carolinas right now from the mountains to the Piedmont, and really everywhere in between. Our Savannah Levens live in Stanley County. Savannah, what's happening out there? Well, let's just get right to it. Let me show you our driving shot here in Albemarle. Look at that sky just blanketed by snow. You're seeing accumulation there on the sidewalks and the grass as well. Not too much accumulation or really any ice on the main roads, which is the good thing. You're seeing a lot of people driving out and about. Luckily, haven't seen any power outages either. Uh, Stanley County Schools did let out early today, and I just got word that they have uh, decided to run on a delay tomorrow, a three-hour de delay just because of all the freezing temperatures we're expecting. And like Brad has been saying, all these roads that you're seeing on your uh, screen right now, these wet roads could very well and will most likely turn into ice, some dangerous driving conditions overnight. We'll keep an eye on things, guys. That's the update from Stanley County for now. Reporting live, Savannah Levins, WCNC Charlotte. Savannah, thank you. Our live team weather coverage continues just a little farther south now. Yeah, Union County expects to see some pretty significant snow move in this evening and that's where our Brianna Harper is live tonight. So how's it going out there, Brianna? 
Well, Sarah, we're finally starting to see some wet and heavy snow here in Monroe, here in Union County. We've really been across the area here through the past couple hours, and the rain has definitely started. The snow, that is, has definitely made the roadways wet. But the good news is it is not sticking, which isn't causing any problems for the steady traffic that we continue to see here in Union County. If you guys take a look now, we're right along Highway 74 here in Union County. Again, as I mentioned, the roadways are wet, but it's only just been the rain. That snow has not stuck on the roads just yet. The traffic is flowing just fine. And if you take a look, this is really like a almost like a snow globe effect. The snow is just falling very lightly, very slowly. It's actually very beautiful out here. And so as long as we can have you know trouble-free snow, that's kind of the best kind of snow that we hope to see here. And as uh, Brad mentioned, more snow is planning to fall later tonight. So we're gonna stay out here and keep you guys updated. But for now, that's the very latest coming out of Union County. All so right, Brianna, you thank you. Snow has been falling in the Charlotte area for about an hour and a half now. We're not seeing much accumulation yet, but we have been seeing some pretty heavy snow at times. And you can see it's really coming down in Charlotte as we speak and DOT crews are ready to jump into action and get the roads ready for tomorrow morning's commute because it could be a slick one. Yeah, our live team weather coverage continues tonight in Charlotte. So let's send it out to Alex Shabbat and Alex, you've been talking with those crews about how they're preparing. So what are they telling you? That's right, Sarah. NCDOT says they'll be sending 20 plow trucks across our area, but right now they're holding off on treating the roads because it's just too wet. And as you can see, there's puddles on the ground and those materials would just wash away. But this also means the big threat is black ice. We'll be prepared for anything that could happen. NCDOT trucks closely monitoring road temperatures as the threat of black ice a main concern in the late night hours. All of our trucks have temperature gauges on them, so we'll be able to monitor the temperatures of the pavement and I'll be able to treat. For most of the day, NCDOT crews had not treated any roads. The maintenance manager saying the temperatures are too warm for accumulation and the rain would wash away the materials. Right now it's been raining, so we didn't want to treat anything. It would just it just run off. So. Um, we'll be treating tonight once the storm stops and try to prevent any kind of freezing freezing tonight. NCDOT says they'll be deploying 20 plow trucks onto the interstates in Mecklenburg, Cabarrus, and Union counties. They're urging drivers to give them space and take a primary route if possible. The interstates will be monitored closely, um, so take a primary route to, uh, to and from your office, but be very careful and uh, anticipate taking a little bit longer to get into work. So as you heard, NCDOT will be monitoring the roads closely throughout the night, and if they need to treat them a little earlier than expected, they're ready to do that. Live in Charlotte, Alex Shabad, WCNC Charlotte. Thank you. Our live team coverage continues in Mecklenburg County. Yeah, our Kendall Morris live in Huntersville. So Kendall, students there got out early today. Any word yet on CMS's plans for tomorrow? Yeah, Sarah, we don't have any idea what is going to happen as far as school goes tomorrow. That decision is expected later today. Now, school officials, they're certainly keeping an eye on the weather like this as conditions change across Mecklenburg County. Here in Huntersville, things have changed quickly ever since students got out here at Huntersville Elementary, which is where we are now. They got out at noon, and then this afternoon, this heavy snow has started to fall here. Now, just within the last hour, we've seen it start to accumulate on the ground. This is the first of the accumulation that we're seeing in the Huntersville area. But the big concern is up up here on the pavement, all of the snow is falling to the ground, and you can see that it is making everything around it wet. It makes for dangerous conditions if those temperatures dip below freezing overnight because all of this could ice over, making for hazardous conditions for students, teachers, staff that have to come to school in the morning. Now, CMS did dismiss all campuses three hours early today out of an abundance of caution after school activities were also canceled. The snow and the potential for black ice is receiving mixed reactions from both parents and students. I really hope we get a dusting at least. I'd like to see a little snow so she can enjoy it and enjoy her first snow day. The black ice in the morning, I have to drive in the morning to go to school, so I don't want to hit no black ice, especially when I have to come pick up my brother. I don't want him to at least slip and fall because it happens to a lot of people. Now, again, no word yet from CMS as to any delays or cancellations for students in Mecklenburg County tomorrow. When we do have that update for you, we will bring that to you both here on air and online at WCNC.com. Reporting live in Huntersville, Kendall Morris, WCNC Charlotte. Kendall, thank you for your reporting. Thanks. We want to start with our chief meteorologist, Brad Panovich. Brad, what is the timing of this snow system? The snow is over us right now, and it's almost about ready to move out. We've got a, several more hours, maybe two or three, depending on location. And then it's the freeze we got to worry about today.
tonight. This is a live look up at the Beach Mountain Parkway. You could see the snow on the ground up there. They were loving it. Another great ski weekend set up for the North Carolina mountains. Those temperatures continue to fall across the area. As we take a look at temperatures right now, we're in the low to mid 30s, so we're barely at or above freezing in a lot of locations. 32 up in Salisbury, 33 in Hickory, 34 in Concord right now. And as we go through the evening hours, the snow and sleet will taper off around 9 to 10 o'clock. Now, most areas are just going to see a dusting to a half an inch. Some areas one to two inches east of Charlotte. But as we go towards tomorrow morning, I think that's when we're going to have some issues. You can see the snow continuing to push off to the south and the east, but there's a heavy snow band pretty much right over Charlotte right now, and that band is expected to be over us for another couple of hours. We can already see the back edge moving through the mountains, and in fact, the snow is almost done up there. You see that band pushing east. Look at that by 8 o'clock. It starts to push to the east by 10 o'clock. It starts to taper off and the snow moves into the sand hills and by overnight we will clear things out, but the temperature drops and that's when the problems occur. We could see a really hard freeze in some locations with some icy spots by tomorrow morning, guys. All right, Brad, thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. North Carolina is about to feel this year's first blast of winter weather. The state's getting ready and now is the time for you to get ready too. The entire state is under either a winter storm advisory or warning through tomorrow morning. This winter storm will affect most parts of North Carolina. Effects could be minor in many places, but will be more significant in other places. We expect the heaviest snows after sunset. Northeastern North Carolina might get the greatest impact, where three to six inches of snow are possible in the forecast. For the Piedmont Triad and the Triangle area, one to three inches, one to two inches in the Charlotte area, and one to three inches in the western mountains of North Carolina. We can expect whiteout conditions on the coast due to heavy snows and gusty winds. Now, don't let the temperature right now fool you. It's still winter in North Carolina, and it's going to get colder tonight. Snowy roads can still be deadly if you're not careful. Although this is a fluid number, statewide right now we have 29 school districts closed and 55 of them on early release. Please pay close attention to your local forecast and be alert to changing weather conditions over the next 24 hours. Our Department of Transportation crews have been preparing since earlier this week. The state highway patrol troopers are ready. They're out on the roads to assist motorists and keep the traffic moving. And you can help them by staying off the road when conditions deteriorate. Our State Emergency Operations Center will activate here at 1 o'clock this afternoon to be ready to respond to any needs from local governments that they might have. Significant icing is not expected. And that's good news because that means that the roads will be easier to treat and clear. And there shouldn't be any major issues with power outages, although gusty winds tonight and tomorrow could cause some outages. And if your power does go out, remember to never use a generator or grill in your home or garage because the consequences could be deadly. Everyone is encouraged to make a plan for your family, including your pets. There are some things that you can do to make sure your family is ready for, unexpected, uh, for the unexpected with this winter weather storm. Keep food and batteries on hand and keep an emergency kit in your car. And for more information on how to prepare for winter storms, I would suggest you go to readync.org or for the latest road conditions, you can go to drivenc.gov. Uh, we have experts here who are ready to answer any questions that you might have. I have our Secretary of the Department of Public Safety, Eric Hooks, on stage. Our Emergency Management Director, Mike Sprayberry. Uh, Commander Glenn McNeil, the Colonel of the North Carolina Highway Patrol, is here. Our Chief Engineer from the Department of Transportation, Tim Little, is here. Major General Todd Hunt of the North Carolina National Guard is here. He has just taken his new position in command of the National Guard. 
Katie Webster is our meteorologist from emergency management, and she is here to answer questions. And Lee Williamson is our language interpreter. I first want to hear a few words from Director Sprayberry. Mike. Thank you, Governor, and good morning, everyone. As a winter storm begins to move into the state of North Carolina, we're decisively engaged with our state emergency response team partners to prepare for any required response operations. As the governor said, the state emergency operations center will be activated today at 1 p.m. We'll have agencies like the Department of Transportation, the National Guard, DMV license and theft, the highway patrol, and others who can assist us with keeping our roads safe and clear. Our utility partners are poised to surge into impacted areas for power restoration operations if needed. We've been in contact with our county partners to ensure that we have good situational awareness of their needs and that we're well prepared to provide the full spectrum of disaster response capability in all impact areas. Again, we urge everyone to please stay off the roads during this event. And as always, follow the instructions of your local officials and stay tuned to your local media for situational awareness. Thank you for your support of the North Carolina State Emergency Response Team. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mike. We'll now hear from Tim Little, Chief Engineer of our Department of Transportation. Tim. Thank you, Governor. Uh, yesterday, NCDOT started uh, anti-ice operations across uh, many counties across the uh, state. Uh, currently, as of 7 a.m., 403 trucks and 955 employees have put out about 305,000 gallons of salt brine as an anti-icing uh, agent. We have nearly 3,000 employees and 2,400 trucks with plows and spreaders and over 135,000 tons of salt on hand ready to clear snow from roadways following the storm. And also, as just to add on to what the governor said, encourage everyone to stay off the roads during this time and also be cautious driving tomorrow so when you see that yellow dump truck that's pushing snow or that yellow motor grader or some of our contract partners, please give them plenty of room as they perform their operations. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. And now some safety tips from Colonel Glenn McNeil, the commander of the North Carolina Highway Patrol. Thank you, Governor. Good morning. First, I would say please heed all of the safety warnings that are being provided here today. In participation with our state and local partners, the State Highway Patrol stands ready to assist when needed. Troopers have been positioned to mobilize upon a moment's notice in the areas as we expect heavy snowfall accumulation to occur. I encourage everyone to monitor local weather forecast that driving conditions in our areas are expected to diminish overnight. Motorists are encouraged to avoid traveling if at all possible. Motorists should also clear snow and ice from their vehicles prior to departing their locations to prevent flying debris. Make sure that your cell phones are fully charged in the event they are needed during an emergency. Also, if you are involved in a collision, please remove your vehicle from the roadway if the collision is minor in nature. This will prevent secondary collisions from occurring, which can often have more serious injuries. Right now, it's beautiful outside, so please don't let your guard down because it's going to change come nightfall.
Halls in the Carolinas for the special online edition of WCNC Charlotte. From Blowing Rock to Bessemer City, Salisbury to Charlotte, we are seeing snowflakes flying. Our first Warren Storm team has been telling us for days about this snow when it finally hit. Thanks for staying with us, everybody. I'm Sarah French. And I'm Fred Shropshire. We have a lot of school closings and delays coming in right now. They are scrolling at the bottom of your screen. We'll get a check of some of the big ones in just a minute. First, though, let's take a look at the first Warren Doppler radar. You can see the system blanketing the Carolinas and this snow rain sleet mix is going to continue well into the night. A winter weather advisory remains in effect until tomorrow morning and tomorrow going into work is going to be where we see the toughest problems. And that's because everything that's falling right now, whether it's rain or snow, will freeze, making for a potentially icy drive into work tomorrow morning. Tonight, WCNC Charlotte has live first warm team weather coverage to make sure you're prepared from current conditions on the roads to how road crews are prepping for overnight ice. We have every angle covered, but we want to start in the first warm storm center where Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich has your minute by minute forecast. Brad. <clears throat> yeah, we're still seeing some rain out there right now, guys, but mixing with a lot of snow to the south, mainly snow in many areas like Rock Hill, Fort Mill, Tiki K, around the Charlotte area. The temperatures are the key part tonight. We're going to watch these temperatures, see how quickly they can fall back, and if they get below freezing, we'll start to have some issues. 33 in Hickory, 32 in Salisbury, 34 currently in Concord, 34 in Charlotte, uh, 35 as you go over towards areas down in Chester County. Now, the snow technically still falling. The radar isn't picking it up, but we're still reporting snow at the airport, Concord, Lincolnton, Gastonia, as well as Rock Hill, but the bulk of the snow starting to shift off to the east in areas Union County, uh, down into Anson, Stanley, Richmond County. We're even seeing trace amounts of snow in Chesterfield County, areas like Pageland over towards Lancaster, where we're seeing some snow falling and even down almost to Columbia, South Carolina. We're starting to see some snowflakes down there. That rain snow line becomes a little more pronounced down towards Wilmington. The real heavy snow from this event is going to be here east of I-95. This is where we're going to see the winter storm warnings, and that's where we could see maybe three, four, five inches of snow. Most areas to our east are going to see about one to two. So far in our area, generally a trace to up to an inch on the grassy surfaces. We're getting some renewed snow shower activity around the Statesville area along interstate 40 and until this wave completely passes over us, we're likely going to see some flakes at least flying for the next couple of hours. Back to the west, there are still some snow showers in eastern Tennessee. Those are sliding into the mountains, but as we go through the next couple of hours, I expect most of this stuff will start to fall apart and weaken. Here's 8 o'clock. We'll go all the way through about 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Everything starts to shift off to the east, and that's when things will start to kind of calm down. Then We'll watch the temperatures. We'll still be above freezing for several hours, so really no issues on the roads until late, late tonight, well after midnight and into the early morning hours tomorrow when temperatures will likely fall down below the freezing mark. And that's really going to be the situation we'll watch for those early morning hours and likely what's going to cause a lot of delays. Meteorologist Aisha Scott is over in the Weather Center, and Aisha, those cold temperatures in the morning will be a big part of the problem. Oh, yeah, you'll have to watch for that black ice <coughs> threat early tomorrow morning as well. So if you're heading out, just a heads up, you'll want to use extra caution on the roads. One other thing I do want to mention, because I went outside to see some of the snowflakes as well, and it is cold. I knew it was cold out there, but the feel like temperatures have dropped into the 20s and really have been in the 20s all evening. So as we go through the rest of tonight, right around midnight, air temperatures will fall as well. But just keep in mind those feel like temperatures down into the 20s overnight tonight, along with those air temperatures temperatures as well. So we'll talk more about the black ice threat for your Friday coming up in just a few minutes. Sarah. Aisha, thank you. The snow still falling tonight. Thanks, Aisha. Yeah, we're still tracking that low on the coast, which is a big part of the system, and this low is what's going to move away over the next couple of hours, and we'll see high pressure build in. So the thing is, if you're worried about the road conditions in the morning, if you can just wait until the sun comes up, I think things will be completely fine after sunrise tomorrow. It's a very narrow window where we're going to have icy roads tonight. Most of that is going to be between about 4 a.m. and about 9 a.m. As we go through the weekend, it actually warms all the way back up maybe even close to 60 degrees by the time we get to Sunday. And that's the day we'll see all that melting going on and there'll be nothing left out there across the area. So guys, we'll we keep an eye on those temperatures tonight and that really is going to be the key right now. As Aisha mentioned, I was outside. There's really no issues on the roads at all right now. They're just wet. It's essentially been like a cold rain out there on the road surfaces.
All right, Brad, thank you. And the snow is still falling tonight as the sun has set, which means all the rain and snow that fell today will start freezing as the night goes on. Let's check in now live with our Hunter Signs, who's been in the Chevy Storm Tracker all evening. Hunter, what are you seeing out there tonight? Yeah, Fred and Sarah, the snow has stopped for the most part here, um, although we have seen a couple of flakes, but it's nothing compared to what we saw earlier. We are on 85 South uh, from Charlotte heading towards uh, Gaston County. I do want to let you know, though, uh, this weather has proved dangerous in, in some aspect because we've had just tonight three people, uh, pedestrians, hit by cars during that snowfall um, earlier this afternoon. Um, thankfully, though, uh, the amount of calls that Medic has received since midnight is only at 51. They tweeted at me moments ago saying, thankfully, people heeded the warnings and slowed down. So that's always good news, although it's 51, too many, but it could have been worse, according to them. Um, back to those three pedestrians who were hit, one of them over on Independence in the east side of town, that person was rushed to the emergency room with uh, serious injuries. The other two were not life threatening. Uh, one of them happening over off of North Sharon Amity Road and Milton Road and the other one on South Tryon. Of course, we don't know if weather was a factor in all three of them, but like I said, when they happened, the snow was coming down and driving out here in it, it didn't take much to start coming at your windshield and you're trying to get those wipers going to wipe it off, of course, and then add traffic and people slowing down on their brakes during the afternoon commute. Um, some may be able to assume that the weather could have been a factor, but no confirmation there. Thankfully, though, it sounds too, like two of them are going to be okay. We are still trying to check in to get um, the condition of that person who was hit by a vehicle during the snow um, over on the east side of town. Um, but the good news, like I said, only 51 calls um, that medic received with traffic accidents. People are definitely taking it slow out here. Um, hopefully they will continue to do so as the night continues because as you said the temperatures are already falling it is chilly outside we just got back into the vehicle after going out to a, grab a quick bite to eat during all of this coverage but we came back in here it is cold out there and as brad and aisha have mentioned the big part of this is these wet roads could sh certainly freeze uh, going into the overnight hours so if you have to be out please take it slow otherwise just stay bundled up inside back to you our team coverage continues tonight now in Rowan County. WCNC Charlotte's Chloe Leshner spent the day in Salisbury and shows us what it looked like there this evening. I'm Chloe Leshner in Salisbury where the snow has accumulated here on the grass and on some cars passing by, but it is not sticking to the streets yet at this point. First responders are expecting a few more accidents than normal, which is why crews have been out pre treating the bridges and there will be extra police patrols. The main concern really is the black ice that we will see tonight into tomorrow morning. First responders asking people to take it slow out on the roads. Chloe, thank you. Our team coverage continues in Union County. Snow coming down now, making for dangerous road conditions there. Stallings Fire Department tweeting out a photo of an accident on Indian Trail Road. Traffic now down to one lane. I think we have an image of that. WCNC Charlotte's Brianna Harper live on scene. Brianna, what's the latest? Well, Sarah, just within the last maybe 10 or 15 minutes, that crash wrapped up. But this was at the intersection where all this happened. If you take a look behind me, you can see the roads here are still wet. But um, Highway Patrol isn't saying whether or not weather paid a factor in this. But I want you guys to take a look at what that scene was looking like when we first arrived here earlier this afternoon. Highway Patrol tells us there were three cars involved in this crash. It appears one car actually ran through the two-way stop sign here at the intersection of Indian Trail Road and Gibble Road. Um, that car hit another car that was coming through the intersection and then there was kind of a, a ricochet effect hitting a third car in that crash so again three cars hit the good news is no one was hurt in all of this and again highway patrol says they don't believe that the weather had to do anything with this crash but it's just a reminder to folks to continue to take it slow in this weather again wet roads definitely a factor and as that temperature continues to drop again the possibility for freezing also another concern but this is what some drivers had to tell us earlier about how they plan to keep a lookout Take a look. They should just take it slow, keep it easy. Everybody stay safe, don't wreck, and uh, make sure you stay alive. 
and then again back out here live. We were taking a look at the rolls earlier, but this is what the side streets are looking like, or at least the ground, the sidewalks, that kind of thing. You can see a small layer of snow covering the area here. Um, again, luckily no issues on the road, but we will continue to stay out here in the Union County area in Indian Trail and keep you guys updated on the conditions throughout the rest of this evening. Send it back to you guys. I'm Kendall Morris in Huntersville. Conditions here are continuing to change as snow continues to fall from the sky. This area is predicted to get about an inch to two inches of snow. You can see here on the ground in soft surfaces, snow is beginning to accumulate. But what we're really watching is the pavement here because you can see that the snow, when it falls to the ground, it is melting, which overnight will create hazardous conditions for drivers as this freezes over and has the potential for black ice. We'll send it back to you. Kendall, thank you. And with this winter weather, we are seeing a lot of school delays and even some closings tomorrow. Vanessa Rufus is in the newsroom with the list. Vanessa. Hi, Fred. Yeah, that closure list or delay list continues to grow as we go into the evening. Now we're now up to about 59 at last check on our website, WCNC.com. Just running through some of the school districts that are going to be impacted by this winter weather. We'll go ahead and show you on your screen right now the delays and the closures that we've got reported so far. So a two hour delay is reported for tomorrow. Rock Hill, Fort Mill, York County, Watauga, Ash County, Gaston County. We also have some three hour delays reported. Those come from Lancaster, Caldwell County, Alexander County, Iredell Statesville, and Lincoln County, and then full closures reported at Avery County and Anson County Schools. And as I mentioned, a much fuller, more comprehensive list is available at our website, WCNC.com, including universities and agencies and even churches uh, throughout the viewing area. So go ahead and check that out. If you want to use a quick text uh, tool that will just send that list right to you, you can always text closing, so text the word closing, to 704-329-3600, and that will go right to your phone. Uh, once again, text message, don't call. Guys, back to you. All right, that's going to come in handy for a lot of people. Indeed. And here's a live look at conditions in the Raleigh area tonight. They've seen a lot of snow this afternoon like we have. Let's get a check of what's happening out there right now. I'm WRAL's Aaron Thomas in Rocky Mount, where you can see snow continues to fall. You can see some of the snowfall accumulating here on the ground and some of these trees. Now we're in an interesting spot right now. We have several people who are staying inside some of these cozy tiny homes here on the campus of Rocky Mount Mills. I spoke with the tow truck driver who tells me he's hoping people stay inside and avoid being on the roads if possible. But these tow truck drivers are already ready to provide roadside assistance to those who need it as snow continues to fall. Back to you. Taking it out to Stanley County now. Snow coming down hard there. Just look at this. You can see the roads. Uh, temperatures drop. Going to have issues with that tonight. Those driving conditions will just worsen overnight into the morning commuting hours. WCNC Charlotte Savannah Levins live in Stanley County. Savannah, those wet roads really, as we've said over and over again, are going to be an issue. Yep, absolutely, Sarah, and why don't we just get right to it? I'll show you from our dash cam right now. Now I can tell you the snow was coming down strong and thick. Those big uh, fat flakes coming down for a really long time. It just now in the past maybe 30 minutes seemed to taper off a little bit. You're seeing really light, tiny flakes now, but if you look to the side on the roadways there, you can see accumulation on the ground. I want to say a half to an inch, maybe even in some places. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe an inch to a half an inch in some places, but the good news is as far as the roads, not really seeing a lot of ice. So that's certainly a good thing. Check didn't see any power outages, so that's good news as well. As far as schools, I know you were talking about cancellations and delays. Uh, Stanley County schools have announced a three hour delay for tomorrow. They said they're going to continue to monitor and could increase that potentially cancel altogether tomorrow if need be. Of course, all going to be dependent on whether these roads right here in front of you freeze overnight as temperatures drop. Guys, that's the latest from Stanley County. I'm Sabine Levins, WCNC Charlotte.
I'm Alex Shabbat at the NCDOT maintenance yard where wet snow has been coming down for the last several hours. NCDOT tells us they'll be sending 20 plow trucks out later tonight, but they're waiting till after the storm passes because they say it's just too wet right now to treat the roads. You can see a number of puddles down where I'm standing, which means the big threat is black ice. NCDOT will be closely monitoring the situation to determine when to treat those roads and prevent the black ice. Okay, Alex, thank you. Another spot we saw get hit with a lot of snow today was Bessemer City. We watched huge flakes fall there all evening long. WCNC Charlotte's Brandon Goldner has been in Gaston County all day long and joins us live tonight. So, Brandon, looks like the snow has stopped where you are. It was really coming down earlier tonight. It, it really was, and every family member that we've seen, a lot of them were so excited about all the snow coming down. It's gotten a lot quieter. We moved actually east, closer to Charlotte, in Gastonia right now. Gaston County Schools just in the last hour came out with the news that they will be delaying schools by about two hours just from the roadways and the reflection of the city lights on the roadways. That is going to be, of course, the issue that we keep on harping on when it comes to the issue of black ice and slick roads, even just when cars coming by through here. Speed limit around here is around 20 25 miles per hour but just hearing the splashing of the roads and just how wet those roads are good news as well and it like medic gaston county ems says that they have not had any additional calls compared to what they normally receive people have been heating advice and slowing down according to them gaston county schools of course also delay excuse me released students earlier today around 1 p.m. and so far from what we've heard there it has been a smooth transition in that sense the snow has mainly been hitting on terms of the grass but not so much on the roadways but still having those slick conditions for now we'll send it back over to you guys thank you Brandon Golden reporting live and a live look now at the roads that's where a lot of our focus is right now because the temperatures, as you've heard us talking about all along, they're going to drop as the night continues. And anything that's wet right now will freeze over, making for a potentially icy drive. So let's send it over to Vanessa Rufus live in the newsroom. Vanessa, there are some things people can do behind the wheel to really stay safe tomorrow morning or if they have to get out tonight. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Sarah and Fred. We have some tips that we are seeing from troopers and automotive experts about how to drive in winter weather. So we'll run through just a few of those right now, uh, starting off with a little cautionary tale about cruise control and how, you know, sometimes folks like to put that and maybe they can save some gas. But really, it's not going to be very safe if you hit a pocket of ice. That could really help you or make you lose control of your vehicle uh, a lot worse. Uh, also, increase your following distance. Distance, and we know all about that. We hear all about that every time the visibility drops, but also just with uh, ice or snow or even just rain. We hear experts say to increase that following distance for six to 10 seconds. So that basically means the car in front of you passes a landmark. You're counting six to 10 seconds before you yourself are crossing that landmark as well. Uh, third, we have accelerate and brake slowly. So we're not doing any hard jamming on the brakes. We're not doing any big gassing of the pedal um, that's really going to help you get into a skid and then speaking of which god forbid you get into a skid but uh we have some tips for you if that does happen so first of all stay calm i know that's tough but try not to panic Try not to slam on that brake. That can make the situation worse. And then when you get into a rear wheel skid where you have the rear of your car moving either in one direction or the other, you're turning your steering wheel in the direction of the skid. So if your rear is going towards the left, you're turning your steering wheel gently towards the left. Biggest tip of all, though, if you don't have to drive, don't do it. Don't put yourself in that potential scenario. Guys, back to you. That's right. Just best to avoid that entire situation altogether. Vanessa, thank you. Right now, we want to get another check of the forecast, so let's send it over to Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich for the very latest. Hey, Brad. Yeah, we still have that winter weather advisory in effect, guys. This will likely be extended through tomorrow, even as the snow comes to an end. Remember, roads are going to be slick overnight, and we're going to see some slick spots. They are canceling some of the counties back to the west, so we're seeing a few out of there. We'll have to see if this gets extended past the midnight time frame for some of the these areas. The big story tonight obviously is going to be the temperature. Anything wet out there doesn't matter how much snow you got because if it freezes tonight, even the rain that fell today is going to cause some slick spots. There's the back edge of the snow just now moving east of Charlotte. I'm still seeing snow reports at the airport, so it's likely uh, there are some flurries lagging back in here. There's a little band right in here that isn't going to show up on radar. Light snow has a difficult time showing up on radar because the radar beam bounces off that fluffy snow and doesn't really show up on the radar, but you can see that batch of snow pushing off to the south and east back towards the west 
we're starting to dry things out right now. The big story is how much snow has actually fallen and stuck. I mean, that's been kind of a tough thing to measure out there because this stuff's been melting so quickly. Aisha Scott's been pouring over some of those snowfall totals and has some of the reports we've seen so far, Aisha, and some of them more impressive than others, but most areas about well, an inch or so, right? Yeah, about an inch. Most areas about a half an inch. So let's take a look at the numbers here. So Banner Elk, actually the highest spot that I've seen thus far, and these are all preliminary. So these are not official totals. About two and a half inches. Lenore, about an inch of snow. Valdez, about a half of an inch. And then Rockwell, about a half of an inch as well. So we haven't had a whole lot of snow. We wasn't even forecasting a whole lot of snow, but it was certainly pretty to see. And as Brad <laughs> mentioned, it did a lot of it melted as it hit the surface. So we'll get some of those uh, official numbers hopefully over the next several hours, and we'll bring those to you a little bit later on. Brad? Yeah, I'm kind of excited to see what the airport actually ends up with. I, knew, I do know they had officially measured at least a tenth of an inch, which is measurable snow. That will keep our streak alive of 142 years in a row of at least some snowfall. So kind of impressive to see us get that snow. So tonight we'll see what the refreeze looks like. It looks like between I would say 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. is when we're going to be dropping below freezing. And I really think sunrise is where we'll see the slick spots, because if you're out and about today or even this evening, driving's fine. Now tomorrow it's not going to be the same thing, so don't be deceived. The reason it's called black ice is because when we see that water on the road surface, it looks like it's wet, but it could be ice and it's very transparent. It's very thin, especially bridges and overpasses. I think that's where you're going to see DOT put a lot of their effort in over the next uh, 12 hours or so. A rapidly falling temperatures by morning really causes a quick refreeze of anything wet. And again, if you come across a bridge or an overpass, don't jerk the wheel. Don't slam the brakes on. Vanessa was talking about this. Just let off the gas and coast directly straight over. Once you get to the other side, you can start applying the brake or slow down a little bit. So low temperatures overnight. I do expect some mid teens in the mountains, a low to mid 20s, and there's still a chance of a stray flurry till about two or three in the morning. Uh, a very cold start to so bundle up in the morning. I think we'll see a lot of delays because the delay is all you need. There's no reason to cancel plans tomorrow because if you can get to sunrise and get to about 9 a.m., we should be OK because I'll show you temperatures after that morning where we're down around 30 degrees. We will quickly climb up above freezing and with the sunshine out. It'll do the work that salt can. So the DOT doesn't have to do much work tomorrow because Mother Nature will do most of it for them. Full sunshine all day with temperatures climbing back into the 40s. Here's a look at that seven day forecast and you could see some morning icy spots tomorrow with temperatures uh, down into the 20s and then by the afternoon we'll see those temperatures back into the 40s and then notice by Sunday it's back up to 60 degrees guys and that's a Springtime. Charlotte snowstorm, right? <laughs> you, you get snow and then a couple days later it's back near 60 and a lot of folks already asked me is this it? This is the last one. Mm. I would not bet against March. March 2nd by the way is the snowiest single calendar day of the entire year. And didn't we get a little snow last year in April? Uh, April 2nd. <laughs> So Remember I always tell people we got to get past St. Patrick's Day. To me, that's kind of the date. Once we get beyond that, the chances of snow go way down. But those first two weeks of March, okay. always very interesting. And the pattern does look cold, I will tell you. Uh -oh. that. All right, Brad, thank you very much. <laughs> Well, snow coming down in Charlotte, but that isn't stopping the Charlotte 49ers from having a little fun. The team just tweeting this video of people playing football in the snow. What could be better? Yeah, this is just one of many weather videos we've seen today. Vanessa Roof is taking a look at those. Vanessa, what do you see? Yeah, guys, we're getting some great viewer pictures and videos sent to us on social media. So we've collected a few. And yes, the 49ers football one was really great. But I love this drone action shot that we're getting here from Scott Brotherton. I wonder if Brad Panovich likes this drone action picture. Do you like this, Brad? <laughs> Fly my drone in the snow. <laughs> yeah, well, he was not. And he got a great neighborhood shot here showing multiple yards with a little bit of powdered sugar going on top. We've seen a lot of videos here with this really heavy snow that, that is just really accumulating in like front yards. We're seeing them on patios. So here from Pam snowing in Youngsville. Love that. We also have some slow motion action like this one coming from Salisbury. So that's from Anthony Johnson. Thank you so much, Anthony. And we see some pretty good accumulation here on the rooftops and the lawns. This is Harrisburg coming to us from Michael Keir. So thank you, Michael, for sending this video to us. Uh, Karen tweeted this at me. So thank you out of York. Pretty good snowfall you guys got in that area. And I love this one mostly because of the beard, but Craig here says conditions in the high country, not the best snow, but the best so far this winter. I love that. That is a great shot. And then 
not the best picture, but yes, yeah, something that we're contending with. We talked with uh, Charlotte Douglas, you know, they're dealing with some delays and you could see they are busy de-icing those planes there. Uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway showing it coming down on the speedway. And yes, yeah, some fun stuff that we're getting. Olaf loving his life on our back porch. Wesley Chapel, Jennifer Weitzel here. Do you want to build a snowman? Yes, we do. There it is. First snowman of 2020 from Monroe, North Carolina, coming from Valerie. I know not a lot of accumulation to build a real one, but we can do the best we can. And then I like this one, a little snowbird out of Indian Trail. And speaking of the animals, we did send this out on social media. We want to see your pictures here of your pets in the snow. This is just so fun just because we can. Let's go ahead and go through some of the great ones we've got here. A little kitty and, and her friend. We've got a little snow covered doggy. We've got the whole gang's here. And then finally, that's my dog, Mr. Mojo, getting his favorite thing, which is snow. So it's his first snow in Charlotte. All right. Go, Mr. I love Mojo. it, Vanessa. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, we're also seeing some problems, though, popping up at the airport, of course, because of all this winter weather. Let's check in now with Lexi Wilson at Charlotte Douglas to find out what's going on there tonight. Definitely some travel trouble here. I just checked the monitors and there are several delays as well as cancellations. According to flightaware.com, Charlotte has around 40 delays and 35 cancellations. The airport is currently monitoring the weather and is prepared to implement winter weather operations if and when needed. Here's video of the Charlotte Douglas International Airport spraying a de-icing fluid on an aircraft. It helps remove ice and snow. Here's what one traveler had to say about the winter weather flying out at 6.30, my flight's still on time, flying United, but I mean, you never know what the weather. I was here a few weeks ago for the tornado. And officials say, please check your flight status with the airline or on their website, cltairport.com. You can also download their mobile app. Reporting at the Charlotte Douglas International Airport, I'm Lexi Wilson for WCNC Charlotte. Lexi, thank you. Taking it back out to Stanley County. Snow was coming down hard earlier today. WCNC Charlotte Savannah Levins live in Stanley County. Savannah, those wet roads, we've been talking about it all night. Going to be an issue tonight, really into tomorrow morning as well. Yeah, absolutely. The snow's been coming down for a long time. Let me just flip over our camera here, show you from our dash cam. Look at all that snow. I want to say maybe an inch at this point from all the snow that's been coming down all day. It's just now tapered off a little bit. You can probably see on your screen there. It's coming down in smaller flakes and a little lighter compared to what we've been seeing since about 4 p.m. So the last four hours have been those big fluffy flakes, consistent downfall now tapering off a little bit, but yeah, check out those roads soaked. Stanley County Schools announcing a three hour delay tomorrow just because of the anticipation of all the water you're seeing on the roads now freezing overnight as temperatures dip. They said they're going to be monitoring the situation. So of course, stick with us. WC and C Charlotte tonight at 11 and in the morning. We're going to be monitoring these conditions and bring you updates on the schools situations as well. For now, that's the update from Stanley County and Albemarle. Savannah Levins, WC and C Charlotte. All right, Savannah, thank you. And I'm pretty sure that people, the school systems at least, those that haven't made their announcements are watching the road conditions and what that looks like in the morning very closely. Yeah, and I think the earlier you start, probably the rougher the conditions will be because right around sunrise looks icy. The winter weather advisories, in fact, I'll be watching temperatures all night. We're kind of done kind of watching the radar because the snow is pretty much moving out. So it's all about watching that thermometer and just to show you that the snow is exiting. But here's a cool thing. We have just reported snow here at the station and it made it into the official report oh, there. Uh, half an inch here at WC. <laughs> NC right. Charlotte measure that out on the, uh, on the, the cars out there. Yeah, so <laughs> and that's close to the airport. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see what the official report will be at the airport, but yeah. um, I know this a lot of folks wanted to see a lot more snow, but this was kind of in the range we expected. Right. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, we got a little excited because it was our first yeah. legitimate It's not snow. a major disruptor, yeah. at least not at this point. No, you know, and here's the thing to remember. We average 4.3 inches of snow per winter, so something like this is absolutely normal. And we could have <laughs> some. You said still more in March, possibly even April. Yeah, I think I said earlier in the winter, I said us not getting any snow is more abnormal than us getting, getting snow. snow. Just be careful tonight and in the morning, you said, yeah. especially the bridges, the overpasses. Yeah, because you could be driving fine and that's the thing. You, you, you get up to full speed and you don't realize you get to a bridge and if you suddenly jerk the wheel or yeah. something, that's where we have issues. I've seen that happen with freezing fog and other situations. People drive full speed and then you get to a bridge and it's like, 
They lose yeah. control. I know. I was just going over that with Fred. I was like, okay, so if my <laughs> that go this way, I turn into yeah. it, right? Yeah. He's like, yes, you just, just want to ease off gently. Of the gas. Yeah. Just, yeah, that's the thing. Don't make any sudden movements with the gas, the, the brake, or the steering wheel. Yeah. All right. All right, thank, thank you. you. That's going to do it for this special online edition of WCNC Charlotte. We will be back on air on your TV at 11 with a full forecast and everything you need to know as the conditions expected to get worse overnight. Crews, of course, are spread out all across the Carolinas right now from the mountains to the Piedmont and really everywhere in between. Our Savannah 11's live in Stanley County. Savannah, what's happening out there? Well, let's just get right to it. Let me show you our driving shot here in Albemarle. Look at that sky just blanketed by snow. You're seeing accumulation there on the sidewalks and the grass as well. Not too much accumulation or really any ice on the main roads, which is the good thing. You're seeing a lot of people driving out and about. Luckily, haven't seen any power outages either. Uh, Stanley County Schools did let out early today, and I just got word that they they have uh, decided to run on a delay tomorrow, a three-hour de delay, just because of all the freezing temperatures we're expecting. And like Brad has been saying, all these roads that you're seeing on your uh, screen right now, these wet roads could very well and will most likely turn into ice, some dangerous driving conditions overnight. We'll keep an eye on things, guys. That's the update from Stanley County for now. Reporting live, Savannah 11's WCNC Charlotte. Savannah, thank you. Our live team weather coverage continues just a little farther south now. Yeah, Union County expects to see some pretty significant snow move in this evening and that's where our Brianna Harper is live tonight. So how's it going out there, Brianna? Well, Sarah, we're finally starting to see some wet and heavy snow here in Monroe here in Union County. We've really been across the area here through the past couple hours and the rain has definitely started. The snow that is has definitely made the roadways wet, but the good news is it is not sticking. What isn't causing any problems for the steady traffic that we continue to see here in Union County. If you guys take a look now, we're right along Highway 74 here in Union County. Again, as I mentioned, the roadways are wet, but there's only just been the rain. That snow has not stuck on the roads just yet. The traffic is flowing just fine. And if you take a look, this is really like a almost like a snow globe effect. The snow is just falling very lightly, very slowly. It's actually very beautiful out here. And so as long as we can have, you know, trouble free snow, that's kind of the best kind of snow that we hope to see here. And as uh, Brad mentioned, more snow is planning to fall later tonight. So we're going to stay out here and keep you guys updated. But for now, that's the very latest coming out of Union County. All so right, Brianna, you thank you. Snow has been falling in the Charlotte area for about an hour and a half now. We're not seeing much accumulation yet, but we have been seeing some pretty heavy snow at times. And you can see it's really coming down in Charlotte as we speak, and DOT crews are ready to jump into action and get the roads ready for tomorrow morning's commute because it could be a slick one. Yeah, our live team weather coverage continues tonight in Charlotte, so let's send it out to Alex Shabbat. And Alex, you've been talking with those crews about how they're preparing, so what are they telling you? That's right, Sarah. NCDOT says they'll be sending 20 plow trucks across our area, but right now they're holding off on treating the roads because it's just too wet. And as you can see, there's puddles on the ground and those materials would just wash away. But this also means the big threat is black ice. We'll be prepared for anything that could happen. NCDOT trucks closely monitoring road temperatures as the threat of black ice a main concern in the late night hours. All of our trucks have temperature gauges on them. So we'll be able to monitor the temperatures of the pavement and I'll be able to treat. For most of the day, NCDOT crews had not treated any roads. The maintenance manager saying the temperatures are too warm for accumulation and the rain would wash away the materials. Right now it's been raining, so we didn't want to treat anything. It would just, it just run off. So um, we'll be treating tonight once the storm stops and try to prevent any kind of freezing tonight. NCDOT says they'll be deploying 20 plow trucks onto the interstates in Mecklenburg, Cabarrus, and Union counties. They're urging drivers to give them space and take a primary route if possible. The interstates will be monitored closely, um, so take a primary route to, uh, to and from your office, but be very careful and uh, anticipate taking a little bit longer to get into work. So as you heard, NCDOT will be monitoring the roads closely throughout the night, and if they need to treat them a little earlier than expected, they're ready to do that. Live in Charlotte, Alex Shabbat, WCNC Charlotte. Thank you. Our live team coverage continues in Mecklenburg County. Yeah, our Kendall Morris live in Huntersville. So Kendall students there got out early today. Any word yet on CMS's plans for tomorrow? 
Yeah, Sarah, we don't have any idea what is going to happen as far as school goes tomorrow. That decision is expected later today. Now, school officials, they're certainly keeping an eye on the weather like this as conditions change across Mecklenburg County. Here in Huntersville, things have changed quickly ever since students got out here at Huntersville Elementary, which is where we are now. They got out at noon, and then this afternoon, this heavy snow has started to fall here. Now, just within the last hour, we've seen it start to accumulate on the ground. This is the first big accumulation that we're seeing in the Huntersville area. But the big concern is up here on the pavement. All of this snow is falling to the ground, and you can see that it is making everything around it wet. It makes for dangerous conditions if those temperatures dip below freezing overnight because all of this could ice over, making for hazardous conditions for students, teachers, staff that have to come to school in the morning. Now, CMS did dismiss all campuses three hours early today out of an abundance of caution after school activities were also canceled. The snow and the potential for black ice is receiving mixed reactions from both parents and students. I really hope we get a dusting at least. I'd like to see a little snow so she can enjoy it and enjoy her first snow day. So the black ice in the morning, I have to drive in the morning to go to school, so I don't want to hit no black ice, especially when I have to come pick up my brother. I don't want him to at least slip and fall because it happens to a lot of people. Now, again, no word yet from CMS as to any delays or cancellations for students in Mecklenburg County tomorrow. When we do have that update for you, we will bring that to you both here on air and online at WCNC.com. Reporting live in Huntersville, Kendall Morris, WCNC Charlotte. Kendall, thank you for your reporting. We want to start with our chief meteorologist, Brad Panovich. Brad, what is the timing of this snow system? The snow is over us right now, and it's almost about ready to move out. We've got a, several more hours, maybe two or three, depending on location. And then it's the freeze we got to worry about tonight. This is a live look up at the Beach Mountain Parkway. You could see the snow on the ground up there. They were loving it. Another great ski weekend set up for the North Carolina mountains. Those temperatures continue to fall across the area. As we take a look at temperatures right now, we're in the low to mid 30s. So we're barely at or above freezing in a lot of locations. 32 up in Salisbury, 33 in Hickory, 34 in Concord right now. And as we go through the evening hours, the snow and sleet will taper off around 9 to 10 o'clock. Now, most areas are just going to see a dusting to a half an inch, some areas one to two inches east of Charlotte. But as we go towards tomorrow morning, I think that's when we're going to have some issues. You can see the snow continuing to push off to the south and the east, but there's a heavy snow band pretty much right over Charlotte right now, and that band is expected to be over us for another couple of hours. We can already see the back edge moving through the mountains, and in fact, the snow is almost done up there. You see that band pushing east. Look at that by eight o'clock. It starts to push to the east by 10 o'clock. It starts to taper off and the snow moves into the sand hills and by overnight we'll clear things out, but the temperature drops and that's when the problems occur. We could see a really hard freeze in some locations with some icy spots by tomorrow morning, guys. All right, Brad, thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. North Carolina is about to feel this year's first blast of winter weather. The state's getting ready and now is the time for you to get ready too. The entire state is under either a winter storm advisory or warning through tomorrow morning. This winter storm will affect most parts of North Carolina. Effects could be minor in many places, but will be more significant in other places. We expect the heaviest snows after sunset. Northeastern North Carolina might get the greatest impact, where three to six inches of snow are possible in the forecast. For the Piedmont Triad and the Triangle area, one to three inches, one to two inches in the Charlotte area, and one to three inches in the western mountains of North Carolina. We can expect whiteout conditions on the coast due to heavy snows and gusty winds. Now, don't let the temperature right now fool you. It's still winter in North Carolina, and it's going to get colder tonight. Snowy roads can still be deadly if you're not careful. Although this is a fluid number, statewide right now we have 29 school districts closed and 55 of them on early release. Please pay close attention to your local forecast and be alert to changing weather conditions over the next 24 hours. Our Department of Transportation crews have been preparing since earlier this week. The state highway patrol troopers are ready. They're out on the roads to assist motorists and keep the traffic moving. And you can help them by staying off the road 
when conditions deteriorate. Our State Emergency Operations Center will activate here at 1 o'clock this afternoon to be ready to respond to any needs from local governments that they might have. Significant icing is not expected, and that's good news because that means that the roads will be easier to treat and clear, and there shouldn't be any major issues with power outages, although gusty winds tonight and tomorrow could cause some outages. And if your power does go out, remember to never use a generator or grill in your home or garage because the consequences could be deadly. Everyone is encouraged to make a plan for your family, including your pets. There are some things that you can do to make sure your family is ready for, unexpected, uh, for the unexpected with this winter weather storm. Keep food and batteries on hand and keep an emergency kit in your car. And for more information on how to prepare for winter storms, I would suggest you go to readync.org or for the latest road conditions, you can go to drivenc.gov. Uh, we have experts here who are ready to answer any questions that you might have. I have our Secretary of the Department of Public Safety, Eric Hooks, on stage, our Emergency Management Director, Mike Sprayberry, uh, Commander Glenn McNeil, the Colonel of the North Carolina Highway Patrol, is here, our Chief Engineer from the Department of Transportation, Tim Little, is here. Major General Todd Hunt of the North Carolina National Guard is here. He has just taken his new position in command of the National Guard. Katie Webster is our meteorologist from emergency management, and she is here to answer questions. And Lee Williamson is our language interpreter. I first want to hear a few words from Director Sprayberry. Mike. Thank you, Governor, and good morning, everyone. As a winter storm begins to move into the state of North Carolina, we're decisively engaged with our state emergency response team partners to prepare for any required response operations. As the Governor said, the State Emergency Operations Center will be activated today at 1 p.m. We'll have agencies like the Department of Transportation, the National Guard, DMV license and theft, the Highway Patrol, and others who can assist us with keeping our roads safe and clear. Our utility partners are poised to surge into impacted areas for power restoration operations if needed. We've been in contact with our county partners to ensure that we have good situational awareness of their needs and that we're well prepared to provide the full spectrum of disaster response capability in all impact areas. Again, we urge everyone to please stay off the roads during this event, and as always, follow the instructions of your local officials and stay tuned to your local media for situational awareness. Thank you for your support of the North Carolina State Emergency Response Team. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mike. We'll now hear from Tim Little, Chief Engineer of our Department of Transportation. Tim. Thank you, Governor. Uh, yesterday, NCDOT started uh, anti-icing operations across uh, many counties across the uh, state. Uh, currently, as of 7 a.m., 403 trucks and 955 employees have put out about 305,000 gallons of salt brine as an anti-icing uh, agent. We have nearly 3,000 employees and 2,400 trucks with plows and spreaders and over 135,000 tons of salt on hand ready to clear snow from roadways following the storm. And also, as just to add on to what the governor has said, encourage everyone to stay off the roads during this time and also be cautious driving tomorrow so when you see that yellow dump truck that's pushing snow or that yellow motor grader or some of our contract partners, please give them plenty of room as they perform their operations. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. And now some safety tips from Colonel Glenn McNeil, the commander of the North Carolina Highway Patrol. Thank you, Governor. Good morning. First, I would say please heed all of the safety warnings that are being provided here today. In participation with our state and local partners, the State Highway Patrol stands ready to assist when needed. Troopers have been positioned to mobilize upon a moment's notice in the areas as we expect heavy snowfall accumulation to occur. I encourage everyone to monitor, 
local weather forecast that driving conditions in our areas are expected to diminish overnight. Motorists are encouraged to avoid traveling if at all possible. Motorists should also clear snow and ice from their vehicles prior to departing their locations to prevent flying debris. Make sure that your cell phones are fully charged in the event they are needed during an emergency. Also, if you are involved in a collision, please remove your vehicle from the roadway if the collision is minor in nature. This will prevent secondary collisions from occurring, which can often have more serious injuries. Right now, it's beautiful outside, so please don't let your guard down because it's going to change come nightfall. Please do not become complacent. Black ice is expected on the roadways in the morning, and it will create treacherous driving conditions. Motorists wishing to obtain updated roadway conditions can visit our drivenc.gov for those updates. Please do not call 911 or Star HP for this purpose. These lines of communication must be left open for emergency situations. Thank you. Okay, we'll take any questions that you may have. This is a statewide event, so we're keeping our resources deployed across the state to make sure that they can respond anywhere because every part of our state is either under a winter weather advisory or a winter weather warning. However, we, we do expect the northeastern part of North Carolina to see the most snow right now. So I think uh, as the day goes on and the weather forecast becomes clearer and clearer, then the State Highway Patrol and the Department of Transportation uh, would be ready to move resources. We also have some uh, guardsmen activated in the event that we need help from the National Guard, and they can be uh, deployed to any area that is in particular need. Other questions? All right, thank you very much, guys. There's a live look outside of Beach Mountain tonight. You can see there's a lot of snow on the ground up there right now. And while we're not seeing that here in the Piedmont just yet that much, we are keeping a close eye on the roads because they could quickly become a problem here. Yeah, so let's check in live now with Hunter Signs live in the Chevy Storm Tracker. Hunter, what's going on? Yeah, well, the snow is certainly falling here, Fred and Sarah. We are making our way around Uptown on I-7 in the Carolinas for the special online edition of WCNC Charlotte. From Blowing Rock to Bessemer City, Salisbury to Charlotte, we are seeing snowflakes flying. Our first Warren Storm team has been telling us for days about this snow when it finally hit. Thanks for staying with us, everybody. I'm Sarah French. And I'm Fred Shropshire. We have a lot of school closings and delays coming in right now. They are scrolling at the bottom of your screen. We'll get a check of some of the big ones in just a minute. First, though, let's take a look at the first Warren Doppler radar. You can see the system blanketing the Carolinas and this snow rain sleet mix is going to continue well into the night. A winter weather advisory remains in effect until tomorrow morning and tomorrow going into work is going to be where we see the toughest problems. And that's because everything that's falling right now, whether it's rain or snow, will freeze, making for a potentially icy drive into work tomorrow morning. Tonight, WCNC Charlotte has live first warm team weather coverage to make sure you're prepared from current conditions on the roads to how road crews are prepping for overnight ice. We have every angle covered, but we want to start in the first warm storm center where Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich has your minute by minute forecast. Brad. <clears throat> yeah, we're still seeing some rain out there right now, guys, but mixing with a lot of snow to the south, mainly snow in many areas like Rock Hill, Fort Mill, Tiki K, around the Charlotte area. The temperatures are the key part tonight. We're going to watch these temperatures, see how quickly they can fall back, and if they get below freezing, we'll start to have some issues. 33 in Hickory, 32 in Salisbury, 34 currently in Concord, 34 in Charlotte, uh, 35 as you go over towards areas down in Chester County. Now, the snow technically still falling. The radar isn't picking it up, but we're still reporting 
and snow at the airport. Concord, Lincolnton, Gastonia, as well as Rock Hill, but the bulk of the snow is starting to shift off to the east in areas Union County, uh, down into Anson, Stanley, Richmond County. We're even seeing trace amounts of snow in Chesterfield County, areas like Pageland, over towards Lancaster, where we're seeing some snow falling, and even down almost to Columbia, South Carolina. We're starting to see some snowflakes down there. That rain snow line becomes a little more pronounced down towards Wilmington. The real heavy snow from this event is going to be here east of I-95. This is where we're going to see the winter storm warnings, and that's where we could see maybe three, four, five inches of snow. Most areas to our east are going to see about one to two. So far in our area, generally a trace to up to an inch on the grassy surfaces. We're getting some renewed snow shower activity around the Statesville area along Interstate 40 and until this wave completely passes over us, we're likely going to see some flakes at least flying for the next couple of hours. Back to the west, there are still some snow showers in eastern Tennessee. Those are sliding into the mountains, but as we go through the next couple of hours, I expect most of this stuff will start to fall apart and weaken. Here's 8 o'clock. We'll go all the way through about 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Everything starts to shift off to the east, and that's when things will start to kind of calm down. Then We'll watch the temperatures. We'll still be above freezing for several hours, so really no issues on the roads until late, late tonight, well after midnight and into the early morning hours tomorrow when temperatures will likely fall down below the freezing mark. And that's really going to be the situation we'll watch for those early morning hours and likely what's going to cause a lot of delays. Meteorologist Aisha Scott is over in the Weather Center, and Aisha, those cold temperatures in the morning will be a big part of the problem. Oh yeah, you'll have to watch for that black <coughs> ice threat early tomorrow morning as well. So if you're heading out, just a heads up, you'll want to use extra caution on the roads. One other thing I do want to mention because I went outside to see some of the snowflakes as well, and it is cold. I knew it was cold out there, but the feel like temperatures have dropped into the 20s and really have been in the 20s all evening. So as we go through the rest of tonight, right around midnight, air temperatures will fall as well. But just keep in mind those feel like temperatures down into the 20s overnight tonight, along with those air temperatures as well. So we'll talk more about the black ice threat for your Friday coming up in just a few minutes. Sarah. Aisha, thank you. The snow still falling tonight. Thanks, Aisha. Yeah, we're still tracking that low on the coast, which is a big part of this system. And this low is what's going to move away over the next couple of hours, and we'll see high pressure build in. So the thing is, if you're worried about the road conditions in the morning, if you can just wait until the sun comes up, I think things will be completely fine after sunrise tomorrow. It's a very narrow window where we're going to have icy roads tonight. Most of that is going to be between about 4 a.m. and about 9 a.m. As we go through the weekend, it actually warms all the way back up maybe even close to 60 degrees by the time we get to Sunday. And that's the day we'll see all that melting going on and there'll be nothing left out there across the area. So guys, we'll we keep an eye on those temperatures tonight and that really is going to be the key right now. As Aisha mentioned, I was outside. There's really no issues on the roads at all right now. They're just wet. It's essentially been like a cold rain out there on the road surfaces. All right, Brad, thank you. And the snow is still falling tonight as the sun has set, which means all the rain and snow that fell today will start freezing as the night goes on. Let's check in now live with our Hunter Signs, who's been in the Chevy Storm Tracker all evening. Hunter, what are you seeing? Yeah, Fred and Sarah, the snow has stopped for the most part here, um, although we have seen a couple of flakes, but it's nothing compared to what we saw earlier. We are on 85 South uh, from Charlotte heading towards uh, Gaston County. I do want to let you know, though, uh, this weather has proved dangerous in, in some aspect because we've had just tonight three people, uh, pedestrians hit by cars during that snowfall um, earlier this afternoon. Um, thankfully, though, uh, the amount of calls that Medic has received since midnight is only at 51. They tweeted at me moments ago saying, thankfully, people heeded the warnings and slowed down. So that's always good news, although it's 51, too many, but it could have been worse, according to them. Um, back to those three pedestrians who were hit, one of them over on Independence in the east side of town, that person was rushed to the emergency emergency room with uh, serious injuries. The other two were not life threatening. Uh, one of them happening over off of North Sharon Amity Road and Milton Road and the other one on South Tryon. Of course, we don't know if weather was a factor in all three of them. But like I said, when they happened, the snow was coming down and driving out here in it 
it didn't take much to start coming at your windshield and you're trying to get those wipers going to wipe it off, of course, and then add traffic and people slowing down on their brakes during the afternoon commute. Um, some may be able to assume that the weather could have been a factor, but no confirmation there. Thankfully, though, it sounds two, like two of them are going to be okay. We are still trying to check in to get um, the condition of that person who was hit by a vehicle during the snow um, over on the east side of town. Um, but the good news, like I said, only 51 calls um, that medic received with traffic accidents. People are definitely taking it slow out here. Um, Hopefully they will continue to do so as the night continues because as you said, the temperatures are already falling. It is chilly outside. We just got back into the vehicle after going out to grab a quick bite to eat during all of this coverage, but we came back in here. It is cold out there. And as Brad and Aisha have mentioned, the big part of this is these wet roads could sh certainly freeze uh, going into the overnight hours. So if you have to be out, please take it slow. Otherwise, just stay bundled up inside. Back to you. Our team coverage continues tonight now in Rowan County. WCNC Charlotte's Chloe Leshner spent the day in Salisbury and shows us what it looked like there this evening. I'm Chloe Leshner in Salisbury where the snow has accumulated here on the grass and on some cars passing by, but it is not sticking to the streets yet. At this point, first responders are expecting a few more accidents than normal, which is why crews have been out pre treating the bridges and there will be extra police patrols. The main concern really is the black ice that we will see tonight into tomorrow morning. First responders asking people to take it slow out on the roads. Chloe, thank you. Our team coverage continues in Union County. Snow coming down now, making for dangerous road conditions there. Stallings Fire Department tweeting out a photo of an accident on Indian Trail Road traffic now down to one lane. I think we have an image of that. WCNC Charlotte's Brianna Harper live on scene. Brianna, what's the latest? Well, Sarah, just within the last maybe 10 or 15 minutes, that crash wrapped up. But this was at the intersection where all this happened. If you take a look behind me, you can see the roads here are still wet. But um, Highway Patrol isn't saying whether or not weather paid a factor in this. But I want you guys to take a look at what that scene was looking like when we first arrived here earlier this afternoon. Highway Patrol tells us there were three cars involved in this crash. It appears one car actually ran through the two-way stop sign here at the intersection of Indian Trail Road and Gibble Road. Um, that car hit another car that was coming through the intersection and then there was kind of a, a ricochet effect hitting that third car in that crash. So again, three cars hit. The good news is no one was hurt in all of this. And again, Highway Patrol says they don't believe that the weather had to do anything with this crash, but it's just a reminder to folks to continue to take it slow in this weather. Again, wet roads definitely a factor. And as that temperature continues to drop again, the possibility for freezing also another concern. But this is what some drivers had to tell us earlier about how they plan to keep a lookout. Take a look. They should just take it slow, keep it easy. Everybody stay safe, don't wreck, and uh, make sure you stay alive. And then again, back out here live, we were taking a look at the roads earlier, but this is what the side streets are looking like, or at least the ground, the sidewalks, that kind of thing. You can see a small layer of snow covering the area here. Um, again, luckily, no issues on the road, but we will continue to stay out here in the Union County area in Indian Trail and keep you guys updated on the conditions throughout the rest of this evening. Send it back to you guys. I'm Kendall Morris in Huntersville. Conditions here are continuing to change as snow continues to fall from the sky. This area is predicted to get about an inch to two inches of snow. You can see here on the ground in soft surfaces, snow is beginning to accumulate. But what we're really watching is the pavement here because you can see that the snow, when it falls to the ground, it is melting, which overnight will create hazardous conditions for drivers as this freezes over and has the potential for black ice. We'll send it back to you. Kendall, thank you. And with this winter weather, we are seeing a lot of school delays and even some closings tomorrow. Vanessa Rufus is in the newsroom with the list. Vanessa. Hi, Fred. Yeah, that closure list or delay list continues to grow as we go into the evening. Now we're now up to about 59 at last check on our website, WCNC.com. Just running through some of the school districts that are going to be impacted by this winter weather. We'll go ahead and show you on your screen right now the delays and the closures that we've got reported so far. So a two hour delay is reported for tomorrow. Rock Hill, Fort Mill, York County, Watauga, Ash County, Gaston County. We also have some three hour delays reported. Those 
those come from Lancaster, Caldwell County, Alexander County, Iredell Statesville, and Lincoln County. And then full closures reported at Avery County and Anson County Schools. And as I mentioned, a much fuller, more comprehensive list is available at our website, WCNC.com, including universities and agencies and even churches uh, throughout the viewing area. So go ahead and check that out. If you want to use a quick text uh, tool that will just send that list right to you, you can always text closing. So text the word closings to 704-329-3600, and that will go right to your phone. Uh, once again, text message, don't call. Guys, back to you. All right, that's going to come in handy for a lot of people. Indeed. And here is a live look at conditions in the Raleigh area tonight. They've seen a lot of snow this afternoon like we have. Let's get a check of what's happening out there right now. I'm WRAL's Aaron Thomas in Rocky Mount, where you can see snow continues to fall. You can see some of the snowfall accumulating here on the ground and some of these trees. Now we're in an interesting spot right now. We have several people who are staying inside some of these cozy tiny homes here on the campus of Rocky Mount Mills. I spoke with the tow truck driver who tells me he's hoping people stay inside and avoid being on the roads if possible. But these tow truck drivers are already ready to provide roadside assistance to those who need it as snow continues to fall. Back to you. Taking it out to Stanley County now. Snow coming down hard there. Just look at this. You can see the roads. Uh, temperatures drop. Going to have issues with that tonight. Those driving conditions will just worsen overnight into the morning commuting hours. WCNC Charlotte Savannah Levens live in Stanley County. Savannah, those wet roads really, as we've said over and over again, are going to be an issue. Yep, absolutely, Sarah, and why don't we just get right to it? I'll show you from our dash cam right now. And I can tell you the snow was coming down strong and thick. Those big uh, fat flakes coming down for a really long time. It just now in the past maybe 30 minutes seemed to taper off a little bit. You're seeing really light, tiny flakes now. But if you look to the side on the roadways there, you can see accumulation on the ground. I want to say a half to an inch, maybe even in some places. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe an inch to a half an inch in some places, but the good news is as far as the roads, not really seeing a lot of ice. So that's certainly a good thing. Checked and see any power outages. So that's good news as well. As far as schools, I know you were talking about cancellations and delays. Uh, Stanley County schools have announced a three hour delay for tomorrow. They said they're going to continue to monitor and could increase that potentially cancel altogether tomorrow if need be. Of course, all going to be dependent on whether these roads right here in front of you freeze overnight as temperatures drop. Guys, that's the latest from Stanley County. I'm Sabine Elevens, WCNC Charlotte. I'm Alex Shabbat at the NCDOT maintenance yard where wet snow has been coming down for the last several hours. NCDOT tells us they'll be sending 20 plow trucks out later tonight, but they're waiting till after the storm passes because they say it's just too wet right now to treat the roads. You can see a number of puddles down where I'm standing, which means the big threat is black ice. NCDOT will be closely monitoring the situation to determine when to treat those roads and prevent the black ice. Okay, Alex, thank you. Another spot we saw get hit with a lot of snow today was Bessemer City. We watched huge flakes fall there all evening long. WCNC Charlotte's Brandon Goldner has been in Gaston County all day long and joins us live tonight. So, Brandon, looks like the snow has stopped where you are. It was really coming down earlier tonight. It, it really was, and every family member that we've seen, a lot of them were so excited about all the snow coming down. It's gotten a lot quieter. We moved actually east, closer to Charlotte, in Gastonia right now. Gaston County Schools just in the last hour came out with the news that they will be delaying schools by about two hours just from the roadways and the reflection of the city lights on the roadways. That is going to be, of course, the issue that we keep on harping on when it comes to the issue of black ice and slick roads, even just when cars coming by through here. Speed limit or around here is around 20 25 miles per hour but just hearing the splashing of the roads and just how wet those roads are good news as well and it like medic Gaston County EMS says that they have not had any additional calls compared to what they normally receive people have been heating advice and slowing down according to them Gaston County schools of course also delay excuse me 
released students earlier today around 1 p.m. And so far from what we've heard there, it has been a smooth transition in that sense. The snow has mainly been hitting on terms of the grass, but not so much on the roadways, but still having those slick conditions. For now, we'll send it back over to you guys. Thank you, Brandon Golden reporting live and a live look now at the roads. That's where a lot of our focus is right now because the temperatures, as you've heard us talking about all along, they're going to drop as the night continues and anything that's wet right now will freeze over, making for a potentially icy drive. So let's send it over to Vanessa Rufus live in the newsroom. Vanessa, there are some things people can do behind the wheel to really stay safe tomorrow morning or if they have to get out tonight. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Sarah and Fred. We have some tips that we are seeing from troopers and automotive experts about how to drive in winter weather. So we'll run through just a few of those right now, uh, starting off with a little cautionary tale about cruise control and how, you know, sometimes folks like to put that and maybe they can save some gas. But really, it's not going to be very safe if you hit a pocket of ice. That could really help you or make you lose control of your vehicle uh, a lot worse. Uh, also, increase your following distance. Distance. And we know all about that. We hear all about that every time the visibility drops, but also just with uh, ice or snow or even just rain, we hear experts say to increase that following distance for six to 10 seconds. So that basically means the car in front of you passes a landmark. You're counting six to 10 seconds before you yourself are crossing that landmark as well. Uh, third, we have accelerate and brake slowly. So we're not doing any hard jamming on the brakes. We're not doing any big gassing of the pedal um, that's really going to help you get into a skid and then speaking of which god forbid you get into a skid but uh we have some tips for you if that does happen so first of all stay calm i know that's tough but try not to panic Try not to slam on that brake. That can make the situation worse. And then when you get into a rear wheel skid where you have the rear of your car moving either in one direction or the other, you're turning your steering wheel in the direction of the skid. So if your rear is going towards the left, you're turning your steering wheel gently towards the left. Biggest tip of all, though, if you don't have to drive, don't do it. Don't put yourself in that potential scenario. Guys, back to you. That's right. Just best to avoid that entire situation altogether. Vanessa, thank you. Right now, we want to get another check of the forecast, so let's send it over to Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich for the very latest. Hey, Brad. Yeah, we still have that winter weather advisory in effect, guys. This will likely be extended through tomorrow, even as the snow comes to an end. Remember, roads are going to be slick overnight, and we're going to see some slick spots. They are canceling some of the counties back to the west, so we're seeing a few out of there. We'll have to see if this gets extended past the midnight time frame for some of the these areas. The big story tonight obviously is going to be the temperature. Anything wet out there doesn't matter how much snow you got because if it freezes tonight, even the rain that fell today is going to cause some slick spots. There's the back edge of the snow just now moving east of Charlotte. I'm still seeing snow reports at the airport, so it's likely uh, there are some flurries lagging back in here. There's a little band right in here that isn't going to show up on radar. Light snow has a difficult time showing up on radar because the radar beam bounces off that fluffy snow and doesn't really show up on the radar. But you can see that batch of snow pushing off to the south and east back towards the west. We're starting to dry things out right now. The big story is how much snow is actually fallen and stuck. I mean, that's been kind of a tough thing to measure out there because this stuff's been melting so quickly. Aisha Scott's been pouring over some of those snowfall totals and has some of the reports we've seen so far, Aisha, and some of them more impressive than others, but most areas about well, an inch or so, right? Yeah, about an inch. Most areas about a half an inch. So let's take a look at the numbers here. So Banner Elk, actually the highest spot that I've seen thus far, and these are all preliminary. So these are not official totals. About two and a half inches. Lenore, about an inch of snow. Valdez, about a half of an inch, and then Rockwell well, about a half of an inch as well. So we haven't had a whole lot of snow. We wasn't even forecasting a whole lot of snow, but it was certainly pretty to see. And as Brad mentioned, it did a lot of it melted as it hit the surface. So we'll get some of those uh, official numbers, hopefully over the next several hours, and we'll bring those to you a little bit later on. Brad. Yeah, I'm kind of excited to see what the airport actually ends up with. I knew I do know they had officially measured at least a tenth of an inch, which is measurable snow. That will keep our streak alive of 142 years in a row of at least some snowfall. So kind of impressive to see us get that snow. So tonight we'll see what the refreeze looks like. It looks like between I would say 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. is when we're going to be dropping below freezing. And I really think sunrise is where we'll see the slick spots, because if you're out and about today or even this evening, driving's fine. Now tomorrow it's not going to be the same thing. So don't be deceived. The reason it's called black ice is because when we see that water on the road surface, it looks like it's wet, but it could be ice and it's very transparent. It's very thin, especially bridges and overpasses. I think that's where you're going to see DOT put a lot of their effort in 
over the next uh, 12 hours or so. A rapidly falling temperatures by morning really causes a quick refreeze of anything wet. And again, if you come across a bridge or an overpass, don't jerk the wheel, don't slam the brakes on. Vanessa was talking about this. Just let off the gas and coast directly straight over. Once you get to the other side, you can start applying the brake or slow down a little bit. So low temperatures overnight. I do expect some mid teens in the mountains, a low to mid 20s, and there's still a chance of a stray flurry till about two or three in the morning. Uh, a very cold start to so bundle up in the morning. I think we'll see a lot of delays because the delay is all you need. There's no reason to cancel plans tomorrow because if you can get to sunrise and get to about 9 a.m., we should be OK because I'll show you temperatures after that morning where we're down around 30 degrees. We will quickly climb up above freezing with the sunshine out. It'll do the work that salt can. So the DOT doesn't have to do much work tomorrow because Mother Nature will do most of it for them. Full sunshine all day with temperatures climbing back into the 40s. Here's a look at that seven day forecast and you could see some morning icy spots tomorrow with temperatures uh, down into the 20s and then by the afternoon we'll see those temperatures back into the 40s and then notice by Sunday it's back up to 60 degrees guys and that's a Springtime. snowstorm right? <laughs> you, you, you get snow and then a couple days later it's back near 60 and a lot of folks already asked me is this it? This is the last one? Mm. I would not bet against March. March 2nd by the way is the snowiest single calendar day of the entire year. And didn't we get a little that's snow last year in April? Uh, April 2nd. <laughs> So Remember I always tell people we got to get past St. Patrick's Day. To me, that's kind of the date. Once we get beyond that, the chances of snow go way down. But those first two weeks of March, okay. always very interesting. And the pattern does look cold, I will tell you. Uh -oh. All right, Brad, thank you very much. <laughs> Well, snow coming down in Charlotte, but that isn't stopping the Charlotte 49ers from having a little fun. The team just tweeting this video of people playing football in the snow. What could be better? Yeah, this is just one of many weather videos we've seen today. Vanessa Roof is taking a look at those. Vanessa, what do you see? Yeah, guys, we're getting some great viewer pictures and videos sent to us on social media. So we've collected a few. And yes, the 49ers football one was really great. But I love this drone action shot that we're getting here from Scott Brotherton. I wonder if Brad Panovich likes this drone action picture. Do you like this, Brad? <laughs> to fly my drone in the snow. <laughs> yeah, well, he was not. And he got a great neighborhood shot here showing multiple yards with a little bit of powdered sugar going on top. We've seen a lot of videos here with this really heavy snow that, that is just really accumulating in like front yards. We're seeing them on patios. So here from Pam snowing in Youngsville. Love that. We also have some slow motion action like this one coming from Salisbury. So that's from Anthony Johnson. Thank you so much, Anthony. And we see some pretty good accumulation here on the rooftops and the lawns. This is Harrisburg coming to us from Michael Keir. So thank you, Michael, for sending this video to us. Uh, Karen tweeted this at me. So thank you out of York. Pretty good snowfall you guys got in that area. And I love this one mostly because of the beard. But Craig here says conditions in the high country, not the best snow, but the best so far this winter. I love that. That is a great shot. And then not the best picture, but yes, something that we're contending with. We talked with uh, Charlotte Douglas, you know, they're dealing with some delays and you could see they are busy de-icing those planes there. Uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway showing it coming down on the speedway. And yes, some fun stuff that we're getting. Olaf loving his life on our back porch. Wesley Chapel, Jennifer Weitzel here. Do you want to build a snowman? Yes, we do. There it is. First snowman of 2020 from Monroe, North Carolina, coming from Valerie. I know not a lot of accumulation to build a real one, but we can do the best we can. And then I like this one, a little snowbird out of Indian Trail. And speaking of the animals, we did send this out on social media. We want to see your pictures here of your pets in the snow. This is just so fun just because we can. Let's go ahead and go through some of the great ones we've got here. A little kitty and, and her friend. We've got a little snow covered doggy. We've got the whole gang's here. And then finally, that's my dog, Mr. Mojo, getting his favorite thing, which is snow. So it's his first snow in Charlotte. All right. Go, Mr. I Mojo. I love it, Vanessa. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, we're also seeing some problems, though, popping up at the airport, of course, because of all this winter weather. Let's check in now with Lexi Wilson at Charlotte Douglas to find out what's going on there tonight. 
Definitely some travel trouble here. I just checked the monitors and there are several delays as well as cancellations. According to FlightAware.com, Charlotte has around 40 delays and 35 cancellations. The airport is currently monitoring the weather and is prepared to implement winter weather operations if and when needed. Here's video of the Charlotte Douglas International Airport spraying a de-icing fluid on an aircraft. It helps remove ice and snow. Here's what one traveler had to say about the winter weather. Flying out at 6.30, my flight's still on time, flying United, but I mean, you never know what the weather. I was here a few weeks ago for the tornado. And officials say please check your flight status with the airline or on their website, cltairport.com. You can also download their mobile app. Reporting at the Charlotte Douglas International Airport, I'm Lexi Wilson for WCNC Charlotte. Lexi, thank you. Taking it back out to Stanley County. Snow was coming down hard earlier today. WCNC Charlotte Savannah Levins live in Stanley County. Savannah, those wet roads, we've been talking about it all night. Going to be an issue tonight, really into tomorrow morning as well. Yeah, absolutely. The snow's been coming down for a long time. Let me just flip over our camera here, show you from our dash cam. Look at all that snow. I want to say maybe an inch at this point from all the snow that's been coming down all day. It's just now tapered off a little bit. You can probably see on your screen there it's coming down in smaller flakes and a little lighter compared to what we've been seeing since about 4 p.m. So the last four hours have been those big fluffy flakes, consistent downfall now tapering off a little bit but yeah check out those roads soaked stanley county schools announcing a three hour delay tomorrow just because of the anticipation of all the water you're seeing on the roads now freezing overnight as temperatures dip they said they're going to be monitoring the situation so of course stick with us wcnc charlotte tonight at 11 and in the morning we're going to be monitoring these conditions and bringing you updates on the schools situations as well for now that's the update from stanley county and Albemarle. savannah levins wcnc charlotte all right, Savannah, thank you. And I'm pretty sure that people, the school systems at least, those that haven't made their announcements are watching the road conditions and what that looks like in the morning very closely. Yeah, and I think the earlier you start, probably the rougher the conditions will be because mm -hmm. right around sunrise looks icy. The winter weather advisories, in fact, I'll be watching temperatures all night. We're kind of done kind of watching the radar because the snow is pretty much moving out. So it's all about watching that thermometer and just to show you that the snow is exiting. But here's a cool thing. We have just reported snow here at the station and it made it into the official report oh, look there. Uh, half an inch here at WC. <laughs> and see right. Charlotte measure that out on the, uh, on the, the cars out there. Yeah, so, <laughs> and that's close to the airport. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see what the official report will be at the airport, but yeah. um, I know this, a lot of folks wanted to see a lot more snow, but this was kind of in the range we expected. Right. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, we got a little excited because it was our first yeah. legitimate it's snow. It's not a major disruptor, yeah. at least not at this point. No, you know, and here's the thing remember, we average 4.3 inches of snow per winter, so something like this is absolutely normal. And we could have <laughs> some, you said, still more in March, possibly even April. Yeah, I think like I said earlier in the winter, I said us not getting any snow is more abnormal than us getting, yeah. snow. getting snow. Just be careful tonight and in the morning, you said, yeah. especially the bridges, the overpasses. Yeah, because you could be driving fine and that's the thing. You, you, you get up to full speed and you don't realize you get to a bridge and if you suddenly jerk the wheel or yeah. something, that's where we have issues. I've seen yeah. that happen with freezing fog and other situations. People drive full speed and then you get to a bridge and it's like, they lose yeah. control. I know. I was just going over that with Fred. I was like, okay, so if my <laughs> that go this way, I turn into in, it, right? Yeah. He's like, yes, yeah. you just, just want to ease off gently. Of the gas. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah, that's the thing. Don't make any sudden movements with the gas, the, the brake, or the steering wheel. Yeah. All right. All right, thank, thank you. you. That's going to do it for this special online edition of WCNC Charlotte. We will be back on air on your TV at 11 with a full forecast and everything you need to know as the conditions expected to get worse over falls in the Carolinas.
Halls in the Carolinas for the special online edition of WCNC Charlotte. From Blowing Rock to Bessemer City, Salisbury to Charlotte, we are seeing snowflakes flying. Our first Warren Storm team has been telling us for days about this snow when it finally hit. Thanks for staying with us, everybody. I'm Sarah French. And I'm Fred Shropshire. We have a lot of school closings and delays coming in right now. They are scrolling at the bottom of your screen. We'll get a check of some of the big ones in just a minute. First, though, let's take a look at the first Warren Doppler radar. You can see the system blanketing the Carolinas and this snow rain sleet mix is going to continue well into the night. A winter weather advisory remains in effect until tomorrow morning and tomorrow going into work is going to be where we see the toughest problems. And that's because everything that's falling right now, whether it's rain or snow, will freeze, making for a potentially icy drive into work tomorrow morning. Tonight, WCNC Charlotte has live first warm team weather coverage to make sure you're prepared from current conditions on the roads to how road crews are prepping for overnight ice. We have every angle covered, but we want to start in the first warm storm center where Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich has your minute by minute forecast. Brad. <clears throat> yeah, we're still seeing some rain out there right now, guys, but mixing with a lot of snow to the south, mainly snow in many areas like Rock Hill, Fort Mill, TKK, around the Charlotte area. The temperatures are the key part tonight. We're going to watch these temperatures, see how quickly they can fall back, and if they get below freezing, we'll start to have some issues. 33 in Hickory, 32 in Salisbury, 34 currently in Concord, 34 in Charlotte, uh, 35 as you go over towards areas down in Chester County. Now, the snow technically still falling. The radar isn't picking it up, but we're still reporting snow at the airport, Concord, Lincolnton, Gastonia, as well as Rock Hill. But the bulk of the snow starting to shift off to the east in areas Union County, uh, down into Anson, Stanley, Richmond County. We're even seeing trace amounts of snow in Chesterfield County, areas like Pageland over towards Lancaster, where we're seeing some snow falling and even down almost to Columbia, South Carolina. We're starting to see some snowflakes down there. That rain snow line becomes a little more pronounced down towards Wilmington. The real heavy snow from this event is going to be here east of I-95. This is where we're going to see the winter storm warnings, and that's where we could see maybe three, four, five inches of snow. Most areas to our east are going to see about one to two. So far in our area, generally a trace to up to an inch on the grassy surfaces. We're getting some renewed snow shower activity around the Statesville area along interstate 40 and until this wave completely passes over us, we're likely going to see some flakes at least flying for the next couple of hours. Back to the west, there are still some snow showers in eastern Tennessee. Those are sliding into the mountains, but as we go through the next couple of hours, I expect most of this stuff will start to fall apart and weaken. Here's 8 o'clock. We'll go all the way through about 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Everything starts to shift off to the east, and that's when things will start to kind of calm down. Then We'll watch the temperatures. We'll still be above freezing for several hours, so really no issues on the roads until late, late tonight, well after midnight and into the early morning hours tomorrow when temperatures will likely fall down below the freezing mark. And that's really going to be the situation we'll watch for those early morning hours and likely what's going to cause a lot of delays. Meteorologist Aisha Scott is over in the Weather Center, and Aisha, those cold temperatures in the morning will be a big part of the problem. Oh, yeah, you'll have to watch for that black ice <coughs> threat early tomorrow morning as well. So if you're heading out, just a heads up, you'll want to use extra caution on the roads. One other thing I do want to mention, because I went outside to see some of the snowflakes as well, and it is cold. I knew it was cold out there, but the feel-like temperatures have dropped into the 20s and really have been in the 20s all evening. So as we go through the rest of tonight, right around midnight, air temperatures will fall as well. But just keep in mind those feel-like temperatures down into the 20s overnight tonight, along with those air temperatures temperatures as well. So we'll talk more about the black ice threat for your Friday coming up in just a few minutes. Sarah. Aisha, thank you. The snow still falling tonight. Thanks, Aisha. Yeah, we're still tracking that low on the coast, which is a big part of the system. And this low is what's going to move away over the next couple of hours and we'll see high pressure build in. So the thing is, if you're worried about the road conditions in the morning, if you can just wait until the sun comes up, I think things will be completely fine after sunrise tomorrow. It's a very narrow window where we're going to have icy roads tonight. Most of that is going to be between about 4 a.m. and about 9 a.m. As we go through the weekend, it actually warms all the way back up maybe even close to 60 degrees by the time we get to Sunday. And that's the day we'll see all that melting going on and there'll be nothing left out there across the area. So guys, we'll we keep an eye on those temperatures tonight and that really is going to be the key right now. As Aisha mentioned, I was outside. There's really no issues on the roads at all right now. They're just wet. It's essentially been like a cold rain out there on the road surfaces.
All right, Brad, thank you. And the snow is still falling tonight as the sun has set, which means all the rain and snow that fell today will start freezing as the night goes on. Let's check in now live with our Hunter Signs, who's been in the Chevy Storm Tracker all evening. Hunter, what are you seeing out there tonight? Yeah, Fred and Sarah, the snow has stopped for the most part here, um, although we have seen a couple of flakes, but it's nothing compared to what we saw earlier. We are on 85 South uh, from Charlotte heading towards uh, Gaston County. I do want to let you know, though, uh, this weather has proved dangerous in, in some aspect because we've had just tonight three people, uh, pedestrians, hit by cars during that snowfall um, earlier this afternoon. Um, thankfully, though, uh, the amount of calls that Medic has received since midnight is only at 51. They tweeted at me moments ago saying, thankfully, people heeded the warnings and slowed down. So that's always good news, although it's 51, too many, but it could have been worse, according to them. Um, back to those three pedestrians who were hit, one of them over on Independence in the east side of town, that person was rushed to the emergency room with uh, serious injuries. The other two were not life threatening. Uh, one of them happening over off of North Sharon Amity Road and Milton Road and the other one on South Tryon. Of course, we don't know if weather was a factor in all three of them, but like I said, when they happened, the snow was coming down and driving out here in it, it didn't take much to start coming at your windshield and you're trying to get those wipers going to wipe it off, of course, and then add traffic and people slowing down on their brakes during the afternoon commute. Um, some may be able to assume that the weather could have been a factor, but no confirmation there. Thankfully, though, it sounds too, like two of them are going to be okay. We are still trying to check in to get um, the condition of that person who was hit by a vehicle during the snow um, over on the east side of town. Um, but the good news, like I said, only 51 calls um, that medic received with traffic accidents. People are definitely taking it slow out here. Um, hopefully they will continue to do so as the night continues because as you said the temperatures are already falling it is chilly outside we just got back into the vehicle after going out to a, grab a quick bite to eat during all of this coverage but we came back in here it is cold out there and as brad and aisha have mentioned the big part of this is these wet roads could sh certainly freeze uh, going into the overnight hours so if you have to be out please take it slow otherwise just stay bundled up inside back to you our team coverage continues tonight now in Rowan County. WCNC Charlotte's Chloe Leshner spent the day in Salisbury and shows us what it looked like there this evening. I'm Chloe Leshner in Salisbury where the snow has accumulated here on the grass and on some cars passing by, but it is not sticking to the streets yet at this point. First responders are expecting a few more accidents than normal, which is why crews have been out pre treating the bridges and there will be extra police patrols. The main concern really is the black ice that we will see tonight into tomorrow morning. First responders asking people to take it slow out on the roads. Chloe, thank you. Our team coverage continues in Union County. Snow coming down now, making for dangerous road conditions there. Stallings Fire Department tweeting out a photo of an accident on Indian Trail Road. Traffic now down to one lane. I think we have an image of that. WCNC Charlotte's Brianna Harper live on scene. Brianna, what's the latest? Well, Sarah, just within the last maybe 10 or 15 minutes, that crash wrapped up. But this was at the intersection where all this happened. If you take a look behind me, you can see the roads here are still wet. But um, Highway Patrol isn't saying whether or not weather paid a factor in this. But I want you guys to take a look at what that scene was looking like when we first arrived here earlier this afternoon. Highway Patrol tells us there were three cars involved in this crash. It appears one car actually ran through the two-way stop sign here at the intersection of Indian Trail Road and Gibble Road. Um, that car hit another car that was coming through the intersection and then there was kind of a, a ricochet effect hitting a third car in that crash so again three cars hit the good news is no one was hurt in all of this and again highway patrol says they don't believe that the weather had to do anything with this crash but it's just a reminder to folks to continue to take it slow in this weather again wet roads definitely a factor and as that temperature continues to drop again the possibility for freezing also another concern but this is what some drivers had to tell us earlier about how they plan to keep a lookout Take a look. They should just take it slow, keep it easy. Everybody stay safe, don't wreck, and uh, make sure you stay alive. 
and then again back out here live. We were taking a look at the rolls earlier, but this is what the side streets are looking like, or at least the ground, the sidewalks, that kind of thing. You can see a small layer of snow covering the area here. Um, again, luckily no issues on the road, but we will continue to stay out here in the Union County area in Indian Trail and keep you guys updated on the conditions throughout the rest of this evening. Send it back to you guys. I'm Kendall Morris in Huntersville. Conditions here are continuing to change as snow continues to fall from the sky. This area is predicted to get about an inch to two inches of snow. You can see here on the ground in soft surfaces, snow is beginning to accumulate. But what we're really watching is the pavement here because you can see that the snow, when it falls to the ground, it is melting, which overnight will create hazardous conditions for drivers as this freezes over and has the potential for black ice. We'll send it back to you. Kendall, thank you. And with this winter weather, we are seeing a lot of school delays and even some closings tomorrow. Vanessa Rufus is in the newsroom with the list. Vanessa. Hi, Fred. Yeah, that closure list or delay list continues to grow as we go into the evening. Now we're now up to about 59 at last check on our website, WCNC.com. Just running through some of the school districts that are going to be impacted by this winter weather. We'll go ahead and show you on your screen right now the delays and the closures that we've got reported so far. So a two hour delay is reported for tomorrow. Rock Hill, Fort Mill, York County, Watauga, Ash County, Gaston County. We also have some three hour delays reported. Those come from Lancaster, Caldwell County, Alexander County, Iredell Statesville, and Lincoln County, and then full closures reported at Avery County and Anson County Schools. And as I mentioned, a much fuller, more comprehensive list is available at our website, WCNC.com, including universities and agencies and even churches uh, throughout the viewing area. So go ahead and check that out. If you want to use a quick text uh, tool that will just send that list right to you, you can always text closing, so text the word closing, to 704-329-3600, and that will go right to your phone. Uh, once again, text message, don't call. Guys, back to you. All right, that's going to come in handy for a lot of people. Indeed. And here's a live look at conditions in the Raleigh area tonight. They've seen a lot of snow this afternoon like we have. Let's get a check of what's happening out there right now. I'm WRAL's Aaron Thomas in Rocky Mount, where you can see snow continues to fall. You can see some of the snowfall accumulating here on the ground and some of these trees. Now we're in an interesting spot right now. We have several people who are staying inside some of these cozy tiny homes here on the campus of Rocky Mount Mills. I spoke with the tow truck driver who tells me he's hoping people stay inside and avoid being on the roads if possible. But these tow truck drivers are already ready to provide roadside assistance to those who need it as snow continues to fall. Back to you. Taking it out to Stanley County now. Snow coming down hard there. Just look at this. You can see the roads. Uh, temperatures drop. Going to have issues with that tonight. Those driving conditions will just worsen overnight into the morning commuting hours. WCNC Charlotte Savannah Levins live in Stanley County. Savannah, those wet roads really, as we've said over and over again, are going to be an issue. Yep, absolutely, Sarah, and why don't we just get right to it? I'll show you from our dash cam right now. Now I can tell you the snow was coming down strong and thick. Those big uh, fat flakes coming down for a really long time. It just now in the past maybe 30 minutes seemed to taper off a little bit. You're seeing really light, tiny flakes now, but if you look to the side on the roadways there, you can see accumulation on the ground. I want to say a half to an inch, maybe even in some places. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe an inch to a half an inch in some places, but the good news is as far as the roads, not really seeing a lot of ice. So that's certainly a good thing. Check didn't see any power outages, so that's good news as well. As far as schools, I know you were talking about cancellations and delays. Uh, Stanley County schools have announced a three hour delay for tomorrow. They said they're going to continue to monitor and could increase that potentially cancel altogether tomorrow if need be. Of course, all going to be dependent on whether these roads right here in front of you freeze overnight as temperatures drop. Guys, that's the latest from Stanley County. I'm Sabine Levins, WCNC Charlotte. Hey everybody, uh, First Warden Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich talking about our weather tonight and 
we don't have the graphics in there. So bear with me one second. I'm actually going to throw up here the radar, but I got to put the radar back into my monitor. So give me one second as I go do that. One second, I'm actually going to throw. All right, I am back. I totally forgot that we did that. So um, <laughs> real quickly, the snow is moving out. Um, I can't announce to you as well, if you didn't see our push notification, um, CMS has canceled all classes tomorrow, which I'm actually somewhat shocked. Um, I'll read you the statement. Uh, CMS Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools will be closed on Friday. See a full list of details on our website. So I got that push notification on our app. So I'm a little shocked. The reason I say that is because um, I don't think a closing is, a, is really warranted tomorrow, but a delay. But here's the thing about school closings. And this is why I hate talking about them sometimes because there's other factors that go into this other than just the weather. Because for a lot of reasons that you may not even know, uh, a delay might be a logistical nightmare for busing and for other things. And so sometimes it's just easier to cancel altogether. So my guess is something like that happened more so than weather related. That's why I always hate speculating on these things because oftentimes these decisions go way beyond just the weather. It's, there's all kinds of ex extenuating circumstances. Same thing with flights. Sometimes people ask me about flights being canceled and I'm like, I honestly have no idea. Sometimes the weather is the least of your worries because the airlines want to move flights to certain airports and don't want to get stuck. So they'll just preemptively cancel flights. So that's my two cents on that. I mean, it's kind of a tough, tough call sometimes. So here's a look at what's going on tonight. Um, we've got the winter weather advisory for some counties till midnight, other counties expiring. The snow is moving out. So I showed you the radar real quickly here. Um, and you can see where the snow is right now. It's kind of almost done for most of us. There's still some flurries down here. We just got a, a almost a half inch report out of uh, Jefferson down in South Carolina. And we got a four inch snowfall amount from up in here. And I just got a 2.8, almost three inches in Troy. So there's a couple hot spots out there, officially in Charlotte, depending on where you are in the county, anywhere from a quarter to a half an inch. Um, I haven't seen any one inch amounts in Mecklenburg County, but most, mostly a quarter to a half an inch, just enough uh, to be measurable. Um, most part, I'm actually pretty happy with the forecast all in here. That one to two inch in here probably is not gonna verify very well, except for out here where we had that. And I'll show you, um, I was showing someone earlier. This was my forecast. So this is the one I, I was stuck with uh, this morning and I kind of stuck to my guns, I should say. And um, some of this did not verify very well, the one to two, but over in here, we did pretty well. And really all of this did really well. So um, the only part that didn't, didn't really verify is gonna be this area just, uh, just south of I-40 I there. So I'm gonna put, we're putting together a snowfall map right now. Um, and as, as I speak, um, Aisha Scott's over there looking up some totals and I'm starting to look at uh, some of the reports around here. So I think this area right in here is the one area we had a pretty significant miss. Though, if you remember my map from earlier, I had trace of half an inch was our bus potential. And we certainly got probably trace to an inch. So we kind of were on the lower end of our, of our, of our prob probabilistic forecast. One to two actually worked out pretty well over in this area, but not so much in Salisbury and Concord. But most areas of trace to an inch kind of worked out almost perfectly and was kind of a non-event on the roads, which I expected. Now, speaking of the roads, um, this is the thing that I'm a little, about tomorrow that's a little interesting is, temperatures up in here certainly are gonna be below freezing here shortly. So roads along Interstate 40, bridges and overpasses will ice up pretty quickly. But honestly, in the Charlotte area, the roads are completely fine. I mean, there is zero issues on the roads other than being wet right now. So if you can drive in the rain, you're fine until probably three or four in the morning when temperatures get close to freezing. And even then, the main roads are going to be fine, just the bridges and overpasses and some of the side streets. So, um, you know, me personally, I don't think roads are going to be that big of a deal, but it seems like every year you just a little bit of ice freaks people out. So 
Uh, in the grand scheme of things, if you're worried at all, just don't go out. I mean, that's just that's just the thing I, I tell people. Those bridges and overpasses, obviously, we worry about this happening. You know, we get that air flowing around the um, the road, and so the bridges can be a little slick. And again, that would be what we'd expect tomorrow. So here's the uh, hourly forecast through tonight, just to show you how temperatures kind of bounce around a little bit. I expect them to hover around 33, 34 most of the night. And as skies clear out right before sunrise, that's when we see probably a pretty quick freeze up. And that's where you'll see the biggest potential um, for some slick, slick spots on the road. So these are my low temperatures tonight, just to give you an idea of the overall temperatures uh, in the mid to upper 20s. So anything that's wet out there likely will ice up pretty quickly um, on the bridges mainly. The roads, uh, the main roads are probably fine because most of the, the ground is about 48, 47 degrees. So the main roads should be pretty good and DOT is gonna be out spraying salt. So when temperatures are close to 30, 31, 32, just the, just the traffic going over the, the road keeps things kind of wet. Once you get around 28 or lower, that's where you get a little dicey. So um, some of these areas up in here from Morganton, Hickory, Newton, Conover, Lincolnton, Statesville, Salisbury, I don't care how much snow you got, whether you're disappointed in it, doesn't matter. It was wet, okay? And ice doesn't care either. So these are gonna be some slick spots up in here. So just be really careful on the bridges, especially up here. Down to the south, you're probably gonna have less of an issue, but uh, most school districts will be over overtly cautious and overly cautious and they will have delays tomorrow. I think you're gonna see a lot of delays um, unless there's a logistical thing like CMS and you just cancel the whole day. If you can wait till nine o'clock, temperature should be up, the sun will be up, everything should be just about fine. So um, if you can just wait it out in the morning a couple hours, that's really it. And then the weekend, we've got sunshine and beautiful conditions. So tonight at 11, we'll have some uh, totals. I'm gonna work on a map of what actually fell versus what we forecast. And then um, we have reports from all over the area. We'll show you some of the places that got a little bit more snow than us, um, what it looks like on the roadways out there so you can kind of plan your Friday morning. But um, this little snow event, Kind of, kind of not much, and then kind of what we expected. Um, I, I know a lot of people would love to get more snow, but a trace to an inch and then one to two inches isn't a big deal. That's an average snowstorm around here. We're still way behind average for snowfall. 4.3 inches is our average snowfall for the year. So we still have time to get snow, believe it or not. Usually through the middle of March, you can still get snow. And last year we had snow on April 2nd. Not that I think we're gonna see snow on April 2nd, but uh, the first two week, weeks of March are typically um, still pretty snowy around here. In fact, the snowiest day, calendar day, statistically, is March 2nd in Charlotte. More snow has fallen on that date than any other day of the year. So just to have that in the back of your mind, uh, something to keep in mind as we go towards March. So coming up tonight at 11, we'll have reports from there. And of course, we'll have all the list of closures and delays running at the bottom of our screen. If you don't want to um, look down there, you can always go to our website, go to our app. We'll have them listed there as well. If you didn't get a push notification, um, and again, we'd love to have uh, your reports as well. If you got any pictures, especially measurements, um, I love to pass them along. Hopefully you measured while it was on the ground and before it melted, you gotta measure it before it melts. Um, if it's on there long enough to see it, you can measure it. It counts as snowfall, whether it melts in an hour, half hour, 45 minutes, whatever. Um, have a great night, everybody. I'll see you tonight at 11, uh, right here on WCN. in the Carolinas for the special online edition of WCNC Charlotte. From Blowing Rock to Bessemer City, Salisbury to Charlotte, we are seeing snowflakes flying. Our first Warren Storm team has been telling us for days about this snow when it finally hit. Thanks for staying with us, everybody. I'm Sarah French. And I'm Fred Shropshire. We have a lot of school closings and delays coming in right now. They are scrolling at the bottom of your screen. We'll get a check of some of the big ones in just a minute. First, though, let's take a look at the first Warren Doppler radar. You can see the system blanketing the Carolinas and this snow rain sleet mix is going to continue well into the night. A winter weather advisory remains in effect until tomorrow morning 
and tomorrow going into work is going to be where we see the toughest problems. And that's because everything that's falling right now, whether it's rain or snow, will freeze, making for a potentially icy drive into work tomorrow morning. Tonight, WCNC Charlotte has live first warm team weather coverage to make sure you're prepared from current conditions on the roads to how road crews are prepping for overnight ice. We have every angle covered, but we want to start in the first warm storm center where Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich has your minute by minute forecast. Brad. <clears throat> yeah, we're still seeing some rain out there right now, guys, but mixing with a lot of snow to the south, mainly snow in many areas like Rock Hill, Fort Mill, Tiki K, around the Charlotte area. The temperatures are the key part tonight. We're going to watch these temperatures, see how quickly they can fall back, and if they get below freezing, we'll start to have some issues. 33 in Hickory, 32 in Salisbury, 34 currently in Concord, 34 in Charlotte, uh, 35 as you go over towards areas down in Chester County. Now, the snow technically still falling. The radar isn't picking it up, but we're still reporting snow at the airport, Concord, Lincolnton, Gastonia, as well as Rock Hill, but the bulk of the snow is starting to shift off to the east in areas Union County, uh, down into Anson, Stanley, Richmond County. We're even seeing trace amounts of snow in Chesterfield County, areas like Pageland over towards Lancaster, where we're seeing some snow falling and even down almost to Columbia, South Carolina. We're starting to see some snowflakes down there. That rain snow line becomes a little more pronounced down towards Wilmington. The real heavy snow from this event is going to be here east of I-95. This is where we're going to see the winter storm warnings, and that's where we could see maybe three, four, five inches of snow. Most areas to our east are going to see about one to two. So far in our area, generally a trace to up to an inch on the grassy surfaces. We're getting some renewed snow shower activity around the Statesville area along Interstate 40 and until this wave completely passes over us, we're likely going to see some flakes at least flying for the next couple of hours. Back to the west, there are still some snow showers in eastern Tennessee. Those are sliding into the mountains, but as we go through the next couple of hours, I expect most of this stuff will start to fall apart and weaken. Here's 8 o'clock. We'll go all the way through about 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Everything starts to shift off to the east, and that's when things will start to kind of calm down. Then We'll watch the temperatures. We'll still be above freezing for several hours, so really no issues on the roads until late, late tonight, well after midnight and into the early morning hours tomorrow when temperatures will likely fall down below the freezing mark. And that's really going to be the situation we'll watch for those early morning hours and likely what's going to cause a lot of delays. Meteorologist Aisha Scott is over in the Weather Center, and Aisha, those cold temperatures in the morning will be a big part of the problem. Oh yeah, you'll have to watch for that black <coughs> ice threat early tomorrow morning as well. So if you're heading out, just a heads up, you'll want to use extra caution on the roads. One other thing I do want to mention because I went outside to see some of the snowflakes as well, and it is cold. I knew it was cold out there, but the feel like temperatures have dropped into the 20s and really have been in the 20s all evening. So as we go through the rest of tonight, right around midnight, air temperatures will fall as well. But just keep in mind those feel like temperatures down into the 20s overnight tonight, along with those air temperatures as well. So we'll talk more about the black ice threat for your Friday coming up in just a few minutes. Sarah. Aisha, thank you. The snow still falling tonight. Thanks, Aisha. Yeah, we're still tracking that low on the coast, which is a big part of the system, and this low is what's going to move away over the next couple of hours, and we'll see high pressure build in. So the thing is, if you're worried about the road conditions in the morning, if you can just wait until the sun comes up, I think things will be completely fine after sunrise tomorrow. It's a very narrow window where we're going to have icy roads tonight. Most of that is going to be between about 4 a.m. and about 9 a.m. As we go through the weekend, it actually warms all the way back up maybe even close to 60 degrees by the time we get to Sunday. And that's the day we'll see all that melting going on and there'll be nothing left out there across the area. So guys, we'll we keep an eye on those temperatures tonight. And that really is going to be the key right now. As Aisha mentioned, I was outside. There's really no issues on the roads at all right now. They're just wet. It's essentially been like a cold rain out there on the road surfaces. All right, Brad, thank you. And the snow is still falling tonight as the sun has set, which means all the rain and snow that fell today will start freezing as the night goes on. Let's check in now live with our Hunter Signs, who's been in the Chevy Storm Tracker all evening. Hunter, what are you seeing? Yeah, Fred and Sarah, the snow has stopped for the most part here, um, although we have seen a couple of flakes, but it's nothing compared to what we saw earlier. We are on 85 South uh, from Charlotte heading towards uh, Gaston County. I do want to let you know, though, uh, this weather has proved dangerous in, in some aspect because we've had just tonight three people, uh, pedestrians, hit by cars during that snowfall um, earlier this afternoon. 
afternoon. Um, thankfully, though, uh, the amount of calls that Medic has received since midnight is only at 51. They tweeted at me moments ago saying, thankfully, people heeded the warnings and slowed down. So that's always good news, although it's 51, too many, but it could have been worse, according to them. Um, back to those three pedestrians who were hit, one of them over on Independence in the east side of town, that person was rushed to the emergency room with uh, serious injuries. The other two were not life-threatening, uh, one of them happening over off of North Sharon Amity Road and Milton Road, and the other one on South Tryon. Of course, we don't know if weather was a factor in all three of them, but like I said, when they happened, the snow was coming down, and driving out here in it, it didn't take much to start coming at your windshield and you're trying to get those wipers going to wipe it off, of course, and then add traffic and people slowing down on their brakes during the afternoon commute. Um, some may be able to assume that the weather could have been a factor, but no confirmation there. Thankfully, though, it sounds two, like two of them are going to be okay. We are still trying to check in to get um, the condition of that person who was hit by a vehicle during the snow um, over on the east side of town. Town. Um, but the good news, like I said, only 51 calls um, that medic received with traffic accidents. People are definitely taking it slow out here. Um, hopefully they will continue to do so as the night continues because as you said, the temperatures are already falling. It is chilly outside. We just got back into the vehicle after going out to a, grab a quick bite to eat during all of this coverage, but we came back in here. It is cold out there. And as Brad and Aisha have mentioned, the big part of this is these wet roads could sh certainly freeze uh, going into the overnight hours. So if you have to be out, please take it slow. Otherwise, just stay bundled up inside. Back to you. Our team coverage continues tonight now in Rowan County. WCNC Charlotte's Chloe Leshner spent the day in Salisbury and shows us what it looked like there this evening. I'm Chloe Leshner in Salisbury, where the snow has accumulated here on the grass and on some cars passing by, but it is not sticking to the streets yet. At this point, first responders are expecting a few more accidents than normal, which is why crews have been out pre treating the bridges and there will be extra police patrols. The main concern really is the black ice that we will see tonight into tomorrow morning. First responders asking people to take it slow out on the roads. Chloe, thank you. Our team coverage continues in Union County. Snow coming down now, making for dangerous road conditions there. Stallings Fire Department tweeting out a photo of an accident on Indian Trail Road traffic now down to one lane. I think we have an image of that. WCNC Charlotte's Brianna Harper live on scene. Brianna, what's the latest? Well, Sarah, just within the last maybe 10 or 15 minutes, that crash wrapped up. But this was at the intersection where all this happened. If you take a look behind me, you can see the roads here are still wet. But um, Highway Patrol isn't saying whether or not weather paid a factor in this. But I want you guys to take a look at what that scene was looking like when we first arrived here earlier this afternoon. Highway Patrol tells us there were three cars involved in this crash. It appears one car actually ran through the two-way stop sign here at the intersection of Indian Trail Road and Gibble Road. Um, that car hit another car that was coming through the intersection and then there was kind of a, a ricochet effect hitting that third car in that crash. So again, three cars hit. The good news is no one was hurt in all of this. And again, Highway Patrol says they don't believe that the weather had to do anything with this crash, but it's just a reminder to folks to continue to take it slow in this weather. Again, wet roads definitely a factor. And as that temperature continues to drop again, the possibility for freezing also another concern. But this is what some drivers had to tell us earlier about how they plan to keep a lookout. Take a look. They should just take it slow, keep it easy. Everybody stay safe, don't wreck, and uh, make sure you stay alive. And then again, back out here live, we were taking a look at the roads earlier, but this is what the side streets are looking like, or at least the ground, the sidewalks, that kind of thing. You can see a small layer of snow covering the area here. Um, again, luckily, no issues on the road, but we will continue to stay out here in the Union County area and Indian Trail and keep you guys updated on the conditions throughout the rest of this evening. Send it back to you guys.
I'm Kendall Morris in Huntersville. Conditions here are continuing to change as snow continues to fall from the sky. This area is predicted to get about an inch to two inches of snow. You can see here on the ground in soft surfaces, snow is beginning to accumulate. But what we're really watching is the pavement here because you can see that the snow, when it falls to the ground, it is melting, which overnight will create hazardous conditions for drivers as this freezes over and has the potential for black ice. We'll send it back to you. Kendall, thank you. And with this winter weather, we are seeing a lot of school delays and even some closings tomorrow. Vanessa Rufus is in the newsroom with the list. Vanessa. Hi, Fred. Yeah, that closure list or delay list continues to grow as we go into the evening. Now we're now up to about 59 at last check on our website, WCNC.com. Just running through some of the school districts that are going to be impacted by this winter weather. We'll go ahead and show you on your screen right now the delays and the closures that we've got reported so far. So a two hour delay is reported for tomorrow. Rock Hill, Fort Mill, York County, Watauga, Ash County, Gaston County. We also have some three hour delays reported. Those come from Lancaster, Caldwell County, Alexander County, Iredell Statesville, and Lincoln County, and then full closures reported at Avery County and Anson County Schools. And as I mentioned, a much fuller, more comprehensive list is available at our website, WCNC.com, including universities and agencies and even churches uh, throughout the viewing area. So go ahead and check that out. If you want to use a quick text uh, tool that will just send that list right to you, you can always text closing, so text the word closing to 704-329-3600 and that will go right to your phone. Uh, once again, text message, don't call. Guys, back to you. All right, that's going to come in handy for a lot of people. Indeed. And here is a live look at conditions in the Raleigh area tonight. They've seen a lot of snow this afternoon like we have. Let's get a check of what's happening out there right now. I'm WRAL's Aaron Thomas in Rocky Mount, where you can see snow continues to fall. You can see some of the snowfall accumulating here on the ground and some of these trees. Now we're in an interesting spot right now. We have several people who are staying inside some of these cozy tiny homes here on the campus of Rocky Mount Mills. I spoke with the tow truck driver who tells me he's hoping people stay inside and avoid being on the roads if possible. But these tow truck drivers are already ready to provide roadside assistance to those who need it as snow continues to fall. Back to you. Taking it out to Stanley County now. Snow coming down hard there. Just look at this. You can see the roads. Uh, temperatures drop. Going to have issues with that tonight. Those driving conditions will just worsen overnight into the morning commuting hours. WCNC Charlotte Savannah Levens live in Stanley County. Savannah, those wet roads really, as we've said over and over again, are going to be an issue. Yep, absolutely, Sarah, and why don't we just get right to it? I'll show you from our dash cam right now. And I can tell you the snow was coming down strong and thick. Those big uh, fat flakes coming down for a really long time. It just now in the past maybe 30 minutes seemed to taper off a little bit. You're seeing really light, tiny flakes now. But if you look to the side on the roadways there, you can see accumulation on the ground. I want to say a half to an inch, maybe even in some places. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe an inch to a half an inch in some places, but the good news is as far as the roads, not really seeing a lot of ice. So that's certainly a good thing. Check didn't see any power outages, so that's good news as well. As far as schools, I know you were talking about cancellations and delays. Uh, Stanley County schools have announced a three hour delay for tomorrow. They said they're going to continue to monitor and could increase that potentially cancel altogether tomorrow if need be. Of course, all going to be dependent on whether these roads right here in front of you freeze overnight as temperatures drop. Guys, that's the latest from Stanley County. I'm Sabine Elevens, WCNC Charlotte. I'm Alex Shabbat at the NCDOT maintenance yard where wet snow has been coming down for the last several hours. NCDOT tells us they'll be sending 20 plow trucks out later tonight, but they're waiting till after the storm passes because they say it's just too wet right now to treat the roads. You can see a number of puddles down where I'm standing, which means the big threat is black ice. NCDOT will be closely monitoring the situation to determine when to treat those roads and prevent the black ice.
Okay, Alex, thank you. Another spot we saw get hit with a lot of snow today was Bessemer City. We watched huge flakes fall there all evening long. WCNC Charlotte's Brandon Goldner has been in Gaston County all day long and joins us live tonight. So, Brandon, looks like the snow has stopped where you are. It was really coming down earlier tonight. It, it really was, and every family member that we've seen, a lot of them were so excited about all the snow coming down. It's gotten a lot quieter. We moved actually east, closer to Charlotte, in Gastonia right now. Gaston County Schools just in the last hour came out with the news that they will be delaying schools by about two hours just from the roadways and the reflection of the city lights on the roadways. That is going to be, of course, the issue that we keep on harping on when it comes to the issue of black ice and slick roads, even just when cars coming by through here. Speed limit or around here is around 20 25 miles per hour but just hearing the splashing of the roads and just how wet those roads are good news as well and it like medic Gaston County EMS says that they have not had any additional calls compared to what they normally receive people have been heating advice and slowing down according to them Gaston County Schools of course also delay excuse me released students earlier today around 1 p.m. and so far from what we've heard there it has been a smooth transition in that sense the snow has mainly been hitting on terms of the grass but not so much on the roadways but still having those slick conditions for now we'll send it back over to you guys thank you brandon golden reporting live and a live look now at the roads that's where a lot of our focus is right now because the temperatures, as you've heard us talking about all along, they're going to drop as the night continues. And anything that's wet right now will freeze over, making for a potentially icy drive. So let's send it over to Vanessa Rufus live in the newsroom. Vanessa, there are some things people can do behind the wheel to really stay safe tomorrow morning or if they have to get out tonight. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Sarah and Fred. We have some tips that we are seeing from troopers and automotive experts about how to drive in winter weather. So we'll run through just a few of those right now, uh, starting off with a little cautionary tale about cruise control and how, you know, sometimes folks like to put that and maybe they can save some gas. But really, it's not going to be very safe if you hit a pocket of ice. That could really help you or make you lose control of your vehicle uh, a lot worse. Uh, also, increase your following distance. Distance. And we know all about that. We hear all about that every time the visibility drops, but also just with uh, ice or snow or even just rain, we hear experts say to increase that following distance for six to 10 seconds. So that basically means the car in front of you passes a landmark. You're counting six to 10 seconds before you yourself are crossing that landmark as well. Uh, third, we have accelerate and brake slowly. So we're not doing any hard jamming on the brakes. We're not doing any big gassing of the pedal um, that's really going to help you get into a skid and then speaking of which god forbid you get into a skid but uh we have some tips for you if that does happen so first of all stay calm i know that's tough but try not to panic Try not to slam on that brake. That can make the situation worse. And then when you get into a rear wheel skid where you have the rear of your car moving either in one direction or the other, you're turning your steering wheel in the direction of the skid. So if your rear is going towards the left, you're turning your steering wheel gently towards the left. Biggest tip of all, though, if you don't have to drive, don't do it. Don't put yourself in that potential scenario. Guys, back to you. That's right. Just best to avoid that entire situation altogether. Vanessa, thank you. Right now, we want to get another check of the forecast, so let's send it over to Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich for the very latest. Hey, Brad. Yeah, we still have that winter weather advisory in effect, guys. This will likely be extended through tomorrow, even as the snow comes to an end. Remember, roads are going to be slick overnight, and we're going to see some slick spots. They are canceling some of the counties back to the west, so we're seeing a few out of there. We'll have to see if this gets extended past the midnight time frame for some of these areas. The big story tonight obviously is going to be the temperature. Anything wet out there doesn't matter how much snow you got because if it freezes tonight, even the rain that fell today is going to cause some slick spots. There's the back edge of the snow just now moving east of Charlotte. I'm still seeing snow reports at the airport, so it's likely uh, there are some flurries lagging back in here. There's a little band right in here that isn't going to show up on radar. Light snow has a difficult time showing up on radar because the radar beam bounces off that fluffy snow and doesn't really show up on the radar, but you can see that batch of snow pushing off to the south and east back towards the west. We're starting to dry things out right now. The big story is how much snow is actually fallen and stuck. I mean, that's been kind of a tough thing to measure out there because this stuff's been melting so quickly. Aisha Scott's been pouring over some of those snowfall totals and has some of the reports we've seen so far, Aisha, and some of them more impressive than others, but most areas about well, an inch or so, right? Yeah, about an inch. Most areas about a half an inch. So let's take a look at the numbers here. So Banner Elk, actually the highest spot that I've seen thus far, and these are all preliminary. So these are not official totals.
about two and a half inches. Lenore, about an inch of snow. Valdez, about a half of an inch. And then Rockwell, about a half of an inch as well. So we haven't had a whole lot of snow. We wasn't even forecasting a whole lot of snow, but it was certainly pretty to see. And as Brad <laughs> mentioned, it did a lot of it melted as it hit the surface. So we'll get some of those uh, official numbers, hopefully over the next several hours. And we'll bring those to you a little bit later on. Brad. Yeah, I'm kind of excited to see what the airport actually ends up with. I knew I do know they had officially measured at least a tenth of an inch, which is measurable snow. That will keep our streak alive of 142 years in a row of at least some snowfall. So kind of impressive to see us get that snow. So tonight we'll see what the refreeze looks like. It looks like between I would say 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. is when we're going to be dropping below freezing. And I really think sunrise is where we'll see the slick spots, because if you're out and about today or even this evening, driving's fine. Now tomorrow it's not going to be the same thing, so don't be deceived. The reason it's called black ice is because when we see that water on the road surface, it looks like it's wet, but it could be ice and it's very transparent. It's very thin, especially bridges and overpasses. I think that's where you're going to see DOT put a lot of their effort in over the next uh, 12 hours or so. Rapidly falling temperatures by morning really causes a quick refreeze of anything wet. And again, if you come across a bridge or an overpass, don't jerk the wheel. Don't slam the brakes on. Vanessa was talking about this. Just let off the gas and coast directly straight over. Once you get to the other side, you can start applying the brake or slow down a little bit. So low temperatures overnight. I do expect some mid teens in the mountains, a low to mid 20s, and there's still a chance of a stray flurry till about two or three in the morning. Uh, a very cold start to so bundle up in the morning. I think we'll see a lot of delays because the delay is all you need. There's no reason to cancel plans tomorrow because if you can get to sunrise and get to about 9 a.m., we should be OK because I'll show you temperatures after that morning where we're down around 30 degrees. We will quickly climb up above freezing with the sunshine out. It'll do the work that salt can. So the DOT doesn't have to do much work tomorrow because Mother Nature will do most of it for them. Full sunshine all day with temperatures climbing back into the 40s. Here's a look at that seven day forecast and you could see some morning icy spots tomorrow with temperatures uh, down into the 20s and then by the afternoon we'll see those temperatures back into the 40s and then notice by Sunday it's back up to 60 degrees guys and that's a Springtime. short snowstorm, right? <laughs> you, you, you get snow and then a couple days later it's back near 60 and a lot of folks already asked me is this it? This is the last one. Mm. I would not bet against March. March 2nd by the way is the snowiest single calendar day of the entire year. And didn't we get the little <laughs> snow last year in April? Uh, April 2nd. <laughs> So Remember I always tell people we got to get past St. Patrick's Day. To me, that's kind of the date. Once we get beyond that, the chances of snow go way down. But those first two weeks of March, okay. always very interesting. And the pattern does look cold, I will tell you. Uh -oh. All right, Brad, thank you very much. <laughs> Well, snow coming down in Charlotte, but that isn't stopping the Charlotte 49ers from having a little fun. The team just tweeting this video of people playing football in the snow. What could be better? Yeah, this is just one of many weather videos we've seen today. Vanessa Roof is taking a look at those. Vanessa, what do you see? Yeah, guys, we're getting some great viewer pictures and videos sent to us on social media. So we've collected a few and yes, the 49ers football one was really great. But I love this drone action shot that we're getting here from Scott Brotherton. I wonder if Brad Panovich likes this drone action picture. Do you like this, Brad? <laughs> to fly my drone in the snow. <laughs> yeah, well, he was not and he got a great neighborhood shot here showing multiple yards with a little bit of powdered sugar going on top. We've seen a lot of videos here with this really heavy snow that, that is just really accumulating in like front yards. We're seeing them on patios. So here from Pam snowing in Youngsville. Love that. We also have some slow motion action like this one coming from Salisbury. So that's from Anthony Johnson. Thank you so much, Anthony. And we see some pretty good accumulation here on the rooftops and the lawns. This is Harrisburg coming to us from Michael Keir. So thank you, Michael, for sending this video to us. Uh, Karen tweeted this at me. So thank you out of York. Pretty good snowfall you guys got in that area. And I love this one mostly because of the beard. But Craig here says conditions in the high country, not the best snow, but the best so far this winter. I love that. That is a great shot. And then not the best picture, but yes, yeah, something that we're contending with. We talked with uh, Charlotte Douglas, you know, they are dealing with some delays and you could see they are busy de-icing those planes there. Uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway showing it coming down on the speedway. And yes, yeah, some fun stuff that we're getting. Olaf loving his life on our back porch. Wesley Chapel, Jennifer Weitzel here. Do you want to build a snowman? 
Yes, we do. There it is. First snowman of 2020 from Monroe, North Carolina, coming from Valerie. I know not a lot of accumulation to build a real one, but we can do the best we can. And then I like this one, a little snowbird out of Indian Trail. And speaking of the animals, we did send this out on social media. We want to see your pictures here of your pets in the snow. This is just so fun just because we can. Let's go ahead and go through some of the great ones we've got here. A little kitty and, and her friend. We've got a little snow covered doggy. We've got the whole gang's here. And then finally, that's my dog, Mr. Mojo, getting his favorite thing, which is snow. So it's his first snow in Charlotte. All right. Go, Mr. I Mojo. I love it, Vanessa. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, we're also seeing some problems, though, popping up at the airport, of course, because of all this winter weather. Let's check in now with Lexi Wilson at Charlotte Douglas to find out what's going on there tonight. Definitely some travel trouble here. I just checked the monitors and there are several delays as well as cancellations. According to flightaware.com, Charlotte has around 40 delays and 35 cancellations. The airport is currently monitoring the weather and is prepared to implement winter weather operations if and when needed. Here's video of the Charlotte Douglas International Airport spraying a de-icing fluid on an aircraft. It helps remove ice and snow. Here's what one traveler had to say about the winter weather. Flying out at 6.30, my flight's still on time, flying United, but I mean, you never know what the weather. I was here a few weeks ago for the tornado. And officials say please check your flight status with the airline or on their website, cltairport.com. You can also download their mobile app. Reporting at the Charlotte Douglas International Airport, I'm Lexi Wilson for WCNC Charlotte. Lexi, thank you. Taking it back out to Stanley County. Snow was coming down hard earlier today. WCNC Charlotte Savannah Levins live in Stanley County. Savannah, those wet roads, we've been talking about it all night. Going to be an issue tonight, really into tomorrow morning as well. Yeah, absolutely. The snow's been coming down for a long time. Let me just flip over our camera here, show you from our dash cam. Look at all that snow. I want to say maybe an inch at this point from all the snow that's been coming down all day. It's just now tapered off a little bit. You can probably see on your screen there it's coming down in smaller flakes and a little lighter compared to what we've been seeing since about 4 p.m. So the last four hours have been those big fluffy flakes, consistent downfall now tapering off a little bit, but yeah, check out those roads soaked. Stanley County Schools announcing a three hour delay tomorrow just because of the anticipation of all the water you're seeing on the roads now freezing overnight as temperatures dip. They said they're going to be monitoring the situation. So of course, stick with us. WCNC Charlotte tonight at 11 and in the morning. We're going to be monitoring these conditions and bring you updates on the schools situations as well. For now, that's the update from Stanley County and Albemarle. Savannah 11's WCNC Charlotte. All right, Savannah, thank you. And I'm pretty sure that people, the school systems at least, those that haven't made their announcements are watching the road conditions and what that looks like in the morning very closely. Yeah, and I think the earlier you start, probably the rougher the conditions will be because right around sunrise looks icy. The winter weather advisories, in fact, I'll be watching temperatures all night. We're kind of done kind of watching the radar because the snow is pretty much moving out. So it's all about watching that thermometer and just to show you that the snow is exiting. But here's a cool thing. We have just reported snow here at the station and it made it into the official report oh, look at there. That. Uh, half an inch here at WC. <laughs> and see right. Charlotte measure that out on the, uh, the, the cars out there. Yeah, so <laughs> and that's close to the airport. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see what the official report will be at the airport, but yeah. um, I know this a lot of folks wanted to see a lot more snow, but this was kind of in the range we expected. Right. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, we got a little excited because it was our first yeah. legitimate It's not snow. a major disruptor, yeah. at least not at this point. No, you know, and here's the thing to remember. We average 4.3 inches of snow per winter, so something like this is absolutely normal. And we could have <laughs> some, you said, still more in March, possibly even April. Yeah, I think I think I said earlier in the winter, I said us not getting any snow is more abnormal than us getting, yeah. snow. getting snow. Just be careful tonight and in the morning, you said, yeah. especially the bridges, the overpasses. Yeah, because you could be driving fine and that's the thing. You, you, you get up to full speed and you don't realize you get to a bridge and if you suddenly jerk the wheel or yeah. something, that's where we have issues. I've seen yeah. that happen with freezing fog and other situations. People drive full speed and then you get to a bridge and it's like, they lose yeah. control. I know. I was just going over that with Fred. I was like, okay, so if my <laughs> that go this way, I turn into in, it, right? Yeah. He's like, yes, you just want to ease off gently. Of the gas. Yeah. Just, yeah, that's the thing. Don't make any sudden movements with the gas, the, the brake, or the steering wheel. Yeah. All right. All right, thank, thank you. you. That's going to do it for this special online edition of WCNC Charlotte. We will be back on air on your TV at 11 with a full forecast and everything you need to know as the conditions expected to get worse overnight.
Falls in the Carolinas for the special online edition of WCNC Charlotte. From Blowing Rock to Bessemer City, Salisbury to Charlotte, we are seeing snowflakes flying. Our first Warren Storm team has been telling us for days about this snow when it finally hit. Thanks for staying with us, everybody. I'm Sarah French. And I'm Fred Shropshire. We have a lot of school closings and delays coming in right now. They are scrolling at the bottom of your screen. We'll get a check of some of the big ones in just a minute. First, though, let's take a look at the first Warren Doppler radar. You can see the system blanketing the Carolinas and this snow rain sleet mix is going to continue well into the night. A winter weather advisory remains in effect until tomorrow morning and tomorrow going into work is going to be where we see the toughest problems. And that's because everything that's falling right now, whether it's rain or snow, will freeze, making for a potentially icy drive into work tomorrow morning. Tonight, WCNC Charlotte has live first warm team weather coverage to make sure you're prepared from current conditions on the roads to how road crews are prepping for overnight ice. We have every angle covered, but we want to start in the first warm storm center where Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich has your minute by minute forecast. Brad. <clears throat> yeah, we're still seeing some rain out there right now, guys, but mixing with a lot of snow to the south, mainly snow in many areas like Rock Hill, Fort Mill, TKK, around the Charlotte area. The temperatures are the key part tonight. We're going to watch these temperatures, see how quickly they can fall back, and if they get below freezing, we'll start to have some issues. 33 in Hickory, 32 in Salisbury, 34 currently in Concord, 34 in Charlotte, uh, 35 as you go over towards areas down in Chester County. Now, the snow technically still falling. The radar isn't picking it up, but we're still reporting snow at the airport, Concord, Lincolnton, Gastonia, as well as Rock Hill, but the bulk of the snow is starting to shift off to the east in areas Union County, uh, down into Anson, Stanley, Richmond County. We're even seeing trace amounts of snow in Chesterfield County, areas like Pageland, over towards Lancaster, where we're seeing some snow falling, and even down Almost to Columbia, South Carolina, we're starting to see some snowflakes down there. That rain snow line becomes a little more pronounced down towards Wilmington. The real heavy snow from this event is going to be here east of I-95. This is where we're going to see the winter storm warnings, and that's where we could see maybe three, four, five inches of snow. Most areas to our east are going to see about one to two. So far in our area, generally a trace to up to an inch on the grassy surfaces. We're getting some renewed snow shower activity around the Statesville area along interstate. 40 and until this wave completely passes over us, we're likely going to see some flakes at least flying for the next couple of hours. Back to the west, there are still some snow showers in eastern Tennessee. Those are sliding into the mountains, but as we go through the next couple of hours, I expect most of this stuff will start to fall apart and weaken. Here's 8 o'clock. We'll go all the way through about 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Everything starts to shift off to the east, and that's when things will start to kind of calm down. Then We'll watch the temperatures. We'll still be above freezing for several hours, so really no issues on the roads until late, late tonight, well after midnight and into the early morning hours tomorrow when temperatures will likely fall down below the freezing mark. And that's really going to be the situation we'll watch for those early morning hours and likely what's going to cause a lot of delays. Meteorologist Aisha Scott is over in the Weather Center, and Aisha, those cold temperatures in the morning will be a big part of the problem. Oh, yeah, you'll have to watch for that black ice <coughs> threat early tomorrow morning as well. So if you're heading out, just a heads up, you'll want to use extra caution on the roads. One other thing I do want to mention, because I went outside to see some of the snowflakes as well, and it is cold. I knew it was cold out there, but the feel like temperatures have dropped into the 20s and really have been in the 20s all evening. So as we go through the rest of tonight, right around midnight, air temperatures will fall as well. But just keep in mind those feel like temperatures down into the 20s overnight tonight, along with those air temperatures temperatures as well. So we'll talk more about the black ice threat for your Friday coming up in just a few minutes. Sarah. Aisha, thank you. The snow is still falling tonight. Thanks, Aisha. Yeah, we're still tracking that low on the coast, which is a big part of this system, and this low is what's going to move away over the next couple of hours, and we'll see high pressure build in. So the thing is, if you're worried about the road conditions in the morning, if you can just wait until the sun comes up, I think things will be completely fine after sunrise tomorrow. It's a very narrow window where we're going to have icy roads tonight. Most of that is going to be between about 4 a.m. and about 9 a.m. As we go through the weekend, it actually warms all the way back up maybe even close to 60 degrees by the time we get to Sunday. And that's the day we'll see all that melting going on and there'll be nothing left out there across the area. So guys, we'll we keep an eye on those temperatures tonight. And that really is going to be the key right now. As Aisha mentioned, I was outside. There's really no issues on the roads at all right now. They're just wet. It's essentially been like a cold rain out there on the road surfaces.
All right, Brad, thank you. And the snow is still falling tonight as the sun has set, which means all the rain and snow that fell today will start freezing as the night goes on. Let's check in now live with our Hunter Signs, who's been in the Chevy Storm Tracker all evening. Hunter, what are you seeing out there tonight? Yeah, Fred and Sarah, the snow has stopped for the most part here, um, although we have seen a couple of flakes, but it's nothing compared to what we saw earlier. We are on 85 South uh, from Charlotte heading towards uh, Gaston County. I do want to let you know, though, uh, this weather has proved dangerous in, in some aspect because we've had just tonight three people, uh, pedestrians, hit by cars during that snowfall um, earlier this afternoon. Um, thankfully, though, uh, the amount of calls that Medic has received since midnight is only at 51. They tweeted at me moments ago saying, thankfully, people heeded the warnings and slowed down. So that's always good news, although it's 51, too many, but it could have been worse, according to them. Um, back to those three pedestrians who were hit, one of them over on Independence in the east side of town, that person was rushed to the emergency room with uh, serious injuries. The other two were not life threatening. Uh, one of them happening over off of North Sharon Amity Road and Milton Road and the other one on South Tryon. Of course, we don't know if weather was a factor in all three of them, but like I said, when they happened, the snow was coming down and driving out here in it, it didn't take much to start coming at your windshield and you're trying to get those wipers going to wipe it off, of course, and then add traffic and people slowing down on their brakes during the afternoon commute. Um, some may be able to assume that the weather could have been a factor, but no confirmation there. Thankfully, though, it sounds too, like two of them are going to be okay. We are still trying to check in to get um, the condition of that person who was hit by a vehicle during the snow um, over on the east side of town. Town. Um, but the good news, like I said, only 51 calls um, that medic received with traffic accidents. People are definitely taking it slow out here. Um, hopefully they will continue to do so as the night continues because as you said the temperatures are already falling it is chilly outside we just got back into the vehicle after going out to a, grab a quick bite to eat during all of this coverage but we came back in here it is cold out there and as brad and aisha have mentioned the big part of this is these wet roads could sh certainly freeze uh, going into the overnight hours so if you have to be out please take it slow otherwise just stay bundled up inside back to you our team coverage continues tonight now in Rowan County. WCNC Charlotte's Chloe Leshner spent the day in Salisbury and shows us what it looked like there this evening. I'm Chloe Leshner in Salisbury where the snow has accumulated here on the grass and on some cars passing by, but it is not sticking to the streets yet. At this point, first responders are expecting a few more accidents than normal, which is why crews have been out pre treating the bridges and there will be extra police patrols. The main concern really is the black ice that we will see tonight into tomorrow morning. First responders asking people to take it slow out on the roads. Chloe, thank you. Our team coverage continues in Union County. Snow coming down now, making for dangerous road conditions there. Stallings Fire Department tweeting out a photo of an accident on Indian Trail Road. Traffic now down to one lane. I think we have an image of that. WCNC Charlotte's Brianna Harper live on scene. Brianna, what's the latest? Well, Sarah, just within the last maybe 10 or 15 minutes, that crash wrapped up. But this was at the intersection where all this happened. If you take a look behind me, you can see the roads here are still wet. But um, Highway Patrol isn't saying whether or not weather paid a factor in this. But I want you guys to take a look at what that scene was looking like when we first arrived here earlier this afternoon. Highway Patrol tells us there were three cars involved in this crash. It appears one car actually ran through the two-way stop sign here at the intersection of Indian Trail Road and Gibble Road. Um, that car hit another car that was coming the intersection and then there was kind of a, a ricochet effect hitting a third car in that crash. So again, three cars hit. The good news is no one was hurt in all of this. And again, Highway Patrol says they don't believe that the weather had to do anything with this crash, but it's just a reminder to folks to continue to take it slow in this weather. Again, wet roads definitely a factor. And as that temperature continues to drop, again, the possibility for freezing also another concern. But this is what some drivers had to tell us earlier about how they plan to keep a lookout. Take a look. They should just take it slow, keep it easy. Everybody stay safe, don't wreck, and uh, make sure you stay alive. 
And then again, back out here live, we were taking a look at the roads earlier, but this is what the side streets are looking like, or at least the ground, the sidewalks, that kind of thing. You can see a small layer of snow covering the area here. Um, again, luckily, no issues on the road, but we will continue to stay out here in the Union County area and in Indian Trail and keep you guys updated on the conditions throughout the rest of this evening. Send it back to you guys. I'm Kendall Morris in Huntersville. Conditions here are continuing to change as snow continues to fall from the sky. This area is predicted to get about an inch to two inches of snow. You can see here on the ground in soft surfaces, snow is beginning to accumulate. But what we're really watching is the pavement here because you can see that the snow, when it falls to the ground, it is melting, which overnight will create hazardous conditions for drivers as this freezes over and has the potential for black ice. We'll send it back to you. Kendall, thank you. And with this winter weather, we are seeing a lot of school delays and even some closings tomorrow. Vanessa Rufus is in the newsroom with the list. Vanessa. Hi, Fred. Yeah, that closure list or delay list continues to grow as we go into the evening. Now we're now up to about 59 at last check on our website, WCNC.com. Just running through some of the school districts that are going to be impacted by this winter weather. We'll go ahead and show you on your screen right now the delays and the closures that we've got reported so far. So a two hour delay is reported for tomorrow. Rock Hill, Fort Mill, York County, Watauga, Ash County, Gaston County. We also have some three hour delays reported. Those come from Lancaster, Caldwell County, Alexander County, Iredell Statesville, and Lincoln County, and then full closures reported at Avery County and Anson County Schools. And as I mentioned, a much fuller, more comprehensive list is available at our website, WCNC.com, including universities and agencies and even churches uh, throughout the viewing area. So go ahead and check that out. If you want to use a quick text uh, tool that will just send that list right to you, you can always text closing. So text the word closing to 704-329-3600, and that will go right to your phone. Uh, once again, text message, don't call. Guys, back to you. All right, that's going to come in handy for a lot of people. Indeed. And here is a live look at conditions in the Raleigh area tonight. They've seen a lot of snow this afternoon, like we have. Let's get a check of what's happening out there right now. I'm WRAL's Aaron Thomas in Rocky Mount, where you can see snow continues to fall. You can see some of the snowfall accumulating here on the ground and some of these trees. Now, we're in an interesting spot right now. We have several people who are staying inside some of these cozy tiny homes here on the campus of Rocky Mount Mills. I spoke with the tow truck driver who tells me he's hoping people stay inside and avoid being on the roads if possible. But these tow truck drivers are already ready to provide roadside assistance to those who need it as snow continues to fall. Back to you. Taking it out to Stanley County now. Snow coming down hard there. Just look at this. You can see the roads. Uh, temperatures drop. Going to have issues with that tonight. Those driving conditions will just worsen overnight into the morning commuting hours. WCNC Charlotte Savannah Levins live in Stanley County. Savannah, those wet roads really, as we've said over and over again, are going to be an issue. Yep, absolutely, Sarah, and why don't we just get right to it? I'll show you from our dash cam right now. And I can tell you the snow was coming down strong and thick. Those big uh, fat flakes coming down for a really long time. It just now in the past maybe 30 minutes seemed to taper off a little bit. You're seeing really light, tiny flakes now. But if you look to the side on the roadways there, you can see accumulation on the ground. I want to say a half to an inch, maybe even in some places. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe an inch to a half an inch in some places, but the good news is as far as the roads, not really seeing a lot of ice. So that's certainly a good thing. Checked and see any power outages. So that's good news as well. As far as schools, I know you were talking about cancellations and delays. Uh, Stanley County schools have announced a three hour delay for tomorrow. They said they're going to continue to monitor and could increase that potentially cancel altogether tomorrow if need be. Of course, all going to be dependent on whether these roads right here in front of you freeze overnight as temperatures drop. Guys, that's the latest from Stanley County. I'm Sabine Elevens, WCNC Charlotte. I'm Alex Shabbat at the NCDOT maintenance yard where wet snow has been coming down for the last several hours. NCDOT tells us they'll be sending 20 plow trucks out later tonight, but they're waiting till after the storm passes because they say it's just too wet right now to treat the roads. You can see a number of puddles down where I'm standing, which means the big threat is black ice. 
NCDOT will be closely monitoring the situation to determine when to treat those roads and prevent the black ice. Okay, Alex, thank you. Another spot we saw get hit with a lot of snow today was Bessemer City. We watched huge flakes fall there all evening long. WCNC Charlotte's Brandon Goldner has been in Gaston County all day long and joins us live tonight. So, Brandon, it looks like the snow has stopped where you are. It was really coming down earlier tonight. It, it really was, and every family member that we've seen, a lot of them were so excited about all the snow coming down. It's gotten a lot quieter. We moved actually east, closer to Charlotte, in Gastonia right now. Gaston County Schools just in the last hour came out with the news that they will be delaying schools by about two hours just from the roadways and the reflection of the city lights on the roadways. That is going to be, of course, the issue that we keep on harping on when it comes to the issue of black ice and slick roads, even just when cars coming by through here. Speed limit around around here is around 20 25 miles per hour but just hearing the splashing of the roads and just how wet those roads are good news as well and it like medic Gaston County EMS says that they have not had any additional calls compared to what they normally receive people have been heating advice and slowing down according to them Gaston County Schools of course also delay excuse me released students earlier today around 1 p.m. and so far from what we've heard there it has been a smooth transition in that sense the snow has mainly been hitting on terms of the grass but not so much on the roadways but still having those slick conditions for now we'll send it back over to you guys thank you Brandon Golden reporting live and a live look now at the roads that's where a lot of our focus is right now because the temperatures, as you've heard us talking about all along, they're going to drop as the night continues. And anything that's wet right now will freeze over, making for a potentially icy drive. So let's send it over to Vanessa Rufus live in the newsroom. Vanessa, there are some things people can do behind the wheel to really stay safe tomorrow morning or if they have to get out tonight. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Sarah and Fred. We have some tips that we are seeing from troopers and automotive experts about how to drive in winter weather. So we'll run through just a few of those right now. Uh, starting off with a little cautionary tale about cruise control and how, you know, sometimes folks like to put that and maybe they can save some gas. But really, it's not going to be very safe if you hit a pocket of ice. That could really help you or make you lose control of your vehicle uh, a lot worse. Uh, also, increase your following distance. Distance. And we know all about that. We hear all about that every time the visibility drops, but also just with uh, ice or snow or even just rain, we hear experts say to increase that following distance for six to 10 seconds. So that basically means the car in front of you passes a landmark. You're counting six to 10 seconds before you yourself are crossing that landmark as well. Uh, third, we have accelerate and brake slowly. So we're not doing any hard jamming on the brakes. We're not doing any big gassing of the pedal um, that's really going to help you get into a skid and then speaking of which god forbid you get into a skid but uh we have some tips for you if that does happen so first of all stay calm i know that's tough but try not to panic Try not to slam on that brake. That can make the situation worse. And then when you get into a rear wheel skid where you have the rear of your car moving either in one direction or the other, you're turning your steering wheel in the direction of the skid. So if your rear is going towards the left, you're turning your steering wheel gently towards the left. Biggest tip of all, though, if you don't have to drive, don't do it. Don't put yourself in that potential scenario. Guys, back to you. That's right. Just best to avoid that entire situation altogether. Vanessa, thank you. Right now, we want to get another check of the forecast, so let's send it over to Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich for the very latest. Hey, Brad. Yeah, we still have that winter weather advisory in effect, guys. This will likely be extended through tomorrow, even as the snow comes to an end. Remember, roads are going to be slick overnight, and we're going to see some slick spots. They are canceling some of the counties back to the west, so we're seeing a few out of there. We'll have to see if this gets extended past the midnight time frame for some of these areas. The big story tonight obviously is going to be the temperature. Anything wet out there doesn't matter how much snow you got because if it freezes tonight, even the rain that fell today is going to cause some slick spots. There's the back edge of the snow just now moving east of Charlotte. I'm still seeing snow reports at the airport, so it's likely uh, there are some flurries lagging back in here. There's a little band right in here that isn't going to show up on radar. Light snow has a difficult time showing up on radar because the radar beam bounces off that fluffy snow and doesn't really show up on the radar, but you can see that batch of snow pushing off off to the south and east back towards the west 
we're starting to dry things out right now. The big story is how much snow is actually fallen and stuck. I mean, that's been kind of a tough thing to measure out there because this stuff's been melting so quickly. Aisha Scott's been pouring over some of those snowfall totals and has some of the reports we've seen so far, Aisha, and some of them more impressive than others, but most areas about well, an inch or so, right? Yeah, about an inch. Most areas about a half an inch. So let's take a look at the numbers here. So Banner Elk, actually the highest spot that I've seen thus far, and these are all preliminary. So these are not official totals. About two and a half inches. Lenore, about an inch of snow. Valdez, about a half of an inch, and then Rockwell, about a half of an inch as well. So we haven't had a whole lot of snow. We wasn't even forecasting a whole lot of snow, but it was certainly pretty to see. And as Brad <laughs> mentioned, it did a lot of it melted as it hit the surface. So we'll get some of those uh, official numbers, hopefully over the next several hours, and we'll bring those to you a little bit later on. Brad? Yeah, I'm kind of excited to see what the airport actually ends up with. I, knew, I do know they had officially measured at least a tenth of an inch, which is measurable snow. That will keep our streak alive of 142 years in a row of at least some snowfall. So kind of impressive to see us get that snow. So tonight we'll see what the refreeze looks like. It looks like between, I would say 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. is when we're gonna be dropping below freezing. And I really think sunrise is where we'll see the slick spots because if you're out and about today or even this evening, driving's fine. Now tomorrow, it's not gonna be the same thing. So don't be deceived. The reason it's called black ice is because when we see that water on the road surface, it looks like it's wet but it could be ice and it's very transparent, it's very thin, especially bridges and overpasses. I think that's where you're gonna see DOT put a lot of their effort in over the next uh, 12 hours or so. A rapidly falling temperatures by morning really causes a quick refreeze of anything wet. And again, if you come across a bridge or an overpass, don't jerk the wheel, don't slam the brakes on. Vanessa was talking about this. Just let off the gas and coast directly straight over. Once you get to the other side, you can start applying the brake or slow down a little bit. So low temperatures overnight. I do expect some mid-teens in the mountains, a low to mid-20s, and there's still a chance of a stray flurry till about two or three in the morning. Uh, a very cold start, so bundle up in the morning. I think we'll see a lot of delays because the delay is all you need. There's no reason to cancel plans tomorrow because if you can get to sunrise and get to about 9 a.m., we should be okay because I'll show you temperatures after that morning where we're down around 30 degrees. We will quickly climb up above freezing with the sunshine out. It'll do the work that salt can't. So the DOT doesn't have to do much work tomorrow because Mother Nature will do most of it for them. Full sunshine all day with temperatures climbing back into the 40s. Here's a look at that seven day forecast and you could see some morning icy spots tomorrow with temperatures uh, down into the 20s and then by the afternoon we'll see those temperatures back into the 40s and then notice by Sunday it's back up to 60 degrees guys and that's a Springtime. Charlotte snowstorm right? <laughs> you, you, you get snow and then a couple days later it's back near 60 and a lot of folks already asked me is this it? This is the last one? Mm. I would not bet against March. March 2nd by the way is the snowiest single calendar day of the entire year. And didn't we get a little snow last year in April? Uh, April 2nd. <laughs> So Remember I always tell people, we got to get past St. Patrick's Day. To me, that's kind of the date. Once we get beyond that, the chances of snow go way down. But those first two weeks of March, okay. always very interesting. And the pattern does look cold, I will tell you. Uh -oh. All right, Brad, thank you very much. <laughs> Well, snow coming down in Charlotte, but that isn't stopping the Charlotte 49ers from having a little fun. The team just tweeting this video of people playing football in the snow. What could be better? Yeah, this is just one of many weather videos we've seen today. Vanessa Roof is taking a look at those. Vanessa, what do you see? Yeah, guys, we're getting some great viewer pictures and videos sent to us on social media. So we've collected a few. And yes, the 49ers football one was really great. But I love this drone action shot that we're getting here from Scott Brotherton. I wonder if Brad Panovich likes this drone action picture. Do you like this, Brad? <laughs> to fly my drone in the snow. <laughs> yeah, well, he was not. And he got a great neighborhood shot here showing multiple yards with a little bit of powdered sugar going on top. We've seen a lot of videos here with this really heavy snow that, that is just really accumulating in like front yards. We're seeing them on patios. So here from Pam snowing in Youngsville. Love that. We also have some slow motion action like this one coming from Salisbury. So that's from Anthony Johnson. Thank you so much, Anthony. And we see some pretty good accumulation here on the rooftops and the lawns. This is Harrisburg coming to us from Michael Keir. So thank you, Michael, for sending this video to us. Uh, Karen tweeted this at me. So thank you out of York. Pretty good snowfall you guys got in that area. And I love this one mostly because of the beard, but Craig here says conditions in the high country, not the best snow, but the best so far this winter. I love that. That is a great shot. And then 
not the best picture, but yes, something that we're contending with. We talked with uh, Charlotte Douglas, you know, they're dealing with some delays and you could see they are busy de-icing those planes there. Uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway showing it coming down on the speedway. And yes, some fun stuff that we're getting. Olaf loving his life on our back porch. Wesley Chapel, Jennifer Weitzel here. Do you want to build a snowman? Yes, we do. There it is. First snowman of 2020 from Monroe, North Carolina, coming from Valerie. I know not a lot of accumulation to build a real one, but we can do the best we can. And then I like this one, a little snowbird out of Indian Trail. And speaking of the animals, we did send this out on social media. We want to see your pictures here of your pets in the snow. This is just so fun just because we can. Let's go ahead and go through some of the great ones we've got here. A little kitty and, and her friend. We've got a little snow covered doggy. We've got the whole gang's here. And then finally, that's my dog, Mr. Bojo, getting his favorite thing, which is snow. So it's his first snow in Charlotte. All right. Go, Mr. I love Bojo. it, Vanessa. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, we're also seeing some problems, though, popping up at the airport, of course, because of all this winter weather. Let's check in now with Lexi Wilson at Charlotte Douglas to find out what's going on there tonight. Definitely some travel trouble here. I just checked the monitors and there are several delays as well as cancellations. According to flightaware.com, Charlotte has around 40 delays and 35 cancellations. The airport is currently monitoring the weather and is prepared to implement winter weather operations if and when needed. Here's video of the Charlotte Douglas International Airport spraying a de-icing fluid on an aircraft. It helps remove ice and snow. Here's what one traveler had to say about the winter weather. Flying out at 6.30, my flight's still on time, flying United, but I mean, you never know what the weather. I was here a few weeks ago for the tornado. And officials say please check your flight status with the airline or on their website, cltairport.com. You can also download their mobile app. Reporting at the Charlotte Douglas International Airport, I'm Lexi Wilson for WCNC Charlotte. Lexi, thank you. Taking it back out to Stanley County. Snow was coming down hard earlier today. WCNC Charlotte Savannah Levin's live in Stanley County. Savannah, those wet roads, we've been talking about it all night. Going to be an issue tonight, really into tomorrow morning as well. Yeah, absolutely. The snow's been coming down for a long time. Let me just flip over our camera here, show you from our dash cam. Look at all that snow. I want to say maybe an inch at this point from all the snow that's been coming down all day. It's just now tapered off a little bit. You can probably see on your screen there. It's coming down in smaller flakes and a little lighter compared to what we've been seeing since about 4 p.m. So the last four hours have been those big fluffy flakes, consistent downfall now tapering off a little bit, but yeah, check out those roads soaked. Stanley County Schools announcing a three hour delay tomorrow just because of the anticipation of all the water you're seeing on the roads now freezing overnight as temperatures dip. They said they're going to be monitoring the situation. So of course, stick with us. WCNC Charlotte tonight at 11 and in the morning, we're going to be monitoring these conditions and bring you updates on the school's situations as well. For now, that's the update from Stanley County and Albemarle. Savannah Levins, WCNC Charlotte. All right, Savannah, thank you. And I'm pretty sure that people, the school systems at least, those that haven't made their announcements are watching the road conditions and what that looks like in the morning very closely. Yeah, and I think the earlier you start, probably the rougher the conditions will be because right around sunrise looks icy. The winter weather advisories, in fact, I'll be watching temperatures all night. We're kind of done kind of watching the radar because the snow is pretty much moving out. So it's all about watching that thermometer and just to show you that the snow is exiting. But here's a cool thing. We have just reported snow here at the station and it made it into the official report oh, there. Uh, half an inch here at WC. <laughs> NC right. Charlotte measure that out on the, uh, on the, the cars out there. Yeah, so <laughs> and that's close to the airport. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see what the official report will be at the airport, but yeah. um, I know this a lot of folks wanted to see a lot more snow, but this was kind of in the range we expected. Right. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, we got a little excited because it was our first. Yeah. Legitimate it's snow. not a major disruptor, yeah. at least not at this point. No, you know, and here's the thing. Remember, we average 4.3 inches of snow per winter, so something like this is absolutely normal. And we could have <laughs> some. You said still more in March, possibly even April. Yeah, I think I said earlier in the winter, I said us not getting any snow is more abnormal than us getting, yeah. snow. getting snow. Just be careful tonight and in the morning, you said, yeah. especially the bridges, the overpasses. Yeah, because you could be driving fine, and that's the thing. You, you, you get up to full speed, and you don't realize you get to a bridge, and if you suddenly jerk the wheel or yeah. something, that's where we have issues. I've seen yeah. that happen with freezing fog and other situations. People drive full speed, and then you get to a bridge, and it's like, 
They lose yeah, control. I know. I was just going over that with Fred. I was like, okay, so if my <laughs> that go this way, I turn into and, it, right? Yeah. He's like, yes, you just want to ease off of the gas. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah, that's the thing. Don't make any sudden movements with the gas, the, the brake, or the steering wheel. Yeah. All right. All right, thank you. That's going to do it for this special online edition of WCNC Charlotte. We will be back on air on your TV at 11 with a full forecast and everything you need to know as the conditions expected to get worse over falls in the Carolinas. The snow is moving out. Um, I can't announce to you as well, if you didn't see our push notification, um, CMS has canceled all classes tomorrow, which I'm actually somewhat shocked. Um, I'll read you the statement. Uh, CMS Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools will be closed on Friday. See a full list of details on our website. So I got that push notification on our app. So I'm a little shocked. The reason I say that is because um, I don't think a closing is, a, is really warranted tomorrow, but a delay. But here's the thing about school closings and this is why I hate talking about them sometimes because there's other factors that go into this other than just the weather because for a lot of reasons that you may not even know, uh, a delay might be a logistical nightmare for busing and for other things. And so sometimes it's just easier to cancel altogether. So my guess is something like that happened more so than weather related. That's why I always hate speculating on these things because oftentimes these decisions go way beyond just the weather. It's, there's all kinds of extenuating circumstances same thing with flights sometimes people ask me about flights being canceled and I'm like I honestly have no idea sometimes the weather is the least of your worries because the airlines want to move flights to certain airports and don't want to get stuck so they'll just preemptively cancel flights so that's my two cents on that I mean it's kind of a tough tough call sometimes so here's a look at what's going on tonight um, we've got the winter weather advisory for some counties till midnight other counties expiring. The snow is moving out. So I showed you the radar real quickly here. Um, and you can see where the snow is right now. It's kind of almost done for most of us. There's still some flurries down here. We just got a, a almost a half inch report out of uh, Jefferson down in South Carolina. And we got a four inch snowfall amount from up in here. And I just got a 2.8, almost three inches in Troy. So there's a couple hot spots out there officially in charlotte depending on where you are in the county anywhere from a quarter to a half an inch um, i haven't seen any one inch amounts in mecklenburg county but most mostly a quarter to a half an inch just enough uh, to be measurable um, most part i'm actually pretty happy with the forecast all in here that one to two inch in here probably is not going to verify very well except for out here where we had that and I'll show you um, I was showing someone earlier this was my forecast so this is the one I I was stuck with uh, this morning and I kind of stuck to my guns I should say and um, some of this did not verify very well the one to two but over in here we did pretty well and really all of this did really well so um, the only part that didn't didn't really verify is going to be this area just uh, just south of I I 40 there so I'm going to put we're putting together a snowfall map right now um, and as, as I speak, um, Aisha Scott's over there looking up some totals and I'm starting to look at uh, some of the reports around here. So I think this area right in here is the one area we had a pretty significant miss. Though if you remember my map from earlier, I had trace of half an inch was our bus potential and we certainly got probably trace to an inch. So we kind of were on the lower end of our, of our, of our prob probabilistic forecast. One to two actually worked out pretty well over in this area, but not so much in Salisbury and Concord. But most areas, a trace to an inch kind of worked out almost perfectly and was kind of a non-event on the roads, which I expected. Now, speaking of the roads, um, this is the thing that I'm a little, about tomorrow that's a little interesting, is temperatures up in here certainly are going to be below freezing here shortly. So roads along Interstate 40, bridges and overpasses will ice up pretty quickly. But honestly, in the Charlotte area, the roads are completely fine. I mean there is zero issues on the roads other than being wet right now so if you can drive in the rain you're fine until probably three or four in the morning when temperatures get close to freezing and even then the main roads are going to be fine just the bridges and overpasses and some of the side streets so um you know 
me personally, I don't think roads are going to be that big of a deal, but it seems like every year you just a little bit of ice freaks people out. So uh, in the grand scheme of things, if you're worried at all, just don't go out. I mean, that's just that's just the thing I, I tell people. Those bridges and overpasses, obviously, we worry about this happening. You know, we get that air flowing around the, um, the road, and so the bridges can be a little slick. And again, that would be what we'd expect tomorrow. So here's the uh, hourly forecast through tonight, just to show you how temperatures kind of bounce around a little bit. I expect them to hover around 33, 34 most of the night. And as skies clear out right before sunrise, that's when we see probably a pretty quick freeze up. And that's where you'll see the biggest potential um, for some slick, slick spots on the road. So these are my low temperatures tonight, just to give you an idea of the overall temperatures uh, in the mid to upper 20s. So anything that's wet out there likely will ice up pretty quickly um, on the bridges mainly. The roads, uh, the main roads are probably fine because most of the, the ground is about 48, 47 degrees. So the main roads should be pretty good and DOT is gonna be out spreading salt. So when temperatures are close to 30, 31, 32, just the, just the traffic going over the, the road keeps things kind of wet. Once you get around 28 or lower, that's where you get a little dicey. So um, some of these areas up in here from Morganton, Hickory, Newton, Conover, Lincolnton, Statesville, Salisbury, I don't care how much snow you got, whether you're disappointed in it, doesn't matter. It was wet, okay? And ice doesn't care either. So these are gonna be some slick spots up in here. So just be really careful on the bridges, especially up here. Down to the south, you're probably gonna have less of an issue, but uh, most school districts will be over overtly cautious and overly cautious, and they will have delays tomorrow. I think you're gonna see a lot of delays um, unless there's a logistical thing like CMS and you just cancel the whole day. If you can wait till nine o'clock, temperature should be up, the sun will be up, everything should be just about fine. So um, if you can just wait it out in the morning a couple hours, that's really it. And then the weekend, we've got sunshine and beautiful conditions. So tonight at 11, we'll have some uh, totals. I'm gonna work on a map of what actually fell versus what we forecast. And then um, we have reports from all over the area. We'll show you some of the places that got a little bit more snow than us, um, what it looks like on the roadways out there so you can kind of plan your Friday morning. But um, this little snow event, kind of kind of not much and then kind of what we expected um i i know a lot of people would love to get more snow but a trace to an inch and then one to two inches isn't a big deal that's an average snowstorm around here we're still way behind average for snowfall 4.3 inches is our average snowfall for the year so we still have time to get snow believe it or not usually through the middle of march you can still get snow and last year we had snow on april 2nd not that i think we're going to see snow on april 2nd but uh, the first two weeks weeks of march are typically um, still pretty snowy around here. In fact, the snowiest day, calendar day, statistically, is March 2nd in Charlotte. More snow has fallen on that date than any other day of the year. So just to have that in the back of your mind, uh, something to keep in mind as we go towards March. So coming up tonight at 11, we'll have reports from there. And of course, we'll have all the list of closures and delays running at the bottom of our screen. If you don't want to um, look down there, you can always go to our website, go to our app. We'll have them listed there as well. If you didn't get a push notification, um, and again, we'd love to have uh, your reports as well. If you got any pictures, especially measurements, um, I love to pass them along. Hopefully you measured why it was on the ground and before it melted, you gotta measure it before it melts. Um, if it's on there long enough to see it, you can measure it. It counts as snowfall, whether it melts in an hour, half hour, 45 minutes, whatever. Um, have a great night, everybody. I'll see you tonight at 11, uh, right here on WCN. The snow is moving out. Um, I can't announce to you as well, if you didn't see our push notification, um, CMS has canceled all classes tomorrow, which I'm actually somewhat shocked. Um, I'll read you the statement. Uh, CMS Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools will be closed on Friday. See a full list of details on our website. So I got that push notification on our app. So I'm a little shocked. The reason I say that is because um, I don't think a closing is, a, is really warranted tomorrow, but a delay. But here's the thing about school closings and this is why I hate talking about them sometimes because there's other factors that go into this other than just the weather because for a lot of reasons that you may not even know, uh, a delay might be a logistical nightmare for busing and for other things. And so sometimes it's just easier to cancel altogether. So my guess is something like that happened more so 
than weather related. That's why I always hate speculating on these things because oftentimes these decisions go way beyond just the weather. It's, there's all kinds of ex extenuating circumstances. Same thing with flights. Sometimes people ask me about flights being canceled and I'm like, I honestly have no idea. Sometimes the weather is the least of your worries because the airlines want to move flights to certain airports and don't want to get stuck. So they'll just preemptively cancel flights. So that's my two cents on that. I mean, it's kind of a tough, tough call sometimes. So here's a look at what's going on tonight. Um, we've got the winter weather advisory for some counties till midnight, other counties expiring. The snow is moving out. So I showed you the radar real quickly here. Um, and you can see where the snow is right now. It's kind of almost done for most of us. There's still some flurries down here. We just got a, a almost a half inch report out of uh, Jefferson down in South Carolina. And we got a four inch snowfall amount from up in here. And I just got a 2.8, almost three inches in Troy. So there's a couple of hot spots out there, officially in Charlotte, depending on where you are in the county, anywhere from a quarter to a half an inch. Um, I haven't seen any one inch amounts in Mecklenburg County, but most, mostly a quarter to a half an inch, just enough uh, to be measurable. Um, most part, I'm actually pretty happy with the forecast all in here. That one to two inch in here probably is not gonna verify very well, except for out here where we had that. And I'll show you, um, I was showing someone earlier. This was my forecast. So this is the one I, I was stuck with uh, this morning and I kind of stuck to my guns, I should say. And um, some of this did not verify very well, the one to two, but over in here, we did pretty well. And really all of this did really well. So um, the only part that didn't, didn't really verify is gonna be this area just, uh, just south of I-40 I there. So I'm gonna put, we're putting together a snowfall map right now. Um, and as, as I speak, um, Aisha Scott's over there looking up some totals and I'm starting to look at uh, some of the reports around here. So I think this area right in here is the one area we had a pretty significant miss. Though, if you remember my map from earlier, I had trace so a half an inch was our bus potential and we certainly got probably trace to an inch. So we kind of were on the lower end of our, of our, of our prob probabilistic forecast. One to two actually worked out pretty well over in this area, but not so much in Salisbury and Concord. But most areas a trace to an inch kind of worked out almost perfectly and was kind of a non-event on the roads, which I expected. Now, speaking of the roads, um, this is the thing that I'm a little, about tomorrow that's a little interesting is, temperatures up in here certainly are gonna be below freezing here shortly. So roads along Interstate 40, bridges and overpasses will ice up pretty quickly. But honestly, in the Charlotte area, the roads are completely fine. I mean, there is zero issues on the roads other than being wet right now. So if you can drive in the rain, you're fine until probably three or four in the morning when temperatures get close to freezing. And even then, the main roads are gonna be fine, just the bridges and overpasses and some of the side streets. So, um, you know, me personally, I don't think roads are gonna be that big of a deal, but it seems like every year, you just a little bit of ice freaks people out. So uh, in the grand scheme of things, if you're worried at all, just don't go out. I mean, that's just, that's just the thing I tell people. Those bridges and overpasses, obviously, we worry about this happening. You know, we get that air flowing around the, um, the road, and so the bridges can be a little slick. And again, that would be what we'd expect tomorrow. So here's the uh, hourly forecast through tonight, just to show you how temperatures kind of bounce around a little bit. I expect them to hover around 33, 34 most of the night. And as skies clear out right before sunrise, that's when we see probably a pretty quick freeze up. And that's where you'll see the biggest potential um, for some slick, slick spots on the road. So these are my low temperatures tonight, just to give you an idea of the overall temperatures uh, in the mid to upper 20s. So anything that's wet out there likely will ice up pretty quickly um, on the bridges mainly. The roads, uh, the main roads are probably fine because most of the, the ground is about 48, 47 degrees. So the main roads should be pretty good and DOT is gonna be out spraying salt. So when temperatures are close to 30, 31, 32, just the, just the traffic going over the, the road keeps things kind of wet. Once you get around 28 or lower, that's where you get a little dicey. So 
Um, some of these areas up in here from Morganton, Hickory, Newton, Conover, Lincolnton, Statesville, Salisbury, I don't care how much snow you got, whether you're disappointed in it, doesn't matter, it was wet, okay? And ice doesn't care either. So these are gonna be some slick spots up in here. So just be really careful on the bridges, especially up here. Down to the south, you're probably gonna have less of an issue, but uh, most school districts will be over overtly cautious and overly cautious, and they will have delays tomorrow. I think you're gonna see a lot of delays um, unless there's a logistical thing like CMS and you just cancel the whole day. If you can wait till nine o'clock, temperature should be up, the sun will be up, everything should be just about fine. So um, if you can just wait it out in the morning a couple hours, that's really it. And then the weekend, we've got sunshine and beautiful conditions. So tonight at 11, we'll have some uh, totals. I'm going to work on a map of what actually fell versus what we forecast. And then um, we have reports from all over the area. We'll show you some of the places that got a little bit more snow than us, um, what it looks like on the roadways out there so you can kind of plan your Friday morning. But um, this little snow event, kind of kind of not much and then kind of what we expected um, I, I know a lot of people would love to get more snow but a trace to an inch and then one to two inches isn't a big deal that's an average snowstorm around here we're still way behind average for snowfall 4.3 inches is our average snowfall for the year so we still have time to get snow believe it or not usually through the middle of March you can still get snow and last year we had snow on April 2nd not that I think we're gonna see snow on April 2nd but uh, the first two week, weeks of March are typically um, still pretty snowy around here. In fact, the snowiest day, calendar day statistically, is March 2nd in Charlotte. More snow has fallen on that date than any other day of the year. So just to have that in the back of your mind, uh, something to keep in mind as we go towards March. So coming up tonight at 11, we'll have reports from there. And of course, we'll have all the list of closures and delays running at the bottom of our screen. If you don't want to um, look down there, you can always go to our website, go to our app. We'll have them listed there as well. If you didn't get a push notification, um, and again, we'd love to have uh, your reports as well. If you got any pictures, especially measurements, um, I love to pass them along. Hopefully you measured why it was on the ground and before it melted, you gotta measure it before it melts. Um, if it's on there long enough to see it, you can measure it. It counts as snowfall, whether it melts in an hour, half hour, 45 minutes, whatever. Um, have a great night, everybody. I'll see you tonight at 11, uh, right here on WCN. Fallon as he welcomes Will Smith tonight. We're coming on the air with breaking developments in our winter storm. Charlotte Mecklenburg schools close tomorrow after snow and sleet in the Queen City. Take a look at this new video from East Charlotte. And we just got this video into our newsroom from Stanley County. A lot of snow out to the east. You can see it's starting to build up on the grassy areas and on the cars. And we're already starting to see car accidents. We rushed a crew to this wreck on Indian Trail Road in Union County. The road blocked for hours. The good news, no one is hurt. And here's a live look at the first worn Doppler radar. You can see that massive system still moving over the Carolinas, dropping snow and rain. And that snow expected to freeze up overnight, causing problems for that morning drive. And like we told you at the top of the show, morning drive. And like we told you at the top of the show, Charlotte Mecklenburg schools are
there. We have team coverage tonight. Let's start with Brad in the first Warren Storm Center. Brad. Yeah, let's take a look at those winter weather advisories, which are still in effect out there tonight. For most of the Charlotte area east, they've been canceled to the west as we still have some light snow showers that have to move across the air. These will likely expire just that have to move across the air. These will likely expire just after midnight. It's all about. Lincoln County. So this is a little band of uh, snow flurries across the area. So we're not quite done with the flurry tonight, even though we don't anticipate any more accumulations. Now across the area, we've seen anywhere from a tenth of an inch to as much as a half an inch like we had here at the station officially at the airport. We're looking at about three tenths of an inch, but the big heavy stuff is now shifted into eastern North Carolina where it's snowing out towards the beaches, out towards the outer banks and then down towards Jacksonville, Kinston. And there's that last little batch of snow overnight tonight. That snow band will continue to dissipate. And by the time you wake up tomorrow morning, those temperatures are going to be down into the upper 20s to near 30 degrees. That's going to set the stage for some of those icy spots in the morning. Check out the teens in the morning in the mountains, low to mid 20s across the foothills here into the Piedmont. And again, a few snow showers still left over. Coming up, we're going to talk about some of these totals we saw across the area today and let you know more. We're going to see a pretty significant warm up as we look ahead to that weekend forecast. Brad, thank you and take a look at this snow coming down hard in uptown Charlotte. You can barely see the high rises in the background. People there saw a consistent amount of snow fall this afternoon and evening. Among those people walking around in uptown today are Hunter Signs. He is one of our many crews out in the cold tracking the conditions. So Hunter starts our live weather coverage tonight. So Hunter, what's going on? Yeah, Sarah and Fred, we have been out on the roads and we do know that the state DOT officials say they are ready to respond and they're actually already out on the streets here tonight. Just minutes ago, before we went on air, we saw one of those de-icing trucks come in these gates and fill back up and head back out onto the streets and they will be doing so focusing on the interstate specifically throughout the early morning hours. We did also see some of those crews out earlier tonight when that snow was falling around Charlotte. Some pretty big flakes were coming down pretty hard and they were sticking to the ground and cars throughout the evening rush. Medic tells me drivers thankfully heeded the warnings. They responded to 51 crashes today. That's barely above yesterday's rate of 46 crashes without any snow at all. Meanwhile, things did get dangerous though for three pedestrians who were hit by cars during the snowfall around town. Thankfully though, at last check, they all were still alive, two of them with not so serious injuries, one of them with serious injuries and transported to the hospital. But back here live where these trucks are still out here on the roads. The main concern though are puddles and wet areas like this that could freeze as those temperatures continue to drop in the overnight hours and the early morning hours. Of course, 20 de-icing trucks will be going out on the interstates, as I said, in Mecklenburg County, Cabarrus County, and Union Counties, trying to keep everybody safe during that early morning commute. Back to you. Hunter, thank you. And we're getting more and more new video of snow from across our area. This clip from the Chantilly neighborhood in East Charlotte. You see this black Volkswagen Beetle in the shot. The snow piling up on the roof and on the hood. And next up, some snow day fun in Unionville. You can see oh. this child going down the slide. Maybe more slick than he thought, ending up with a bit of a face plant, but some fun out there. Brianna Harper has been up in Union County throughout the day and into the evening. She joins us live from Sun Valley High School with the conditions there. Bree, what have you seen? Well, Fred, if you take a look, you can see the snow showers here in Union County have far passed. And now all we're really dealing with is small patches of snow, like in these grassy areas here along the sidewalk. And then also plenty of wet roads and that could possibly turn into freezing conditions overnight. 
But if you take a look now, this is what we were seeing in Union County several hours ago as that steady snow showers just continue to fall. We also came across a crash along Indian Trail Road. Um, Highway Patrol tells us that three cars were involved in this. It looks like someone ran through a stop sign and then had kind of a chain reaction effect hitting two other cars. Now, the good news is that no one was hurt in this crash, and Highway Patrol troopers tell us they don't believe this crash was weather related, but it is a good warning to other drivers just to take it slow. It's been a little different, seeing as we haven't got snow down here in a long time. And there has been a couple of slick spots, but other than that, it hasn't really been that bad. And then again, back out here live, as we mentioned, that morning commute could be a slick one for many folks. That's why here in Union County, they did make the decision to close school. You can see here at Union, or Sun Valley High School, snow here on the grounds. So they wanted to make sure they kept students safe, kept them at home. And so if you plan to go out in the morning, you definitely want to make sure that you are aware of any slick spots as well. For now, reporting live in Union County, Brianna Harper, WCNC, Charlotte. A new video tonight from your county deputies. This is some snowy and slushy video from Clover along Highway 55. You see the drivers passing pretty quickly there, so just be sure, again, take your time when you're driving, especially in the morning once we've had that refreeze. Mm -hmm. Then this new video from Harrisburg. This neighborhood looks like it got a good coat of snow. It's accumulating on the lawns and on the roofs. Our crews. We're all over the place today, from the mountains to the Piedmont and everywhere in between. Our Savannah Levin's up in Stanley County with a snow update tonight. Hey, Savannah. Hey guys, here in Stanley County, it has been snowing all day. It just tapered off earlier today since about 4 p.m. We were getting thick, big flakes. You can see the accumulation on the ground really building up on a lot of cars and buildings as well. And check out those roads absolutely soaked. As you're seeing cars driving without really a problem, that's because the water hasn't iced over, which is the good news. However, in anticipation of temperatures dropping tonight, Tonight, Stanley County Schools has issued a three hour delay tomorrow just because there is a concern of black ice developing in the overnight and early morning hours. But for now, we haven't gotten any reports of power outages in Stanley County or any injuries or car crashes. So that's certainly the good news. And again, the snow really kind of just now tapering off. People likely going to wake up to a bit of snow, maybe a bit of ice on the roads, but hopefully that's all, guys. Reporting in uh, Applemarle, Savannah Levins, WCNC Charlotte. Thank you, Savannah. We've received a lot of snow pictures and videos from you either through social media or sent to us directly by texting that number 704-329-3600. So tonight, our Vanessa Rufus has put together a few of the best clips from today's weather blast. Vanessa? Hi there, guys. Yeah, we are getting some great photos and videos from all across the Carolinas, and I think this is probably one of our favorites, at least the most memorable one that we've seen out on social media. And as you can see, this comes to us from 49ers football, and it shows an awesome snow pickup game that broke out, as they said here in this caption. That looks like a whole lot of fun, and we are totally loving this video. Other things we're seeing, speaking of getting out, enjoying, being active, we're seeing folks going out in the mountains and maybe doing a little hiking or some skiing. I love this. You could see all of the snow kind of catching in his beard. He says here, Craig, uh, conditions in the high country, not the best snow, maybe not the best snow ever, but definitely the best so far, he says this winter. So glad to see folks enjoying out there. We've got our first snowman of 2020. Not a whole lot of accumulation, but you could see Valerie here doing the best she can, just doing a little outline of a snowman. We've got some cuties to show, so let's end on a high note. We got some girls here looks like they got their tongues out wanting to catch some snow my Florida girls getting really excited to see snow Indian Trail North Carolina I know the feeling right that is just a whole lot of fun to get out and enjoy and look at this the gangs all here enjoying that snow so thanks so much for sending in your pictures and helping us show everyone else this snow event through your eyes I'm just winters near I-40 in Greensboro. The wind has died down and the flurries are tapering off tonight. The snow never stuck to the roads and highways, but they did stick to cars. Take a look at this. We see snow all over windshields and windows across Greensboro, but it's not enough that you need to scrape it off. It's just fun. We've been seeing a lot of kids playing in the snow, but the concern tonight and overnight will be the precipitation on the ground freezing.
I'm Alma McCarty in downtown Graham in Alamance County, where the snow continues to fall, but it is beginning to taper off and should be ending shortly. But a problem that will continue overnight is going to be the roads. You can see there's already a slushy accumulation on much of the roadway. We did see several salt trucks out here salting areas of the road, but whatever they aren't able to get to could be a problem for drivers as they commute in the morning. I'm WRAL's Aaron Thomas in Rocky Mount, where you can see snow continues to fall. You can see some of the snowfall accumulating here on the ground and some of these trees. Now we're in an interesting spot right now. We have several people who are staying inside some of these cozy tiny homes here on the campus of Rocky Mount Mills. I spoke with the tow truck driver who tells me he's hoping people stay inside and avoid being on the roads if possible. But these tow truck drivers are already ready to provide roadside assistance to those who need it as snow continues to fall. Back to you. Yeah, and remember, when we are not on the air, you can take the forecast with you. Download our WCNC Charlotte app to get weather and traffic updates right to your phone, something you'll definitely want to get tomorrow. The app is free in the App Store. So to come, the temperature already starting to drop tonight. We want to get you ready, though, for that frigid Friday morning. We'll update you again with the latest school closures and delays at this hour, plus more live team weather coverage. I'm Brandon Goldner in Belmont. We saw heavy snow and rain in Gaston County all day. What families should expect tomorrow coming up next? And we're not done with the cold temperatures yet. We'll see a little bit of a warm up this weekend, but more cold air on the way. We'll talk about that coming up in your extended forecast. Plus, with the potential for icy roads in the morning, local officials want to remind you keep it slow and steady while you're behind the wheel. We've got tips on how to handle those dangerous roads if they ice over after the break. Get ready tomorrow. Temperatures expected to be in the 20s in the morning, creating a dangerous situation for your morning commute. We have crews spread out across the area, bringing you the latest on road conditions and any school delays and closings tomorrow morning on Wake Up Charlotte. To give you a quick reminder again of the school delays and closures happening across our area. So let's take a look. Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools and Union County Schools closed tomorrow 
Avery County and Anson County schools are also closed on Friday. Rock Hill, Fort Mill, York County, Watauga County, Ash County and Gaston County all have a two hour delay tomorrow. There are schools with a three hour delay. They're scrolling at the bottom of your screen. For a full list of closings and delays, head to our website WCNC.com or text the word closings to 704-329-3600. We've also been tracking the weather up in Gaston County. Neighbors in Bessemer City saw some pretty big flakes coming down today. That's where our Brandon Goldner is tonight. Brandon, what does it look like out there right now? All that rain and snow has led up here in Gaston County, but you still have slickness in the roads. Just look at the lights and how they're reflecting off the roadways. All of that wetness from all of this weather. Much of the afternoon through early evening, we saw heavy snow starting in Bessemer City into the rest of the county. The snow melted on impact on the roads, but the grass did get some of that whiteness. Gaston County EMS says they did not see any spike in calls through the snow. Gaston County schools are on a two hour delay tomorrow out of concern about all of this wetness along the roadways turning into a sheet of ice due to the refreeze overnight. In Belmont, Brandon Goldner, WCNC Charlotte. As we continue to track weather across the area, you can send in your photos and videos. I know your kids really enjoyed it today. All you have to do is text them to 704-329-3600. You may see them on TV, include your name and location, and we just might show them on the air. So this new feature we have really helped us for weather days like today. Yeah, we've used a lot of your pictures and videos throughout our newscast, and it helps our crews know exactly what you see in your neighborhood. Brad Panovich and Aisha Scott standing by. Uh, these user-generated photos help you guys too, right? Oh yeah, they certainly do. And it's always good because we look at radar yeah. and radar <laughs> does not tell the entire story. So it's good to see what we're dealing with at the ground. Yeah, I love it. It's, you know, I think our best tool are people. It's not yeah. so much our Doppler radar or yeah. satellite. So having you out there sending those pictures, great. And one of the big issues tonight, Aisha, is going to be that black ice. That's the concern in the morning. If you're wondering why on earth is my school canceled or delayed tomorrow when we got traced to a half an inch? Well, it's because the wet roads, anything that ices up in the morning is going to be slick and it only takes a few spots, especially those areas on the bridges and overpasses. So this won't be widespread. Most of the roads will be fine. The DOT is going to go out there and take care of most of the main roads, but it'll be those shaded spots, those elevated uh, bridges. We've got one just down the road from the station here. It's kind of off the beaten path, but I tell you what, it gets really slick because temperatures already down around the freezing mark out there. And as we go towards sunrise, we're likely going to see some upper 20s and near 30. So uh, most of the night, the roads will be fine. But that hour right before sunrise and right around sunrise, we have a couple hours where things could glaze over on some of those road surfaces. And then during the day tomorrow, the sun will be out, so it'll look great. But temperatures are going to struggle to get back into the low 40. So how did we do on the forecast? Well, I always like to look back and see how we did. The one area we kind of missed on, this is actually how much snow fell today. When I look back at it, we had an area this one to three. Up here in the Interstate 40 corridor, we missed that area, but for the most part, the trace to an inch verified quite well across our area. In fact, meteorologist Aisha Scott's been pulling the actual numbers, and Aisha, a lot of these areas around Charlotte ended up right about where we expected. Yeah, we actually saw a lot of areas around the metro that was right about that two tenths, three tenths of an inch. So I want to talk about a couple of totals here. The highest that I've seen uh, thus far, we're continuing to watch these numbers up to three inches of rain north northwest of Banner Elk just over two inches so about two and a half inches of or snow I should say not rain Jonas Ridge two inches Lenore about a half of an inch and then even down to Charlotte a half of an inch as well you'll notice as we work our way closer to the airport in Charlotte we picked up three tenths of an inch and Matthews right now looks like two tenths of an inch of snow so it was certainly a pretty day we didn't have a whole lot of snow and that was certainly in the forecast but it was certainly nice to see and the kids obviously had a great time out there. Now, Brad, going forward, the big story is certainly going to be the roads overnight. Yeah, and we're not quite done with some of the snow, though this isn't really much out there. There's a little band of snow flurries kind of on the back side of this system. We've got snow flurries scooting across the area. So if you're out and about late tonight, there might be an additional flurry or two that's wrapping around the low, which is now near the coast. Still have a heavy snow in eastern North Carolina, but this little batch of snow should be around 
for the next couple of hours. This low pressure is winding up and yes, you're going to see some pictures probably in the morning of snow all the way out on the beach as even the outer banks could get some snow overnight. This batch of snow moves out and high pressure moves in a couple of cold mornings tomorrow morning and again Saturday morning pretty frigid. The afternoons will be mostly sunny and we'll be back into the 50s and by Sunday because the highs east of us clockwise flow. So we'll see a southerly wind develop and really warm. I think back up near 60, but we're heading towards another cold patch as we go towards the end of next week in early March. Below average temperatures forecasted for the southeast. There's a sign that maybe the pattern is favorable for maybe another winter event. It's pretty far out there, but that's in a pattern we'll have to watch late next week because statistically March 2nd is the snowiest day of the year in Charlotte. We've had more snow on that day than any other day. It's kind of an interesting stat tomorrow. Low 40s with sunshine. It should be a pretty nice day, but check out that wind right out of the north northeast. That is going to be cold. Wind chills will be down into the 30s, so bundle up tomorrow. The sun I think is going to be very, very deceiving. Seven day forecast shows the icy spots tomorrow back near 60 on Sunday. We'll start to see some of the rain return for next week. I'll extend this out 10 days because I want to show you that cold pattern shaping up at the end of next week into next weekend. Got to keep an eye on that pattern right now. It just looks cold and dry, but certainly we could see another winter event before we finally get to spring. guys. Oh boy. OK, thank you, Brad and a live look at the roads tonight. We haven't heard about any major problems out there uh, at this hour, but it's the morning commute you need to be thinking about right now. So we're talking about it. The overnight temperatures will drop and anything on the ground on the roads, whether it's rain, sleet or snow, will freeze, making for potentially icy conditions on the road. So here are some things to think about if you do have to drive in the morning. First, don't use cruise control because if you hit ice on cruise, you're more likely to lose control of your vehicle. Make sure you increase your following distance and leave plenty of room between you and the car in front of you. I know this sounds like common sense. It sounds easy, but you know, these things slip our minds when we're out there in these conditions. Take extra caution with your gas pedal and brakes and accelerate and break slowly when you do those things. And finally, if you do hit black ice, stay calm and steer into the skid. Another thing to keep in mind, some things to keep inside your car in case of an emergency. Remember that cell phone and a charger. Have some water and non perishable snacks. Pack a first aid kit as well as blankets and warm clothing and make sure you have some working jumper cables. That's if you're traveling, say someone was going through Tennessee, you know, you want to make sure you always have these in the um, back of your car or truck just in case. And today we dealt with the wintry weather, but you may remember exactly two weeks ago, a series of tornadoes touched down here in our area. Can't believe that was just two weeks ago. This is a look at the destruction those storms left behind. One of the hardest hit areas was Matthews. Earlier this week, new numbers were released saying damages there have an estimated cost of more than $759,000. Certainly it shows you how much of a roller coaster this winter season has been here for us. All right, switching gears here. Another good night for the Hornets and wait until you hear what one player said after that game. Sports is next. Hey guys, Will Smith is here tonight and we are wrapping through his life and career. Plus we have talking music from Patty Smith and tonight's show hashtags. Stay tuned. <laughs>
Take a look at this. You don't see this side at Charlotte Motor Speedway very often. Flakes falling on the track in Concord. Thankfully, no drivers will be hitting the track here anytime soon. They're heading for the warm Las Vegas weather this weekend. And before we go, we want to give you one last look at school delays and closures happening across our area. Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools and Union County Schools close tomorrow. Avery County and Anson County Schools are also closed on Friday. Yeah, Rock Hill, Fort Mill, York. Watauga, Ash and Gaston counties all have a two hour delay tomorrow. There are schools with three hour delays. They're scrolling at the bottom of your screen. So for a full list of closings and delays, head to our website WCNC.com or you can text the word closing to 704-329-3600. So Brad, we really should just be careful in the morning, right? Yeah, right now the roads are pretty good. I mean, we've got temperatures still above freezing in many locations. It's getting close in a couple spots, but by tomorrow morning, we'll see temperatures right around the freezing mark. But look at the afternoon back into the 40s with loads of sunshine. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Working overtime in the weather department. Yes, and thank you for joining us. Jimmy Fallon is next. Please be safe tomorrow morning. Get clearance. The snow is moving out. Um, I can't announce to you as well, if you didn't see our push notification, um, CMS has canceled all classes tomorrow, which I'm actually somewhat shocked. Um, I'll read you the statement. Uh, CMS Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools will be closed on Friday. See a full list of details on our website. So I got that push notification on our app. So I'm a little shocked. The reason I say that is because um, I don't think a closing is, a, is really warranted tomorrow, but a delay. But here's the thing about school closings and this is why I hate talking about them sometimes because there's other factors that go into this other than just the weather because for a lot of reasons that you may not even know, uh, a delay might be a logistical nightmare for busing and for other things. And so sometimes it's just easier to cancel altogether. So my guess is something like that happened more so than weather related. That's why I always hate speculating on these things because oftentimes these decisions go way beyond just the weather. It's, there's all kinds of extenuating circumstances same thing with flights sometimes people ask me about flights being canceled and I'm like I honestly have no idea sometimes the weather is the least of your worries because the airlines want to move flights to certain airports and don't want to get stuck so they'll just preemptively cancel flights so that's my two cents on that I mean it's kind of a tough tough call sometimes so here's a look at what's going on tonight um, we've got the winter weather advisory for some counties till midnight other counties expiring. The snow is moving out. So I showed you the radar real quickly here. Um, and you can see where the snow is right now. It's kind of almost done for most of us. There's still some flurries down here. We just got a, a almost a half inch report out of uh, Jefferson down in South Carolina. And we got a four inch snowfall amount from up in here. And I just got a 2.8, almost three inches in Troy. So there's a couple hot spots out there, officially in Charlotte, depending on where you are in the county, anywhere from a quarter to a half an inch. Um, I haven't seen any one inch amounts in Mecklenburg County, but most, mostly a quarter to a half an inch, just enough uh, to be measurable. Um, most part, I'm actually pretty happy with the forecast all in here. That one to two inch in here probably is not gonna verify very well, except for out here where we had that and I'll show you um, I was showing someone earlier this was my forecast so this is the one I I was stuck with uh, this morning and I kind of stuck to my guns I should say and um, some of this did not verify very well the one to two but over in here we did pretty well and really all of this did really well so um, the only part that didn't didn't really verify is going to be this area just uh, just south of I 
I-40 there. So I'm going to put, we're putting together a snowfall map right now. Um, and as, as I speak, um, Aisha Scott's over there looking up some totals and I'm starting to look at uh, some of the reports around here. So I think this area right in here is the one area we had a pretty significant miss. Though, if you remember my map from earlier, I had trace so half an inch was our bus potential and we certainly got probably trace to an inch so we kind of were on the lower end of our of our of our prob probabilistic forecast one to two actually worked out pretty well over in this area but not so much in salisbury and concord but most areas a trace to an inch kind of worked out almost perfectly and was kind of a non-event on the roads which i expected now speaking of the roads um this is the thing that i'm a little about tomorrow that's a little interesting is Temperatures up in here certainly are going to be below freezing here shortly. So roads along Interstate 40, bridges and overpasses will ice up pretty quickly. But honestly, in the Charlotte area, the roads are completely fine. I mean, there is zero issues on the roads other than being wet right now. So if you can drive in the rain, you're fine until probably 3 or 4 in the morning when temperatures get close to freezing. And even then... The main roads are going to be fine just the bridges and overpasses and some of the side streets so um you know me personally i don't think roads are going to be that big of a deal but seems like every year you just a little bit of ice freaks people out so uh in the grand scheme of things if you're worried at all just don't go out i mean that's just that's just the thing i tell people those bridges and overpasses obviously we worry about this happening you know we get that air flowing around the um the road and so the bridges can be a little slick and again that would be what we'd expect tomorrow so here's the uh hourly forecast through tonight just to show you how temperatures kind of bounce around a little bit i expect them to hover around 33 34 most of the night and as skies clear out right before sunrise that's when we see probably a pretty quick freeze up and that's where you'll see the biggest potential um, for some slick, slick spots on the road. So these are my low temperatures tonight, just to give you an idea of the overall temperatures uh, in the mid to upper 20s. So anything that's wet out there likely will ice up pretty quickly um, on the bridges mainly. The roads, uh, the main roads are probably fine because most of the, the ground is about 48, 47 degrees. So the main roads should be pretty good. And DOT is going to be out spreading salt. So when temperatures are close to 30, 31, 32, just the just the traffic going over the, the road keeps things kind of wet once you get around 28 or lower that's where you get a little dicey so um, some of these areas up in here from morganton hickory newton conover lincolnton statesville salisbury i don't care how much snow you got whether you're disappointed in it doesn't matter it was wet okay and ice doesn't care either so these are going to be some slick spots up in here so just be really careful on the bridges especially up here down to the south, you're probably going to have less of an issue, but uh, most school districts will be over, overtly cautious and overly cautious, and they will have delays tomorrow. I think you're going to see a lot of delays um, unless there's a logistical thing like CMS and you just cancel the whole day. If you can wait till 9 o'clock, temperatures should be up, the sun will be up, everything should be just about fine. So um, if you can just wait it out in the morning a couple hours, that's really it. And then the weekend, we've got sunshine and beautiful conditions. So tonight at 11, we'll have some uh, totals. I'm going to work on a map of what actually fell versus what we forecast. And then um, we have reports from all over the area. We'll show you some of the places that got a little bit more snow than us, um, what it looks like on the roadways out there so you can kind of plan your Friday morning. But um, this little snow event, kind of kind of not much and then kind of what we expected. Um, I, I know a lot of people would love to get more snow, but a trace to an inch and then one to two inches isn't a big deal. That's an average snowstorm around here. We're still way behind average for snowfall. 4.3 inches is our average snowfall for the year. So we still have time to get snow, believe it or not. Usually through the middle of March, you can still get snow. And last year we had snow on April 2nd. Not that I think we're going to see snow on April 2nd, but uh, the first two week, weeks of March are typically um, still pretty snowy around here. In fact, the snowiest day, calendar day, statistically, is March 2nd in Charlotte. More snow has fallen on that date than any other day of the year. So just to have that in the back of your mind, uh, something to keep in mind as we go towards March. So coming up tonight at 11, we'll have reports from there. And of course, we'll have all the list of closures and delays running at the bottom of our screen. If you don't want to um, look down there, you can always go to our website, go to our app. We'll have them listed there as well. If you didn't get a push notification, um, and again, we'd love to have uh, 
your reports as well. If you got any pictures, especially measurements, um, I love to pass them along. Hopefully you measured while it was on the ground and before it melted, you gotta measure it before it melts. Um, if it's on there long enough to see it, you can measure it, it counts as snowfall, whether it melts in an hour, half hour, 45 minutes, whatever. Um, have a great night, everybody. I'll see you tonight at 11, uh, right here on WCN. in the Carolinas for the special online edition of WCNC Charlotte. From Blowing Rock to Bessemer City, Salisbury to Charlotte, we are seeing snowflakes flying. Our first Warren Storm team has been telling us for days about this snow when it finally hit. Thanks for staying with us, everybody. I'm Sarah French. And I'm Fred Shropshire. We have a lot of school closings and delays coming in right now. They are scrolling at the bottom of your screen. We'll get a check of some of the big ones in just a minute. First, though, let's take a look at the first Warren Doppler radar. You can see the system blanketing the Carolinas and this snow rain sleet mix is going to continue well into the night. A winter weather advisory remains in effect until tomorrow morning and tomorrow going into work is going to be where we see the toughest problems. And that's because everything that's falling right now, whether it's rain or snow, will freeze, making for a potentially icy drive into work tomorrow morning. Tonight, WCNC Charlotte has live first warm team weather coverage to make sure you're prepared from current conditions on the roads to how road crews are prepping for overnight ice. We have every angle covered, but we want to start in the first warm storm center where Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich has your minute by minute forecast. Brad. <clears throat> yeah, we're still seeing some rain out there right now, guys, but mixing with a lot of snow to the south, mainly snow in many areas like Rock Hill, Fort Mill, Tiki K, around the Charlotte area. The temperatures are the key part tonight. We're going to watch these temperatures, see how quickly they can fall back, and if they get below freezing, we'll start to have some issues. 33 in Hickory, 32 in Salisbury, 34 currently in Concord, 34 in Charlotte, uh, 35 as you go over towards areas down in Chester County. Now, the snow technically still falling. The radar isn't picking it up, but we're still reporting snow at the airport, Concord, Lincoln, Gastonia, as well as Rock Hill. But the bulk of the snow starting to shift off to the east in areas Union County, uh, down into Anson, Stanley, Richmond County. We're even seeing trace amounts of snow in Chesterfield County, areas like Pageland, over towards Lancaster, where we're seeing some snow falling, and even down almost to Columbia, South Carolina. We're starting to see some snowflakes down there. That rain snow line becomes a little more pronounced down towards Wilmington. The real heavy snow from this event is going to be here east of I-95. This is where we're going to see the winter storm warnings, and that's where we could see maybe three, four, five inches of snow. Most areas to our east are going to see about one to two. So far in our area, generally a trace to up to an inch on the grassy surfaces. We're getting some renewed snow shower activity around the Statesville area along Interstate 40 and until this wave completely passes over us, we're likely going to see some flakes at least flying for the next couple of hours. Back to the west, there are still some snow showers in eastern Tennessee. Those are sliding into the mountains, but as we go through the next couple of hours, I expect most of this stuff will start to fall apart and weaken. Here's 8 o'clock. We'll go all the way through about 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Everything starts to shift off to the east, and that's when things will start to kind of calm down. Then We'll watch the temperatures. We'll still be above freezing for several hours, so really no issues on the roads until late, late tonight, well after midnight and into the early morning hours tomorrow when temperatures will likely fall down below the freezing mark. And that's really going to be the situation we'll watch for those early morning hours and likely what's going to cause a lot of delays. Meteorologist Aisha Scott is over in the Weather Center, and Aisha, those cold temperatures in the morning will be a big part of the problem. Oh, yeah, you'll have to watch for that black ice <coughs> threat early tomorrow morning as well. So if you're heading out, just a heads up, you'll want to use extra caution on the roads. One other thing I do want to mention, because I went outside to see some of the snowflakes as well, and it is cold. I knew it was cold out there, but the feel-like temperatures have dropped into the 20s and really have been in the 20s all evening. So as we go through the rest of tonight, right around midnight, air temperatures will fall as well. But just keep in mind those feel-like temperatures down into the 20s overnight tonight, along with those air temperatures temperatures as well. So we'll talk more about the black ice threat for your Friday coming up in just a few minutes. Sarah. Aisha, thank you. The snow still falling tonight. Thanks, Aisha. Yeah, we're still tracking that low on the coast, which is a big part of the system. And this low is what's going to move away over the next couple of hours and we'll see high pressure build in. So the thing is, if you're worried about the road conditions in the morning, if you can just wait until the sun comes up, I think things will be completely fine after sunrise tomorrow. It's a very narrow window where we're going to have icy roads tonight. Most of that is going to be between about 4 a.m. and about 9 a.m. As we go through the weekend, it actually warms all the way back up 
maybe even close to 60 degrees by the time we get to Sunday. And that's the day we'll see all that melting going on and there'll be nothing left out there across the area. So guys, we'll we keep an eye on those temperatures tonight and that really is going to be the key right now. As Aisha mentioned, I was outside. There's really no issues on the roads at all right now. They're just wet. It's essentially been like a cold rain out there on the road surfaces. All right, Brad, thank you. And the snow is still falling tonight as the sun has set, which means all the rain and snow that fell today will start freezing as the night goes on. Let's check in now live with our Hunter Signs, who's been in the Chevy Storm Tracker all evening. Hunter, what are you seeing out there tonight? Yeah, Fred and Sarah, the snow has stopped for the most part here, um, although we have seen a couple of flakes, but it's nothing compared to what we saw earlier. We are on 85 South uh, from Charlotte heading towards uh, Gaston County. I do want to let you know, though, uh, this weather has proved dangerous in, in some aspect because we've had just tonight three people, uh, pedestrians, hit by cars during that snowfall um, earlier this afternoon. Um, thankfully, though, uh, the amount of calls that Medic has received since midnight is only at 51. They tweeted at me moments ago saying, thankfully, people heeded the warnings and slowed down. So that's always good news, although it's 51, too many, but it could have been worse, according to them. Um, back to those three pedestrians who were hit, one of them over on Independence in the east side of town, that person was rushed to the emergency room with uh, serious injuries. The other two were not life threatening. Uh, one of them happening over off of North Sharon Amity Road and Milton Road and the other one on South Tryon. Of course, we don't know if weather was a factor in all three of them, but like I said, when they happened, the snow was coming down and driving out here in it, it didn't take much to start coming at your windshield and you're trying to get those wipers going to wipe it off, of course, and then add traffic and people slowing down on their brakes during the afternoon commute. Um, some may be able to assume that the weather could have been a factor, but no confirmation there. Thankfully, though, it sounds too, like two of them are going to be okay. We are still trying to check in to get um, the condition of that person who was hit by a vehicle during the snow um, over on the east side of town. Um, but the good news, like I said, only 51 calls um, that medic received with traffic accidents. People are definitely taking it slow out here. Um, hopefully they will continue to do so as the night continues because as you said the temperatures are already falling it is chilly outside we just got back into the vehicle after going out to a, grab a quick bite to eat during all of this coverage but we came back in here it is cold out there and as brad and aisha have mentioned the big part of this is these wet roads could sh certainly freeze uh, going into the overnight hours so if you have to be out please take it slow otherwise just stay bundled up inside back to you our team coverage continues tonight now in Rowan County. WCNC Charlotte's Chloe Leshner spent the day in Salisbury and shows us what it looked like there this evening. I'm Chloe Leshner in Salisbury where the snow has accumulated here on the grass and on some cars passing by, but it is not sticking to the streets yet at this point. First responders are expecting a few more accidents than normal, which is why crews have been out pre treating the bridges and there will be extra police patrols. The main concern really is the black ice that we will see tonight into tomorrow morning. First responders asking people to take it slow out on the roads. Chloe, thank you. Our team coverage continues in Union County. Snow coming down now, making for dangerous road conditions there. Stallings Fire Department tweeting out a photo of an accident on Indian Trail Road. Traffic now down to one lane. I think we have an image of that. WCNC Charlotte's Brianna Harper live on scene. Brianna, what's the latest? Well, Sarah, just within the last maybe 10 or 15 minutes, that crash wrapped up. But this was at the intersection where all this happened. If you take a look behind me, you can see the roads here are still wet. But um, Highway Patrol isn't saying whether or not weather paid a factor in this. But I want you guys to take a look at what that scene was looking like when we first arrived here earlier this afternoon. Highway Patrol tells us there were three cars involved in this crash. It appears one car actually ran through the two-way stop sign here at the intersection of Indian Trail Road and Gibble Road. Um, that car hit another car that was coming through 
through the intersection, and then there was kind of a, a ricochet effect hitting that third car in that crash. So again, three cars hit. The good news is no one was hurt in all of this. And again, Highway Patrol says they don't believe that the weather had to do anything with this crash, but it's just a reminder to folks to continue to take it slow in this weather. Again, wet roads definitely a factor, and as that temperature continues to drop, again, the possibility for freezing also another concern. But this is what some drivers had to tell us earlier about how they plan to keep a lookout. Take a look. They should just take it slow, keep it easy. Everybody stay safe, don't wreck, and uh, make sure you stay alive. And then again, back out here live, we were taking a look at the roads earlier, but this is what the side streets are looking like, or at least the ground, the sidewalks, that kind of thing. You can see a small layer of snow covering the area here. Um, again, luckily, no issues on the road, but we will continue to stay out here in the Union County area and Indian Trail and keep you guys updated on the conditions throughout the rest of this evening. Send it back to you guys. I'm Kendall Morris in Huntersville. Conditions here are continuing to change as snow continues to fall from the sky. This area is predicted to get about an inch to two inches of snow. You can see here on the ground in soft surfaces, snow is beginning to accumulate. But what we're really watching is the pavement here because you can see that the snow, when it falls to the ground, it is melting, which overnight will create hazardous conditions for drivers as this freezes over and has the potential for black ice. We'll send it back to you. Kendall, thank you. And with this winter weather, we are seeing a lot of school delays and even some closings tomorrow. Vanessa Rufus is in the newsroom with the list. Vanessa. Hi, Fred. Yeah, that closure list or delay list continues to grow as we go into the evening. Now we're now up to about 59 at last check on our website, WCNC.com. Just running through some of the school districts that are going to be impacted by this winter weather. We'll go ahead and show you on your screen right now the delays and the closures that we've got reported so far. So a two hour delay is reported for tomorrow. Rock Hill, Fort Mill, York County, Watauga, Ash County, Gaston County. We also have some three hour delays reported. Those come from Lancaster, Caldwell County, Alexander County, Iredell Statesville, and Lincoln County, and then full closures reported at Avery County and Anson County Schools. And as I mentioned, a much fuller, more comprehensive list is available at our website, WCNC.com, including universities and agencies and even churches uh, throughout the viewing area. So go ahead and check that out. If you want to use a quick text uh, tool that will just send that list right to you, you can always text closing. So text the word closing to 704-329-3600, and that will go right to your phone. Uh, once again, text message, don't call. Guys, back to you. All right, that's going to come in handy for a lot of people. Indeed. And here's a live look at conditions in the Raleigh area tonight. They've seen a lot of snow this afternoon like we have. Let's get a check of what's happening out there right now. I'm WRAL's Aaron Thomas in Rocky Mount, where you can see snow continues to fall. You can see some of the snowfall accumulating here on the ground and some of these trees. Now, we're in an interesting spot right now. We have several people who are staying inside some of these cozy tiny homes here on the campus of Rocky Mount Mills. I spoke with the tow truck driver who tells me he's hoping people stay inside and avoid being on the roads if possible. But these tow truck drivers are already ready to provide roadside assistance to those who need it as snow continues to fall. Back to you. Taking it out to Stanley County now. Snow coming down hard there. Just look at this. You can see the roads. Uh, temperatures drop. Going to have issues with that tonight. Those driving conditions will just worsen overnight into the morning commuting hours. WCNC Charlotte Savannah Levins live in Stanley County. Savannah, those wet roads really, as we've said over and over again, are going to be an issue. Yep, absolutely, Sarah, and why don't we just get right to it? I'll show you from our dash cam right now. Now I can tell you the snow was coming down strong and thick. Those big uh, fat flakes coming down for a really long time. It just now in the past maybe 30 minutes seemed to taper off a little bit. You're seeing really light, tiny flakes now, but if you look to the side on the roadways there, you can see accumulation on the ground. I want to say a half to an inch, maybe even in some places. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe an inch to a half an inch in some places, but the good news is as far as the roads, not really seeing a lot of ice. So that's certainly a good thing. Check didn't see any power outages, so that's good news as well. As far as schools, I know you were talking about cancellations and delays. Uh, Stanley County schools have announced a three hour delay for tomorrow. They said they're going to continue to monitor and could increase that. 
potentially cancel altogether tomorrow if need be. Of course, all going to be dependent on whether these roads right here in front of you freeze overnight as temperatures drop. Guys, that's the latest from Stanley County. I'm Sabine Elevens, WCNC Charlotte. I'm Alex Shabbat at the NCDOT maintenance yard where wet snow has been coming down for the last several hours. NCDOT tells us they'll be sending 20 plow trucks out later tonight, but they're waiting till after the storm passes because they say it's just too wet right now to treat the roads. You can see a number of puddles down where I'm standing, which means the big threat is black ice. NCDOT will be closely monitoring the situation to determine when to treat those roads and prevent the black ice. Okay, Alex, thank you. Another spot we saw get hit with a lot of snow today was Bessemer City. We watched huge flakes fall there all evening long. WCNC Charlotte's Brandon Goldner has been in Gaston County all day long and joins us live tonight. So, Brandon, looks like the snow has stopped where you are. It was really coming down earlier tonight. It, it really was, and every family member that we've seen, a lot of them were so excited about all the snow coming down. It's gotten a lot quieter. We moved actually east, closer to Charlotte, in Gastonia right now. Gaston County Schools just in the last hour came out with the news that they will be delaying schools by about two hours just from the roadways and the reflection of the city lights on the roadways. That is going to be, of course, the issue that we keep on harping on when it comes to the issue of black ice and slick roads, even just when cars coming by through here. Speed limit around here is around 20 25 miles per hour but just hearing the splashing of the roads and just how wet those roads are good news as well and it like medic Gaston County EMS says that they have not had any additional calls compared to what they normally receive people have been heating advice and slowing down according to them Gaston County Schools of course also delay excuse me released students earlier today around 1 p.m. and so far from what we've heard there it has been a smooth transition in that sense the snow has mainly been hitting on terms of the grass but not so much on the roadways but still having those slick conditions for now we'll send it back over to you guys thank you Brandon Golden reporting live and a live look now at the roads that's where a lot of our focus is right now because the temperatures, as you've heard us talking about all along, they're going to drop as the night continues. And anything that's wet right now will freeze over, making for a potentially icy drive. So let's send it over to Vanessa Rufus live in the newsroom. Vanessa, there are some things people can do behind the wheel to really stay safe tomorrow morning or if they have to get out tonight. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Sarah and Fred. We have some tips that we are seeing from troopers and automotive experts about how to drive in winter weather. So we'll run through just a few of those right now, uh, starting off with a little cautionary tale about cruise control and how, you know, sometimes folks like to put that and maybe they can save some gas. But really, it's not going to be very safe if you hit a pocket of ice. That could really help you or make you lose control of your vehicle uh, a lot worse. Uh, also, increase your following distance. Distance, and we know all about that. We hear all about that every time the visibility drops, but also just with uh, ice or snow or even just rain. We hear experts say to increase that following distance for six to 10 seconds. So that basically means the car in front of you passes a landmark. You're counting six to 10 seconds before you yourself are crossing that landmark as well. Uh, third, we have accelerate and brake slowly. So we're not doing any hard jamming on the brakes. We're not doing any big gassing of the pedal um, that's really going to help you get into a skid and then speaking of which god forbid you get into a skid but uh we have some tips for you if that does happen so first of all stay calm i know that's tough but try not to panic Try not to slam on that brake. That can make the situation worse. And then when you get into a rear wheel skid where you have the rear of your car moving either in one direction or the other, you're turning your steering wheel in the direction of the skid. So if your rear is going towards the left, you're turning your steering wheel gently towards the left. Biggest tip of all, though, if you don't have to drive, don't do it. Don't put yourself in that potential scenario. Guys, back to you. That's right. Just best to avoid that entire situation altogether. Vanessa, thank you. Right now, we want to get another check of the forecast, so let's send it over to Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich for the very latest. Hey, Brad. Yeah, we still have that winter weather advisory in effect, guys. This will likely be extended through tomorrow, even as the snow comes to an end. Remember, roads are going to be slick overnight, and we're going to see some slick spots. They are canceling some of the counties back to the west, so we're seeing a few out of there. We'll have to see if this gets extended past the midnight time frame for some of the 
of these areas. The big story tonight obviously is going to be the temperature. Anything wet out there doesn't matter how much snow you got because if it freezes tonight, even the rain that fell today is going to cause some slick spots. There's the back edge of the snow just now moving east of Charlotte. I'm still seeing snow reports at the airport, so it's likely uh, there are some flurries lagging back in here. There's a little band right in here that isn't going to show up on radar. Light snow has a difficult time showing up on radar because the radar beam bounces off that fluffy snow and doesn't really show up on the radar. But you can see that batch of snow pushing off to the south and east back towards the west. We're starting to dry things out right now. The big story is how much snow is actually fallen and stuck. I mean, that's been kind of a tough thing to measure out there because this stuff's been melting so quickly. Aisha Scott's been pouring over some of those snowfall totals and has some of the reports we've seen so far, Aisha, and some of them more impressive than others, but most areas about well, an inch or so, right? Yeah, about an inch. Most areas about a half an inch. So let's take a look at the numbers here. So Banner Elk, actually the highest spot that I've seen thus far, and these are all preliminary. So these are not official totals. About two and a half inches. Lenore, about an inch of snow. Valdez, about a half of an inch, and then Rockwell, about a half of an inch as well. So we haven't had a whole lot of snow. We wasn't even forecasting a whole lot of snow, but it was certainly pretty to see. And as Brad <laughs> mentioned, it did a lot of it melted as it hit the surface. So we'll get some of those uh, official numbers hopefully over the next several hours, and we'll bring those to you a little bit later on. Brad? Yeah, I'm kind of excited to see what the airport actually ends up with. I, knew, I do know they had officially measured at least a tenth of an inch, which is measurable snow. That will keep our streak alive of 142 years in a row of at least some snowfall. So kind of impressive to see us get that snow. So tonight we'll see what the refreeze looks like. It looks like between I would say 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. is when we're going to be dropping below freezing. And I really think sunrise is where we'll see the slick spots, because if you're out and about today or even this evening, driving's fine. Now tomorrow it's not going to be the same thing, so don't be deceived. The reason it's called black ice is because when we see that water on the road surface, it looks like it's wet, but it could be ice and it's very transparent. It's very thin, especially bridges and overpasses. I think that's where you're going to see DOT put a lot of their effort in over the next uh, 12 hours or so. A rapidly falling temperatures by morning really causes a quick refreeze of anything wet. And again, if you come across a bridge or an overpass, don't jerk the wheel. Don't slam the brakes on. Vanessa was talking about this. Just let off the gas and coast directly straight over. Once you get to the other side, you can start applying the brake or slow down a little bit. So low temperatures overnight. I do expect some mid teens in the mountains, a low to mid 20s, and there's still a chance of a stray flurry till about two or three in the morning. Uh, a very cold start to so bundle up in the morning. I think we'll see a lot of delays because the delay is all you need. There's no reason to cancel plans tomorrow because if you can get to sunrise and get to about 9 a.m., we should be OK because I'll show you temperatures after that morning where we're down around 30 degrees. We will quickly climb up above freezing and with the sunshine out. It'll do the work that salt can. So the DOT doesn't have to do much work tomorrow because Mother Nature will do most of it for them. Full sunshine all day with temperatures climbing back into the 40s. Here's a look at that seven day forecast and you could see some morning icy spots tomorrow with temperatures uh, down into the 20s and then by the afternoon we'll see those temperatures back into the 40s and then notice by Sunday it's back up to 60 degrees guys and that's a short snowstorm, right? <laughs> you, you get snow and then a couple days later it's back near 60 and a lot of folks already asked me is this it? This is the last one. Mm -hmm. I would not bet against March. March 2nd by the way is the snowiest single calendar day of the entire year. And didn't we get a little snow last year in April? Uh, April 2nd. <laughs> So Remember I always tell people we got to get past St. Patrick's Day. To me, that's kind of the date. Once we get beyond that, the chances of snow go way down. But those first two weeks of March, okay. always very interesting. And the pattern does look cold, I will tell you. Uh -oh. All right, Brad, thank you very much. <laughs> Well, snow coming down in Charlotte, but that isn't stopping the Charlotte 49ers from having a little fun. The team just tweeting this video of people playing football in the snow. What could be better? Yeah, this is just one of many weather videos we've seen today. Vanessa Roof is taking a look at those. Vanessa, what do you see? Yeah, guys, we're getting some great viewer pictures and videos sent to us on social media. So we've collected a few. And yes, the 49ers football one was really great. But I love this drone action shot that we're getting here from Scott Brotherton. I wonder if Brad Panovich likes this drone action picture. Do you like this, Brad? <laughs> Fly my drone in the snow. <laughs> yeah, well, he was not. And he got a great neighborhood shot here showing multiple yards with a little bit of powdered sugar going on top. We've seen a lot of videos here with this really 
heavy snow that, that is just really accumulating in like front yards. We're seeing them on patios. So here from Pam snowing in Youngsville. Love that. We also have some slow motion action like this one coming from Salisbury. So that's from Anthony Johnson. Thank you so much, Anthony. And we see some pretty good accumulation here on the rooftops and the lawns. This is Harrisburg coming to us from Michael Keir. So thank you, Michael, for sending this video to us. Uh, Karen tweeted this at me. So thank you out of York. Pretty good snowfall you guys got in that area. And I love this one mostly because of the beard. But Craig here says conditions in the high country, not the best snow, but the best so far this winter. I love that. That is a great shot. And then not the best picture, but yes, yeah, something that we're contending with. We talked with uh, Charlotte Douglas, you know, they're dealing with some delays and you could see they are busy de-icing those planes there. Uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway showing it coming down on the speedway. And yes, yeah, some fun stuff that we're getting. Olaf loving his life on our back porch. Wesley Chapel, Jennifer Weitzel here. Do you want to build a snowman? Yes, we do. There it is. First snowman of 2020 from Monroe, North Carolina, coming from Valerie. I know not a lot of accumulation to build a real one, but we can do the best we can. And then I like this one, a little snowbird out of Indian Trail. And speaking of the animals, we did send this out on social media. We want to see your pictures here of your pets in the snow. This is just so fun just because we can. Let's go ahead and go through some of the great ones we've got here. A little kitty and, and her friend. We've got a little snow covered doggy. We've got the whole gang's here. And then finally, that's my dog, Mr. Mojo, getting his favorite thing, which is snow. So it's his first snow in Charlotte. All right. Go, Mr. I love Mojo. it, Vanessa. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, we're also seeing some problems, though, popping up at the airport, of course, because of all this winter weather. Let's check in now with Lexi Wilson at Charlotte Douglas to find out what's going on there tonight. Definitely some travel trouble here. I just checked the monitors and there are several delays as well as cancellations. According to flightaware.com, Charlotte has around 40 delays and 35 cancellations. The airport is currently monitoring the weather and is prepared to implement winter weather operations if and when needed. Here's video of the Charlotte Douglas International Airport spraying a de-icing fluid on an aircraft. It helps remove ice and snow. Here's what one traveler had to say about the winter weather flying out at 6.30, my flight's still on time, flying United, but I mean, you never know what the weather. I was here a few weeks ago for the tornado. And officials say, please check your flight status with the airline or on their website, cltairport.com. You can also download their mobile app. Reporting at the Charlotte Douglas International Airport, I'm Lexi Wilson for WCNC Charlotte. Lexi, thank you. Taking it back out to Stanley County. Snow was coming down hard earlier today. WCNC Charlotte Savannah Levins live in Stanley County. Savannah, those wet roads, we've been talking about it all night. Going to be an issue tonight, really into tomorrow morning as well. Yeah, absolutely. The snow's been coming down for a long time. Let me just flip over our camera here, show you from our dash cam. Look at all that snow. I want to say maybe an inch at this point from all the snow that's been coming down all day. It's just now tapered off a little bit. You can probably see on your screen there. It's coming down in smaller flakes and a little lighter compared to what we've been seeing since about 4 p.m. So the last four hours have been those big fluffy flakes, consistent downfall now tapering off a little bit, but yeah, check out those roads soaked. Stanley County Schools announcing a three hour delay tomorrow just because of the anticipation of all the water you're seeing on the roads now freezing overnight as temperatures dip. They said they're going to be monitoring the situation. So of course, stick with us. WC and C Charlotte tonight at 11 and in the morning. We're going to be monitoring these conditions and bring you updates on the schools situations as well. For now, that's the update from Stanley County and Albemarle. Savannah Levins, WC and C Charlotte. All right, Savannah, thank you. And I'm pretty sure that people, the school systems at least, those that haven't made their announcements are watching the road conditions and what that looks like in the morning very closely. Yeah, and I think the earlier you start, probably the rougher the conditions will be because right around sunrise looks icy. The winter weather advisories, in fact, I'll be watching temperatures all night. We're kind of done kind of watching the radar because the snow is pretty much moving out. So it's all about watching that thermometer and just to show you that the snow is exiting. But here's a cool thing. We have just reported snow here at the station and it made it into the official report oh, there. Uh, half an inch here at WC. <laughs> and see right. Charlotte.
measure that out on the, uh, on the, the cars out there. Yeah, so, <laughs> and that's close to the airport. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see what the official report will be at the airport, but yeah. um, I know this. a lot of folks wanted to see a lot more snow, but this was kind of in the range we expected. Right. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, we got a little excited because it was our first yeah. legitimate it's snow. It's not a major disruptor, yeah. at least not at this point. No, you know, and here's the thing to remember. We average 4.3 inches of snow per winter, so something like this is absolutely normal. And we could have <laughs> some. You said still more in March, possibly even April. Yeah, I think I said earlier in the winter, I said us not getting any snow is more abnormal than us getting, getting snow. snow. Just be careful tonight and in the morning, you said yeah. especially the bridges, the overpasses. Yeah, because you could be driving fine, and that's the thing. You, you, you get up to full speed, and you don't realize you get to a bridge, and if you suddenly jerk the wheel or yeah. something, that's where we have issues. I've seen yeah. that happen with freezing fog and other situations. People drive full speed, and then you get to a bridge, and it's like, they lose yeah. control. I know. I was just going over that with Fred. I was like, okay, so if my <laughs> if I go this way, I turn into and, it, right? Yeah. He's like, yes, you just, just want to ease off gently. Of the gas. Yeah. Just, yeah, that's the thing. Don't make any sudden movements with the gas, the, the brake, or the steering wheel. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. you. That's going to do it for this special online edition of WCNC Charlotte. We will be back on air on your TV at 11 with a full forecast and everything.